Yeah, but uh, <laughs> hi everyone, welcome in, Deza, how are you? I get it because you're gonna be giving Gumshoe a head pat. That is very true, we are going to be doing that indeed. So, congratulations on getting a, a joke. Nice. <laughs> but, um, yeah, there's like three pun names in Ace Attorney where I, they're completely different, like, series, I guess. One is here, plus this was fan translated, but there's Patricia B and Rolly B, Patrol, and then there's just a guy in Spirit of Justice called Patrol, which is one of the more obvious ones. <laughs> but there's someone in this case called Patricia Rowland, so another lovely patrol name pun. I love patrol name puns, they're fantastic. But yeah, today we are playing the Imprisoned Turnabout, and I don't know if we're going to finish it today, but I will try. But I don't think we're going to finish any of the other cases in one stream. I don't know. I was briefly checking... Hello there, gloom, gloom. Gotta, gotta make your mouth do some weird things to pronounce that gloom. <laughs> Welcome then. I hope you're having a good time. Uh, I also wanted to mention. Sorry, let me let me finish what I was saying earlier. Uh, I looked at Astro's vods, and while Kiss One and Kiss Two aren't on their vod channel and the beginning of Kiss Three, I saw like the second half of Kiss Three and then Kiss Four and Kiss Five, and it took Astro a fair while, and they already played the game, so I was like. Yeah, I don't know. I, I might not be able to finish them. But my eye, left eye feels just a little bit swollen today, so I'm keeping it kind of closed. So sorry that my eyesight is going to be a little off. I might not be able to read as well. Uh, also, there was a spider outside my room, a big one, uh, which I'm, I'm pretty sure that's spider month. I don't know. I'm not sure when spider month starts, but um, I think it's spider month. So there's just a bunch of spiders. Spooky safe stream ends early. I mean, I'll say that there's a spider if there's one, like, right next to me, but, you know. Collab with the spider, to be honest? That, that'd actually be awesome. <laughs> the spider can do some of the voices. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think that's about all. So let's, let's just get, let's, let's, let's just get into it. Today on the Spinny Barker part, we have Gumshoe, because of course, he's a lovely little fella. We love him. <laughs> And yeah, let's let's just get started. I feel like I'm forgetting something probably, but it's no big deal, hopefully. <laughs> oh golly! Ooh, what's this? Oh gee! Oh, a bell! <gasps> uh oh, who could this mysterious fellow be? Oh gee! Oh golly. Oh, that's blood. Oh, who's this lovely fella? Wait a minute. That's... who's that? That little shadow, look at that little shadow. Damn, this cutscene goes hard. Ooh, who is this? Da -da -da. Oh my god. A puppy. <gasps> the greatest attorney. Oh my god. DGS. <laughs> yeah, what up? Why are we here? What the fuck? <laughs> Talking about Gumshoe, I recently found out it's an actual word, not just a name. I was shocked. I also, I was looking on Gumshoe's, um, uh, wiki page. Because I was like, I wonder what the pun name is. Because I assumed it was just Dick. Uh, and I looked at it, and apparently Gumshoe is like a slang term for a cop, as well as dick is, I think, which is like... That that, that was actually quite surprising. I was like, what the... what the heck? What the golly? He's not coming. Oh, he's not coming, sir. How long does he intend to keep us waiting? <laughs> Thanks for the follow. <laughs> the full sound alert didn't play. Oh, I'm the coolest. Is the audio good? I think it is. <laughs> Thanks for the follow. Ha! Oh, I'm the coolest. Now, now, Mr. Edgeworth, there's no need to get your cravat in a twist. Ethan Rook's murder. Two days after the incident, we visited the detention center. Naturally, we were hoping to meet with the defend the little with the defendant, Horace Knightley. Oh, that makes sense. It does make sense. His trial was set to begin the next day, with me serving as the prosecutor. 
Still, he's rather late. You there, do you know what's going on? It, it's certainly strange. I'll try calling him one more time. It's terrible! It's Knightley! He's been m m m m murdered What? Who wanted to say? <laughs> it might just be the voices that I get, but why are all of the cops in this series like, Oh, oh, oh gee! <laughs> murdered? Inside the detention center? Mr. Edgeworth, let's go check it out! You there, take us to the crime scene. Post haste. Yes, sir. Oh my god, they're running. Holy heck. No running indoors. Knightley's not in his cell. I thought he was being held there. What are you doing, sir? This way. What the fuck? They got him in a fucking vault? Oh, where are you taking us, Bow? The, the door is the... Ah, uh, it's the prison. Ah, uh, prison? Then what were the small rooms back there? Those cells we just passed are part of the detention center. They're used for holding suspects temporarily while they await their trial. What lies ahead is a facility that serves a completely different purpose. This is where criminals who've been declared g -g -g guilty serve out their sentence bowl. It's the one place a great thief does not want to end up, Kay. I'm opening the door now! Please follow me! Oh my god, it's him. He's fucking dead. Uh, uh, there's no mistaking it. Knightley's dead. Moreover, he was murdered inside the prison walls. How exactly did this happen? <laughs> anyway, it's March 27th, 10 to 32 a.m. I can't believe something like this would happen to Mr. Knightley. Yes, I can't believe it either. But, the thing you see before you is the unmistakable reality. Besides, wasn't Mr. Knightley supposed to be in the detention center? Indeed, he was. Knightley hadn't had his trial yet. Before a suspect is found guilty, they're detained in the, de 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 in the, de de in the detention center's holding cells. That's really difficult to say. They only enter the prison after they've received a guilty verdict. Also, I have warm water today. You might have noticed last stream that my throat was a bit... fucky-wucky, so I got some warm water to clear it up. So hopefully my throat will be fine today. <clears throat> they only enter the prison after they've received a guilty verdict. Natalie should not have been moved in here. Oh, do you think he passed through those giant doors that we went through earlier, sir? Yeah, this is very handy. So, detention center, so we were like, way over here somewhere in the detention center. Then we went through here into the holding cell, past the holding cells rather. Oh, here's the officers. Don't know what this is. Not marked. Prison. Cell. Passageway. Regina's in this case. Yeah, I almost forgot about her. Oh my god. Ooh, I'm, I'm looking forward to. I'm, I'm looking forward to a few characters. Huge metal doors and a long passageway separate the prison and the detention center. As far as I can remember, there's no bad characters in this case. I love. I love everyone. When she appears, you should show evidence related to care. By the way, cute interactions. Oh my god. Fireberry sky real. <laughs> I almost forgot about that. I will remember. I, I gotta. I gotta show evidence relative to care. Huge metal doors and a long passageway separate the prison and the deten and the detention center. Why is and the detention center so difficult to say? As a suspect, Knightley wouldn't have been able to pass through. Floor plans, detention center, and prison maps. Where the fuck did we get that from? <laughs> what happened to Knightley? In order to solve this mystery, we must first investigate the crime scene. It was revealed to us in a dream. I wear a mask with a smile for hours at a time. Horace Knightley. He watched Dream. <laughs> this is what happened. Murdered right before his trial. Let me take a closer look. What's this glove? This is a rubber glove. Thanks. Yes, there's no mistake. It's a rubber glove. How come there's only one? Let me take a closer look. Oh my fuck. That's Bubba Bub Blood! He's a fashionista, yeah. He just had. There were a lot of clothes spread around him. Almost like he was just designing shit for some reason. Huh. The things of the glove are covered in blood. 
This glove was dropped after the pool of blood formed. Eh? How's that? If it was on the floor before the pool of blood had formed, the blood would have formed an outline around the glove. It isn't blood, it's a fashion statement. Yeah, Edgeworth. Come on. You just don't understand, Edgeworth. I see. The blood would have only gotten on the edges of the glove. This glove was discarded after it was covered in blood. It wasn't discarded. It was just... He, he's dead. That must mean the killer left it behind. Indeed. It's highly probable. So the killer's a fashionista. Right, good to know. At the very least, the person who dropped this saw the body. Well, I want to look at his body. You there. Well, what is it, sir? Do you recognize this glove? Yes, sir. The inmates use these for prison labor. Ah, I see. The prison system. I sure do love it. That's odd. Rubber gloves are usually kept in the inmates' rooms. They're strictly regulated, so you can't just take them out. Indeed, there are no signs of any other rubber gloves in the room. Single glove left behind. Crime scene is for prison labor covered in blood and mud. Oh, bars? I want to look at his body. He's covered with a dirty sheet. Wait, chess! Oh my god! This reminds me of a game of chess I once played, Luke. I mean, K. There's a rope on top of the sheet. There's a rope on top of the sheet! Why'd you take my line, Mr. Edgeworth? I, d I felt like it. Was Natalie tied up with this rope? I'm the main character! Found the body was it used to tie up the victim. Let's take a look under the sheet. We might be able to find something. Yikes! This sheet is bright red! Wow. These appear to be bloodstains. That's also- that's just more fashion. Come on. They put a splotcher red? Looks fancy, Edwa. We still might be able to find something. Let's search this area a little more closely. Is that a neck wound? Ugh, the blood from his neck has stained his brace bright red. The cause of death was most likely from his neck wound. He probably died instantly. He couldn't even cry out in pain. Hmm? There are small bumps on his head. Had these bruises. Maybe after he was stabbed in the neck, he fell back and hit his head. I wonder. At this point in time, there are too many unknowns. Okay. Do you have your digital camera with you? I'd like the detective to take a photo of the body. Would you let him borrow it? Edgeworth is so dramatic. Yeah, come on. It's always blood. It's always murder. Come on, Edgeworth. Have a little fun. Sure thing. Here, gummy. Thanks, Bo. Alright, I'm taking the picture, sir. Still, he's wearing some awfully dirty clothes. Hmm. There appears to be dirt stains in several places. I, it's just fashion. Edward, stop judging him. What the heck? You're so rude. But he's wearing those clothes even though they're dirty. That's... he's just like me, sir. Don't you see the dead body? He's like, not just like me for real. <laughs> Detective. I hope you realize that not everyone shares your lack of hygiene. He was playing chess. The killer was a chess. Huh? What's this? Kate, you don't know what chess is. Most Redworth has something similar in his office. It's a portable chess board. It was probably the victim's. Ah, Mr. Knightley enjoyed chess, right? He was probably using it to pass time in the detention center. Oh my god, he's just like me for real. God forbid a girl, Knightley, has hobbies dying in blood. Exactly! <laughs> Nightly, Nightly was just heckin' heckin' vibing and you have to come and examine the body Jesus Edgeworth, what the heck hmm, there's something on his finger yeah, didn't he wear a ring? let's have a closer look yeah, it is a ring I, I swear that he had a ring, right? I'm pretty sure oh, it looks like an expensive ring don't steal it. It was hard to tell that it could have been like the um What's the word? The you know, the ring part of the gun next to the trigger. Could have been that. Steal the ring. Exactly. This is also a fashion statement, but you know. You won't miss one little ring. Like sorry, I can't even die in peace nowadays. Exactly. It's always examinations and autopsies. Come on, Edgeworth. Well, I didn't do anything yet. Is that everything? Wait, the blood is not right, right? 
That blood does not look right. That sleeve is unbuttoned as well. Bag the blood from his neck has stained his brace bright red. That is not his neck. <laughs> Sorry, but that's just not... Hmm. There appears to be dirt stains and stuff. Yeah, why can I not... Oh, now I can skip it. This game is really odd sometimes with when you can skip stuff. Um, I have to look at this blood again. Yikes! This sheet is bright red! It really is bright red, sir. Thank you. Now we know that it is bright red. Appear to be blood stains. If you're having a bloody sheet, there might be something else. Yes, let me check this area again in case I overlooked something. I, what? <laughs> Am I crazy? Either it's because this blood is just like very obviously like, it's just like cut off. Or because this sleeve is unbuttoned, but neither of these- Oh, I probably have to logic. Do I have to logic the bitch out of your fuck? Nope, just bloody sheet. This bloody sheet! Oh, never mind, I already checked this area earlier. Well, I guess I'll look around- Oh, yeah! <laughs> well, would you look at that! We won't rest until we've stolen every suspicious-looking nook and cranny! Indeed. This is quite a large area to investigate. Press the Y button to switch screens. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious-looking nook and cranny. <laughs> Thanks, Adjoa. Hmm, it's a pulley. Is that used for prison labor, too? It looks like it. There's something I want to ask you. Don't even think about dangling on the hook. Eh? How'd you know that's what I wanted to do? Somehow, I had a feeling. It's a cage inside the cage that is the prison. It's like cageception. I believe the correct term is prison cell. They're the same thing. You need to look more at the essence of things. You need to look more at the essence of things. Actually, it's more important to get the correct information. Why is why? That's not why. Why? It is A. You know the Y button being A? Is that a whip? Francisco? Those are some colorful sheets. That's not what I'm worried about. Is that a whip? They're the most eye-catching thing in this room. Am I gonna have to connect the dots that the sheet is one of these? <laughs> they don't fit in with the prison. There's a whip placed on top of the sheets. It reminds me of the whip lady. Maybe she left her whip here? <laughs> I doubt she'd ever leave her whip behind. But she did, and so will my turn about you, silly man. There's a rip near the body as well. By the way, my special talent. If it's about rope escapes, there's no need for that now. Ah. Does she want to show it off that badly? Alright, I'm guessing now we logic. Well, there was a bloody sheet. And there were a lot of sheets. Hmm. No. No, surely not. Wait a minute! That's one of those sheets! The sheets stacked here have a very distinctive pattern. It's the same as the bloodstained sheet. Uh, that's right. Okay, don't steal my lines like that. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, you shouldn't get caught off guard like that. I'll never, lo I'll never lose my edge as the great thief. I thought you was on hiatus. There's a stack of them inside workroom air. Very colorful. Well, we've collected quite a bit of evidence. <laughs> With the three of us here, it's a piece of cake. Bread gummy? Oh, that's right, Bo. We're the Invincible Trio. It's too early to start celebrating. There's still something we haven't found out yet. Eh, uh, what haven't we found yet, sir? The murder weapon, for one. What is missing from this crime scene? Bloodstains are missing. Bloodstains are missing in a certain spot, but I don't think that's what Edgeworth means. I think he means the murder weapon. This crime scene is missing bloodstains. Uh, have you been overworking yourself lately, sir? I can clearly see bloodstains over there. Hmm, I can see them as well. I was too careless. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, what's missing from the crime scene? Alright, this is just flavor text. Um, footprints. Fashion sense is missing. Someone must have stolen the victim's fashionable clothes that he was working on. This crime scene is missing footprints. Footprints? It's true, I don't see any. But are footprints really that important to this case? Hmm. They're not particularly important. Okay, this crime scene is missing one more thing. 
Oh, I love being silly. Anyway, yeah, the murder weapon. Even though some bloodstains are missing, it just sort of cuts off. The murder weapon that took the victim's life has not been found yet. Oh, you know that you mentioned it, Bo. Uh, you're absolutely right, sir. Detective, get your act together. Isn't that the most basic of the basics? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Naz is just making shit up, and they're still impressed when he points out the, the obvious solution. It's like, oh my god, he got it right the third time! Don't worry about it, Gummy. I didn't notice it either. That's not much of a consolation. In this prison, dangerous objects that could be used as weapons are strictly regulated. It'd be quite dangerous if the inmates got their hands on them. Ooh, yeah, what if someone just stole the weapon? Obtaining a murder weapon and carrying it around is not an easy task. I see. You have a point. What was the murder weapon? And where did it go? That could be the key to solving this case. Is this her? Huh? There are visitors here already. Oh, hey. Don't worry about my voice. Yoda. Sorry to barge in like this. Is this the crime scene? Yo. Huh? You. Aren't you? That piercing gaze. That furrowed brow. It has been a long time. Mr. Shields. Okay, so Ray. I feel like he was gross. I'm gonna treat him the same way that I treated Larry. Where in the beginning, I gave him the benefit of the doubt, because I don't remember him being gross in any particular sense. I don't remember him being gross, but I feel like he was. I know that like half of my friends absolutely love him, half of my friends absolutely hate him. I'm just gonna take a completely unbiased look. I love his music, so let's just completely ignore everything. Just treat him like a, a little dude, and hopefully he's not a weirdo. Yes, yes. That frilly thing around your neck. And that stiff greeting. There's no doubt about it. Prosecutor Manfred von Karma. Fancy meeting you here. Uh, what? What? Hold it. What are you saying, Bo? Mr. Rector is not that old man. Brain hop. Oh, have you already played AI2? I watched a friend play it, but also at the same time... Um... Like, I know all of the culprits and all of the characters, but I I fall asleep a lot while I'm, like, watching streams and, you know, just, just in general during the day, so I don't remember everything. Like, for example, part of me wants to say that the body was moved, but I don't know that for sure. It's kind of just a guess, but I feel like I remember that, but I don't know. He's just a little old, not fully old, exactly. He's not that old man. He's becoming old man, but he's not yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I watched a friend play Ace Attorney Investigations too, so I don't... And it, it was a little while back. So I don't remember everything, but I remember, like, the main, main points, you know? Detective, it's fine. Oh, it's you, Prosecutor Edworth. I thought you looked a bit young. <laughs> you two are so similar. Looks like your Uncle Ray got you two mixed up again. You never change. How many years has it been since we last saw each other? Hmm... I've already forgotten. Your Uncle Ray's been overseas these past few years. But you know, there is something I still haven't forgotten. About you. And your betrayal. Uh-oh. What is he talking about? Fuck. What is he talking about? What did I do? Uh-oh. I'm getting some bad vibes over here. Oh, is it because I became a prosecutor? Do you know this guy, Mr. Edgeworth? Allow me to introduce him to you. Raymond Shields, attorney at law. Kill this grandma. Ace Attorney Ray Shields at your service. I don't know why I keep doing air quotes. I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. I'm Detective Dick Gumshoe, sir. But don't go call me Dick. Hey Faraday, nice to meet ya. I'm a great thief. Maybe don't say that. <laughs> ah, but I'm currently on hiatus. Great thief? Well, well. That sounds romantic. What the fuck? That's... Not right. No. It certainly doesn't. You're an attorney at law! That sounds criminal, my dear fellow. And you sound criminal saying that. How uh, wonderful. Oh, Mr. Shields, you get it, right? I'm currently recruiting new members. The registration forms are easy to fill out. 
That's splendid. Uncle Ray would love to join your little gang. I'm sorry, but we're only accepting bri bright, cheerful, and energetic girls. I see. That's too bad. Well, how about a hug then? As a sign of affection, I do remember that you gave a lot of hugs, which is kind of... No. I uh, guess not. <laughs> this isn't Europe, after all. That's right, it's America, USA, baby. Mr. Shields, what are you doing here? Oops, that's right. Sorry, sorry. Preventing the attorney from investigating the crime scene is the Von Karma way, isn't it? You fucker. Hold it, pal. Hey, you've been going on about Von Karma this and Von Karma that. What's your problem, pal? Detective, restrain yourself. This can't be helped. Huh? Mr. Shields, are you the defense attorney for Horace Knightley? That's right. Or should I say, I was his defense attorney. Why do I keep doing air quotes? I was totally his defense attorney. Yeah, I was his defense attorney. Yeah. Mr. Shields is the defense attorney. If Knightley had not been murdered, I would have been going up against him in court. I should listen to what he has to say. Yo, what up? Sorry, I don't know what came over me. <laughs> I just really wanted to do that. <laughs> I, I can't explain why. Huh? Are you giving this to me? I'm thrilled. A prosecutor's badge might make me more popular than my attorney's badge. Thanks for the present. No, I never said a word about giving it to you. <laughs> that was just a joke. Uncle Ray has his own badge. Oh my god. Present it to me. Your attorney's badge. You don't wear it on your clothes. Hmm. In the winter. I wear it on my favorite coat. Your Uncle Ray only wears it on his victory clothes. What kind of victory is he talking about? And why is it in air quotes again? Since you received the request to represent the victim, that must mean... Yes, your Uncle Ray was supposed to meet with Nightly Boy... With Nightly Boy! As was I. I had planned to meet with him. But then we heard the report of the dead body. I even brought him a California... California, Shaw, yep. Shaw looks like it's California. <laughs> I haven't brought him a California roll. Mr. Shields, you can't bring food into the, ten ten the little in the detention center. Ah, uh, is that right? Well then, would you like it? No thanks. Hmm, still, I think the prosecutor Edgeworth actually meets with the defendants. All defendants are guilty. Wasn't that the Von Karma way? That is a thing of the past. <laughs> is that right? So, you sure you don't want it? Oh, I told you, I don't want it. I kind of want it a little. Did you meet with Knightley? <laughs> we met yesterday. And they called me over as soon as Knightley Boy was arrested. He was being quite hostile. Oh yeah, he mentioned you. He talked about how you interfered with his plans. He probably said some nasty things about me. Even if he hates me, I'm fine with it because he's fucking dead. Loser, take the L, bitch. Man, the two of us had a great time talking about you. Oh, Mr. Shields, you also talked about me? I frequent the visitor's room here quite often. It's been a while since I had such a good time. Heh, <laughs> so you're a regular at this prison. Hey now, don't get the wrong idea. I'm not here as an inmate. I'm here to visit an old acquaintance of mine. We usually meet in the visitor's room, but I've also been in here before, in air quotes. I've totally been in here. We usually meet in the visitor's room. I'm crying the hit, Nazas. Natalie's like, uh, that bitch got me arrested. Rand's like, yeah, I hate him too. Damn, that fucker, right? Yeah, absolutely hate the guy. Then I should ask him about this room. Like, they were just trash talking at you, Just because, they just felt like, uh, this room was where the body was found. Do you know anything about it? Ah, in this room, eh? Here's a pop quiz for our prodigy prosecutor. 
Which of these three is the name of this room? Um, fuck. Oh, fuck. I gotta save. Oh, Jesus. This is the fucking... It, it's for entertain... It's for... It's the morgue! I think it might actually be the entertainment room, so I wanna... Fuck it up. Uh, the, the morgue? Hmm. Well, there is a dead body in here. Anyone who saw the dead body would naturally think of the same thing. Well, let's reveal the correct answer. No, I don't wanna... I'm not looking. I'm not looking. I don't know if he said it. Uh, I think it's the entertainment room, so I'm gonna say the lecture room. <laughs> it's the bathroom. The lecture room? So they tied up Nightly Boy and lectured him to death? As expected of Prosecutor Edgeworth, you sure have an eye for the de details. My assignment was entertainment room because of this thing. I don't know what it is, but... Uh, the entertainment room? Unless all of them are wrong. Wow! Prosecutor Edward sees this place as an entertainment room? And why not? There are plenty of toys here. Stop making fun of me! Well, let's reveal the correct answer. Prosecutor Edward's answer is... Wrong! The correct answer is the workroom. That wasn't... It wasn't an answer! You tricked me! You tricked me! You fucking bitch! All three choices were wrong. I hate it when he does that. What the fuck? The inn may carry out various kinds of prison labor in here. Well, yeah, I assume that, because didn't they say something about the labor? The oh, that was the glove. Never mind. It also serves as a rehab program, allowing them to receive a job training in prison. So, how do they monitor this room? Who's in charge of the keys to the entrance? Ah, <laughs> keys! You'll get that joke in a bit, Ray. Prosecutor Edgeworth, even your Uncle Ray doesn't have all the answers. Hey, you there. Could you tell us? Uh, yes sir. This room doesn't have any locks and keys. Instead of locks, the doors are equipped with sensors. What do you mean by that? All of the prison inmates are wearing electric electronic bracelets. When a bracelet passes through the door, it activates the sensor, and... Wee-oo, wee-oo, wee-oo. An alarm will sound. After a certain amount of time has passed, the bracelet will emit a painful shock. If the bracelets are tampered with, he'll emit an electric shock three times more powerful. Eh? Uh, eh? That's terrifying. I think it says shields, not ray. If it says ray, I'm going to be pissed because I'm going to get those two confused so much. It's to ensure that the inmates follow the rules. Although, it seems a bit harsh. That's why whenever an inmate goes through a door, a guard has to accompany them. To deactivate the sensor first. Oh, it does say rare. Fuck, I'm gonna get these two mixed up so often. Shit. Oh no, please. Why doesn't it say shields? Oh, I'm gonna get that names confused so often. And that's that. Did any of the inmates use this workroom today? In the past few days, no one's used this room. I'm sure of it. So, not one inmate has entered this room today. Sounds alarm in response to a prisoner's press that was installed in the door of the workroom. If that's the case... <clears throat> it raises a contradiction with the crime scene. Yeah, because he doesn't have the bracelet. That's where the sleeve comes in. I noticed the sleeve, but not allowed to talk about it yet. There's something in this crime scene that should not exist. Well, that's not... I'll use my powers of deduction and expect the crime scene again! Well, that's not really... There's something in this crime scene that shouldn't exist. You're putting it in a weird way. There's something in this crime scene that should be here, but isn't. I'm not looking at his finger. I... Huh? I'm crazy. I am crazy. I am crazy, what? I'm crazy. Bracelet. 
Unless it's just really specific. I'm just gonna look at everything again. The rubber glove used by the inmates. It's unnatural for one to end up in this place. This is in direct contradiction with the evidence. Well, we already... okay. Eh? Why's that? From what we just heard about the inner workings of the prison. The rubber gloves used by the inmates should not be present present in this room. We, we already... We, we already knew that. <laughs> Let me present some evidence. I... Okay. Sure. I, we already... I already knew that it's not supposed to be here, though. Is this spot somehow connected to any of the evidence I hold? Eureka! The inmates cannot freely enter this room, as they're wearing bracelets that set off the sensors. According to the guard, it seems that no inmates were scheduled to enter this room today. However, a rubber glove used by the inmates was left in here. Well, an inmate could have just, like, thrown it in there, right? That is a direct contradiction. Then who left this rubber glove in here, sir? I don't know. Yet. However, it seems that this rubber glove is connected to our case. Investigation complete. Guard, aside from the inmates and prison guards, does anyone else have an access to this room? Um, well, this is a prison facility, after all. Only inmates and prison guards can come here. Hold it, Mr. Shields. <laughs> what are you saying? There are others that come in here. Aside from inmates and prison guards, there are certain things that can enter this room. Uh, are you talking about them? But they're... Mr. Shields, be more specific. What are these things that you speak of? It should be obvious. You came all the way here without seeing one, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Usually you can find them walking around the... I know what they're talking about. Walking around the prison facility. Well, you'll see once you leave this room, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Hey, you're just saying that to get Mr. Edgeworth to leave, Bell. What now? Don't you trust me? <laughs> Mr. Detective, you have a big body, but a small mind. What did you say, Paul? Detective Gumshoe. Oh, sorry, sir. Come on, follow me. I'll show you what Uncle Ray's been talking about. I totally will. Why don't you believe me when I use air quotes? Oh my god, look at him go. He looks so, so suspicious. <laughs> I want to see them. I want to see them. I want to see them. This place is a little different from your normal prison. Look at them! There are more than just the prisoners and guards living here. Animals? Yep, animals. According to the guard, they introduced animal therapy here several years ago. Each prisoner is assigned one animal. In other words, they receive a pet pa partner. P -p -p partner? Huh? That seems kind of fun. Oh no, okay, it's gonna do a crime to end up here. Plus, learning to take care of their pets is a great qualification to have. Ah, so you mean that work? So you mean that workroom? So you mean that workroom? Yep, that's where the prisoners practice taking care of their pets. Oh, uh, so then, the thing you me mentioned. Uh, that could enter the crime scene, is... Right. These animals. Hold it! Well, that doesn't make any sense, Paul! Why would an animal leave behind a rubber glove? <laughs> quite right. But, the fact remains that they could have entered the crime scene. Mr. Edgeworth, can you please talk some sense into this man? Mr. Shields, are the animals allowed to go wherever they please? Most of the doors in this prison are fitted with sensors. The sensors not only sound an alarm in response to the prisoner's bracelets, and they also respond to the animal's microchip and open the doors for them. What the fuck? This is fucking high tech. What the heck? Microchip? It's like a tiny machine embedded under the animal's skin. All it takes is a simple injection, and the microchip is inserted. What? 
Uh, that sounds painful. I've heard it's not that painful. But anyway... Since the animals aren't criminals, they're allowed to move around freely. How ironic. The ones with the most freedom in this prison are the animals. This is society! A message about society! Prisoners are treated worse than animals! Society! Fuck capitalism! Fuck the- Fuck the prison system! Let's fucking go! But still... They can't go out of the prison. Prison's interest doesn't- doesn't have a sen sensor. Oh? <gasps> Who's that bell? Hmm? What's that? Is that a bell? Oh, what's that? Oh, ba 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 Oh, oh golly! Oh, look at him! Oh my god! Oh, what's this? This dog. It has a bell on its collar. Was this the sound that we heard earlier? I can skip the text again. Oh golly! Oh golly gee! Oh, I'm sorry! Mr. Edgeworth, why are you glaring at each other? I mustn't lose! <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, you're not good with dogs, are you, sir? I'll tame that dog myself. Here, yeah, boy, here, yeah, boy! Here we go. Oh, it completely ignored me, sir. Compared to the other animals, there's something different about this one. Really? I'm sensing a great hostility towards me only. Well, there's also a bell. Well, now that I've introduced you to the animals, what's next on the agenda? The gay agenda? Of course, we cast question those related to the gays, bow. Yes, that is the gay agenda. Ray, are you a homosexual? Because if so, you can join our investigation. Yes, we should gather... <laughs> that was stupid, sorry. We should gather information about the state of things when the body was discovered. Well, we'll start with... You and that soul. Tell us what you know. Oh, is that... Oh, what the fuck? Is that him? Hi. Uh, he's completely ignoring me, sir. Uh, you there. Do you know anything about the incident? Uh... He's scary. <laughs> Don't be so cold. Come on, you can talk to us. I forgot about this guy's scary ass. Oh my god. Is... I... I... I thought that this was someone that I knew, but I'm not quite sure anymore. Or, how about an introductory hug? That's kind of creepy, dude. It's time. <gasps> what was that? I think I know him. See, I thought I knew him because of the tiny sprite, but then this, I don't remember this. Panda guy, that's what I was thinking. Uh, sorry, was Uncle Ray's joke a little too much? Oh fuck, it is him! There he is! Exercise time! This man is clearly odd. I need to get some answers from him. <laughs> Look at him! Look at him go! Your name is? Me? I'm prisoner number D22... <laughs> That's an odd number. Uh, I'm prisoner number D259, Jailbird. Now, fun fact, you won't be able to see this on Astro's VODs because, uh, the VOD for KS2 is not- By the way, Astro's VODs, link in the description to this VOD that you may be watching on YouTube. <laughs> I think I'm gonna put Astro's VOD channel in every single description for investigations too. Uh, but you won't be able to see the VOD of this case, but I did not understand that this dude's name was Jailbird until pretty much the end of the case. <laughs> Maybe even a, a few streams later because... It's pretty obvious now, Jailbird. Gotta raise my metabolism! Handle my muscles rest! I found out because someone told me I fear. I didn't I didn't realize most name puns, that's fair. Some of the names name puns are silly. And then when you figure it out, it's like, oh my god. Justin Courtney flew over my head? Really? Justice and Court? Oh golly. <laughs> Muscles aside, 
Their muscles have sighed. It looks like you've lost a lot of weight. Half the match is won, even before it has begun. Yeah. Ugh, gotta make the weight limit. Uh, are you entering some kind of tournament? Oh, perhaps as a boxer. See, I didn't even know Justine was meant to stand for justice until you just said it. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> yeah, I'm a former boxer, but exercise is just a hobby of mine. Well then, it sure looks like it's the bear's hobby too. <laughs> He's hanging on like an apron. So cute. Uh, this is Rocky the Polar Bear. He's my partner. P -p -p partner. He's loosened his tongue. Maybe we can try asking him now. Where were you and Rocky at the time of the incident? Yeah. I don't know anything. I got nothing to say to you. That's for me to decide. Now answer the question. Didn't I just tell you? I know nothing. No. There's no intention of talking. In that case, you've got no choice but to use that. My chess. Yes, if he insists he has nothing to do with this, we'll just have to prove there's a connection. Mr. Elbert, by all means, you will tell us what you know. I'm gonna kick the shit out of you. Ah, uh, logic, 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 logic. Chess, let's fucking go. Now, let's analyze the situation. Oh my god, a knight, just like knightly. A fighting stance. It seems that he's become agitated. In these circumstances, a direct confrontation would be pointless. When my opponent becomes agitated, I should calmly wait and see. Is that going to be it for every single one? <laughs> every single chess is just going to be... Oh, well, when they're kind of freaking out, I leave them alone. And then when they are sweating, I go and strike. When I see an opening, I will not hold back. Now, let's question him about his knowledge of the incident. To start with, I'll ask about his movements today. I'll have to tire him out before the sound of the bell. <laughs> get it? Boxing. Logic chess, begin! What did you do today? I'm just curious about how your day's been. Can you tell me what you've done today? Lifting weights! Ugh. Answer me! Huh? If you want to fight with me, get into your fighting stance! Uh, I'll show you my straight right. I'm gonna put you in the fucking face. <laughs> I want to click so many of those just to see how it plays out. <laughs> what? Are you throwing in the towel already? This is not a fist fight. Welcome to the war that is chess. What the fuck are you talking about? By the way, hasn't all that moving around tired you out? Don't underestimate my stamina. You want to test me with that buddy of yours? Fine, I'll be your opponent. <laughs> Edward's just gonna fight this dude, holy fuck. I ain't tired at all. Well, first off, I held back on my training today. I just stayed quietly in my cell. Really? Quietly? Then what's with all that sweat? Uh, buzz off! Th that's all I've got to say. I'm getting a little tired. Oh, didn't you stay quietly in your cell? You're a well-trained boxer. However, you need more practice in the art of lying. Getting a little tired? That's not possible. You said that you stayed quietly in your cell just a moment ago. <laughs> Rocky, looks like this is going to be a tough opponent. Oh fuck, he's taken off his weights. Oh fuck, he's going to kick the shit out of me. Is he still behind a prison cell? I hope so. This man, it looks like he's still hiding something. Next, I'll ask him about the time of the incident. I do not need to use fists. My words alone are enough for a KO! Um... Did you notice anything? When the incident occurred, did you notice anything unusual about the prison? Huh? Uh... I think I wait and see. Seems agitated, but I can't quite tell. If you don't want to fight, get out of the ring! Oh, I was too passive. No. Are you tired already? Haven't you realized it yet? I have you cornered! What the fuck are you talking about, dude? Answer the question! What was the situation like at the time of the incident? 
Sorry, but I got no answers for you. I was asleep then. Rocky was too. Oh, I don't have enough clues. Oh, I'm a little bitch boy, aren't I? Maybe I should try another line of attack. What were you doing? Do you recall what you were doing at the time of the incident? Sleeping? Rocky was too. Is is the polar bear called Rocky because of Rocky the 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 movie? The incident happened just a few moments ago. You look wide awake to me. Oh my god, he's gonna fucking kick the shit out of me. Muscle strengthen while they are resting. Sleep is important. Well then, I'm sorry to have woken you. Fuck. Rest is a part of training, right? Uh oh! So you get it after all. Not bad, Mr. Prosecutor. How did you know I'm a prosecutor? Oh? How did you recall ever introducing myself as a prosecutor? How did you know? Uh, that's... The conversation we had when we first entered this room. Were you by any chance eavesdropping on us? In that case, there's no way you could have been asleep. You lied to us. <laughs> you got me there. You pack a nice punch. Yeah, I lied about sleeping. So what? I was just exercising in this room. You got a problem with that? Well, I now know he was awake. I should remember this clue. Answer the question. Sorry, but I got no answers for you. I was asleep then. Rocky was too. Let's try using that clue. Weren't you exercising? Stop telling such an obvious lie. Didn't you admit it earlier? You were exercising. Yeah. Looks like I just need a counter. Your back's against the ropes and there's no way out. Just confess already. Uh, hey, quiet down a bit. If outsiders like you make a racket, you'll frighten the animals again. Again? You've been persistent. However, I'm afraid you're about to hit the mat. You said again just now. Did something happen earlier? To frighten the animals. Ooh, yeah! D damn it! How could I have gotten sucker punched like that? Y yeah. There was this great scream back then. It startled the animals. Dang! I would never have lost in a real ring. Hm. Checkmate. You fucking little bitch, I love him. I love how chess is like never mentioned, except examining the chess board in case one of the first game, and then this case, this entire game is so chess oriented. <laughs> I believe this proves that you do know something about the case. Damn. Okay, I'll talk, I'll talk. He did it, Mr. Edgeworth. Don't lose focus, Kay. The real game has just begun. Hold it. Let's just stop for a moment. Uncle Ray's got one important thing to say. <laughs> Mouse is so lame, I love him. Ow, I bit my tongue. I believe chess comes back as a plot point in the fifth case. I think it probably does. I know that there's, like, very, uh, metaphorical meaning to chess in this game, which I really like. Like, um, obviously, like, Knightley and Rook were, you know, knight and castle, and then Dijin Huang is the king, and then there's other, like, similarities to chess with characters, which I really like. Let's just stop for a moment. Uncle Ray's got one important thing to say. I know that it's, like, very metaphorical when it comes to chess. I think chess is a plot point in this case. Something to do with the chess that Knightley was playing, I don't know. I don't really remember. It must be fate that's brought us together after all these years. He has some sound effect when he claps. I've received the opportunity to observe your skills carefully, and... I'll be giving a detailed report to that person about how much you've grown. What the fuck are you talking about? Uh, who's that person? You didn't know? The truth is... If it is who I think it is, I don't think he's going to be able to receive a report. This doesn't concern Kay. 
She doesn't need to know. Whoa there. He scared me. Don't get too worked up. You can do what you like. It doesn't matter to me. I have been leading your life ever since you were tainted by the Von Karma way. I'm sure that person would be interested. I feel that it's my duty to report it to him. Is that person that you're referring to who I think he is? I'll expose your mistakes here. I won't let you disappoint him any further. Mr. Edgeworth, just what are you guys talking about? Don't concern yourself with it. Our only opponent now is Elbert. Well then, let's hear it. What do you know about the case? Ugh, you're gonna be sorry. Oh my god, look at his eyes. <laughs> what the fuck, he's escaped his cell? <laughs> Recreation time ended around 10 a.m. I returned to this room, went straight to my training. Uh, just as I counted to two, I heard a voice shout out, uh, I've been stabbed! Sound like someone in pain, calling out for help. But I couldn't do anything since I was locked up in my cell, so I went back to my training. On the Sigma grind set, I see. That's odd, you really weren't bothered by that shout. Even if I was, there was nothing I could do. Look out for number one before you look out for others. That's the basic rule in prison. That's the basic rule in everything. Indeed, even if he wanted to take a look, he'd still be locked in his cell. Is all that training equipment yours? You seem to have quite a collection. To be fair, if what he says is true, which I'm guessing we're gonna prove that he actually... it wasn't. But if what he's saying is true, I mean, like, yeah. He couldn't have really done anything. What, is he also gonna shout? I doubt they could shout louder than the person who's currently being fucking murdered. Wait, I've been stabbed? Is that right? Would I even... Would I even know what the murder weapon is? Is all that... Is all that training equipment yours? You seem to have quite a collection. I get them from the supplier. Supplier? You can get just about anything if you put in an order. It's our secret shop. Why are you telling us? I'm a... I'm a fucking prosecutor. He's a defense attorney. He's a... He's a detective. What are you telling us for? That's quite convenient. So, if Uncle Ray wanted to... You're being a weirdo again, Ray. In that case, you should order a book on how to give testimony. Hm. Because I'm going to knock you down for the count in one hit. You're gonna KO me? Stop kidding around! Hey, don't ignore your Uncle Ray. Uncle Ray, you're being a creep. Recreation time ended around 10 a.m. <laughs> Recreation time. There are people from the outside who come here and sing and dance to entertain the people on the inside. That's great. That does sound like fun. And you participated in this event. There are a few opportunities to mingle with the outsiders. After recreation time ended, I... I returned to this room, went straight to my training. So what exactly does your training entail? To build up stamina and rhythm. A jump rope. What? In such a small room? Isn't that dangerous for Mr. Bear? I mean Rocky? Rocky's a smart one. When he sees me grab my rope, he clings to my chest. Oh damn. You're able to jump rope while holding a bear? He's a weighed out gladly bear. Rocky's my best partner. So today, I started my jump rope routine as usual. However, just as I had counted to two, I heard a voice shout out, oh, I've been stabbed! I think it's that one, because... Stabbed. Could you describe that voice for me? It was the voice of someone whose life is in peril. One second, let me, like, check, because... Do I have anything that could show this? Penetrating wound in the neck. Got it. It might just be that, then. It was the voice of someone whose life is in peril. I could tell. Really? That's no laughing matter. And this voice, you heard it quite clearly. Ugh, you've never heard the scream of a cornered man before. I told you, the man was screaming for his life. Of course I heard it clearly. Sound like someone in pain. Call out for help, but... Was that all? 
Did he say anything else? That was all. He didn't say anything important after that. That's for me to decide. I'd like to hear it, if you please. Yeah, if you really want to know that badly, how about I recreate the scene for you, right now? No, 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 sorry. That was a stupid thing to ask. Miles, you should apologize too. This point is vital. I'd like to clarify it, if possible. Come on, please bear with us for Uncle Ray's sake, okay? Hmm. <laughs> Anyhow, I heard the voice, but... I couldn't do anything since I was locked up in my cell, so I went back to my training. You were able to con concentrate on your training after that scream. If I were on the outside, I'd probably go over and take a look out of, out of curiosity. However, inside this stupid cell, I'd have to get permission to go anywhere. Have you considered breaking out of prison? <laughs> that sounds more like something you would try to do. If this place wasn't a prison, Mr. Knightley might have... Being able to get help. I don't believe he could have been saved. Eh? But what if someone had come running to his aid? Albert is clearly lying. But what possible reason would he have to do this? To find out, I'll have to point out the contradiction. So, I think it's this. I've been stabbed. I don't know how to show it, though. Mr. Elbert, can you hear my voice clearly? Why, you? You're mocking me? Oh, he died instantly, obviously, yeah, of course. The victim received a fatal blow to the throat. Which means, he couldn't possibly have screamed. <laughs> so, why did you hear a non-existent scream? Um, that, that's... Uh, there should have been a scream. There should have been one. Dang it! Oh, I oughta rip that smug look off your face! Yeah, you're right. I never heard a scream. The one who heard it was the guy in the next cell. The next cell? Ah, uh, the next cell? Is that Polly? That looked like Polly. Is Yogi in that cell? Uh, what's up? Yeah, I heard the scream. Recreation time had just ended. It happened after we returned to our cells. So then I tell that guy, I heard a great scream! Wasn't it Frank saw it? Is this guy Frank? I could swear that Frank was wearing different clothes. Wait, no, not yet, yeah. Because my thoughts was that he was... Oh my god, look at him, holy heck. I thought Frank was wearing uh, different clothes. Can you describe that scream for me? Uh, sure, I never told that guy about the contents of the scream, though. Hey! Someone, come quickly! A man's been... Something like that. Oh. <laughs> hmm. So, wasn't the victim. But rather, it was the first person to discover the body. He screamed. He had the uh, gardener thing? Yeah, that, that was what I was, uh, yeah. Yeah, I forgot he has, like, a, an apron or something. I, I was thinking that he didn't have a hat on. I see. That solves that mystery. So, there was nothing wrong with Mr. Elber's testimony. Well, is that really true? I mean, he did still lie, to be fair. Or is there still a problem with Elbert's testimony? I'm assuming it's yes, there's a problem. Because it's always a problem. No, in this case, a new problem has presented itself. Mr. Elbert, why did you not hear this? Oh, why did you not hear the scream? It's odd that you didn't hear the scream, sir. Hey, you, why did you hear the scream, Paul? Yeah! I'm gonna fucking punch you! Uh, you guys, disrespect me! I was shut up in this stupid cell the whole time! How could I have killed someone in the workroom? Oh, you know it's the workroom? That's not right. Oh, that would be impossible, wouldn't it? Yeah, none of us could have killed him! If we could have killed him, we would have already- Oh, sorry, I didn't see a sprite. <laughs> if we could have killed him, we would have already killed you guys by now! Hooray! You guys, don't think you're going to get out of this pr 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 prison alive! Uh, I nearly forgot. Despite being locked inside cages, these guys are still dangerous criminals. <laughs> Looks like we got ourselves in a pretty bad situation here. 
Yeah, our lives are being threatened by inmates. Like, that's... <laughs> well... I bet you're wondering how I got into this situation. What can I do? I can't talk to them in these circumstances. <gasps> oh! Oh my god! Who is that? Look at her! And him, he's also there. Oh, look at them! Queen! <laughs> Please be silent. What? Who are you? Can't you see we're busy here? Silence is golden. Oh my god, Justine! Also, hi. What? <laughs> Sorry. Welcome in, Pat Patat French. I definitely pronounced that wrong, but welcome in. <laughs> oh, what the? Now, your hands. You shall remain silent while under the judgment of the law. You should be thankful. You get to live your life without the need of money. You are to receive the blessings of the goddess of law. Guard, if you would please. <laughs> Sorry for the unpronounceable French name, but it's French. What the fuck? <laughs> is, is that it? <laughs> Congratulations! You get to spend the night in the disciplinary room. Yeah? Uh, that's... No! Not there! Anywhere but there! Accept this wonderful blessing. Oh, look at her! Let your heart be reborn! Cast away your sins! Justine's theme is so fucking good. Yeah, I love the music in this game. It's fantastic. Stop it! No! Oh, goddess of law, give this man your blessings. I thank thee. The fuck? Do you like Jesus and all that? You are? My name is Justine Courtney. I am privileged to be a judge. An emissary of the strength of the law. A judge, you say? Why are you here? Prosecutor Edgeworth, I came to meet with you personally. I convey the will of the Prosecutor... Prosecutor... Prosecutorial Investigation Committee. Oh, that word is going to be said a lot. Prosecutorial. 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 Something like that. I'll look it up after stream. I convey the will of the Prosecutorial Investigation Committee. That is my appointed task. Prosecutorial Con Investigation Committee? Damn, I don't know how to pronounce that. Do not use that name so lightly. Those are the sacred words of the goddess of law. Oh my god, it's been an hour already? Yeah, time flies. Holy heck. Hey, since little Kay doesn't know, Uncle Ray will explain it for her. You're a weirdo. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the PIC is an assembly compromised of 11 members. Their job to check if prosecutors are doing their jobs properly. If I'm not mistaken, its members are elected from polit politicians and those of the legal profession. So, I take it you're one of those members. Indeed. I'm thankful they judged me worthy of such a task. I too am thankful that I was able to meet you here. <laughs> How about a hug of thankfulness? <laughs> no. The Prosecutorial Investigation Committee also shares deep ties with the Bar Association. Hey, I was just kidding. No need to make such a scary face. Uh, so, your job's to find bad prosecutors and punish them? Well said. May you be blessed with the goddess of law. By, sorry, by the goddess of law, not with. Our job is to remove problematic prosecutors from their cases. <laughs> we're the woke mob and we're going to cancel the problematic prosecutors. Edgeworth, I heard you talking about pronouns in Starfield. This won't do. We're going to have to cancel you under the goddess of law. And so, those people not fit to be prosecutors will be stripped of their prosecutor's badge. Oh, what business does this whatchamacallit committee have with Mr. Edgeworth, Bow? We're in the middle of an investigation up here. Objection! Oh my god, that was Sebi. 
I always that that voice always throws me off because in my mind that that voice is like so not Sebastian. So that always throws me off. Objection. <laughs> oh, listen to his theme. Do 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 do. Wow, you're thick. Seriously, how thick-headed can you be? I'm just who do you think you are, Paul? Me? I'm a prosecutor. Sebastian de Best is my name. So joyful and whimsical. Haven't you heard of me? At the prosecutor's office, everyone calls me the best. Ah, I'm so beloved there. I've never heard of you. Have, hey you, Mr. Flatfoot. You've heard of me, right? Oh, uh, this is the first time, Bo. Oh well, it can't be helped. There is no way someone who's so thick on the intake could have good ears. Don't you mean slow on the uptake? I suppose it's only natural that Sebastian only became a prosecutor last month. <laughs> oh, I love him. He's just a rookie prosecutor. Right, the best rookie prosecutor in the office. <laughs> or so he plans to be. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm here to clean up the mess you made. What do you mean? The PIC intends to have me replaced. Now that much is clear. Because I've been problematic. I went on, on my stream and I went, FUCKING PRONOUNS! FUCKING GENDER IDEOLOGY! <laughs> They're trying to current day us! Now I'm being cancelled by the work PIC. <laughs> the still best. I know what you're trying to say. However, I have not been informed of this. Your Honor. Your Honor. I would like an explanation. Very well. This judgment has been passed under the name of the Goddess of Law. I got cancelled. <laughs> uh, this bit is so stupid. <laughs> the incident at the President's welcoming event and the murder of Horace Knightley. The Prosecutor Early Investigation Committee has decreed that you will be taken off this case. And Sebastian has been appointed to take over the case. That is all. Oh golly, she gets she gets a gavel sprite. What? You can't just take him off the case like that, Bo. The work mom's really gone too far this time. Your Honor, I thought I asked for an explanation. The judgment is guilty. The Goddess of Law's verdict is absolute. Objection! I've done nothing to warrant being taken off this case. You don't remember? Very well. In that case, I shall remind you of your past crimes. You boarded the President's plane, which was protected by extraterritorial rights. No, not extraterritorial rights, please. I had enough. I've had enough, Justine. And then, of all things, you ordered a search of the President's personal personnel. Work PIC pansexual lesbian care. <laughs> oh my god. What did they have? Non-binary candies on the on the PIC, the work PIC. <laughs> oh my god, extraterritorial rights come back. Yeah. Oh my. The. Please, I don't want this anymore. Please, I want to be done with extraterritorial rights. A single mistake could have sparked an international incident. Can like the Jesus Bible guy. Oh my god. Oh golly. She's being mean, sorry. I think they also come back a bit later. <laughs> I don't want the extra- Oh right, they do, don't they? Do they? Is what I'm thinking of what I'm thinking of? I'm trying- I'm thinking case 3. With the Russia thing, but I don't remember if that's- <laughs> Ace Attorney Investigations funds can never escape extra territorial rights. No! <laughs> you crossed the line as a prosecutor. You're great. You gravely overstepped your authority. I don't see any gravy here. I'll admit, my actions may have gone against the rules. However, if I had not taken that risk, I'm certain the truth would have never have been found. I've never considered my actions as a mistake. Overruled! Overruled! So, you're saying that as long as the ends justify the means... We're getting all of the, all of the phrases today. We're getting all of the phrases. 
Oh golly, it's almost Christmas, isn't it? Oh golly! Oh, you're a clown, right? Oh, oh, circus! Oh golly! Actually, circus probably is gonna come up as well, isn't it? Because of Regina. <laughs> so, you're saying that as long as the ends justify the means, it's alright to ignore the rules? That is an extremely dangerous way of thinking. No one is above the rules. That is the spirit of law. I'm sorry, but I cannot accept your way of thinking. I see. That's a shame. Even so. The gavel must slam down at the conclusion of a trial. Even if you, or the defense attorney, or the, su or the suspect, do not consent to the verdict. All you can do is accept the blessings of the goddess of law. Or, will you fight it and risk losing your badge? Oh, she means to take my badge if I don't obey. Ah, oh, that's too bad. <clears throat> it seems you understand. Now then, guards, please proceed. Is the Bible woke? Open discussion. It's a journey investigation is too Bible. The woke Bible. Woke Jesus. They're trying to make the Bible work. Is this it? Oh golly! Oh, hold it right now! Hey, what are you doing? Are you supposed to be on our side? You should listen to the new prosecutor in charge. Uh, I don't want to work for you, pal. But isn't that the job of a flatfoot? We're at an overwhelming dis disadvantage here. It's useless to resist any longer. Detective Gumshoe, you are now under Mr. DeBest's authority. Oh, but what that's... Your Honor. Yes, what is it? This does not mean I have accepted your de decision. We will meet again. Certainly. I look forward to that day. Well, it's going to be later today, so... Let's go, Kay. Yeah. By the way, she's a thief. Arrest her. Justine looks like she would write Goddess of Justice ex fem Ruda fanfics. Oh, absolutely. She loves them. Is that Polly? Is that a Yanni Yogi cameo? Is he in that cell? Because if so, that's awesome. Wait, don't forget. I'll be reporting today's events to that person. Are you talking about my dead father? See ya. <laughs> I'm not going to answer. To be continued, oh my goodness, it's only been an hour and 20 minutes. Da da fuck! I meant to press yes, but it doesn't really matter, because I can save state. Really doesn't matter. I don't know why I saved, to be honest. I don't really need it. I have save states and I use them. I guess it's just like an extra layer of saving, but oh well. Mr. Retro, just what happened yesterday? Those two people, their attitude was just unforgivable. Mr. Edgeworth. Oh wait, this is the day after? Oh damn. I'm here to clean up the mess you made. I love Sebastian. I love Courtney. The prosecutor of the investigation committee has decreed that you will be taken off this case. And Sebastian has been appointed to take over the case. That is all. Judge Courtney and Mr. DeBest. They were certainly ruthless. But what I'm more concerned about is... Just what is the PIC thinking? I'm worried about what they will do from here on. I have a bad feeling about this. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth. Are you listening to me? Yes, I'm listening. You're not going to give up on this case, are you? No, I don't plan on backing down. Not with the current situation as it is. If I were to silently stand by, that would only validate their claims. But I no longer have investigative authority. Sorry, investigation rights. What should I do now? Why does my cellular device have such a lame ringtone? What is it, Detective Gumshoe? Bad news, sir! Oh, damn. His profile's like... <laughs> this. I heard something down on the precinct. It sounds like they've already arrested a suspect in yesterday's case. What? Who is it? I don't know yet, sir. But if we go down to the detention center, we can ask. Let's get going, Mr. Edgeworth. 
Even if I can't investigate, meeting with the suspect should not be an issue. Alright, we're heading over to the detention center now. Oh, I've also heard of her in the double, sir! Detective, won't that interfere with your job? I gotta investigate the scene of the crime anyway, uh, so it should be okay, sir. Alright, we'll meet up with you there. Roger, sir! My name is Miles. Let's go, Kay. Okay. March 28th. See, usually in DGS I'd read them out. Just because, you know, nothing else to do. But then in the trilogy I was able to skip these, so I didn't have to read them out. So now I just don't read them out, but it's also really slow. <laughs> so I just sort of stay silent for like two or three seconds while that's doing while that's doing its thing. He's not coming, is he? He's not. It's happening all over again. Don't joke about that. No way, I mean it. It's not happening. Yes, it's happening all right. There's just someone here to talk to you. Come on. Hmm? That sounds like a pretty screechy voice, huh? Here he is! Oh, look at him. No way, no way, no way! Don't be so stubborn. Look at him. Oh, I love him. What are the prosecutors like crazy scary or something? Oh, always giving you a dirt death glare. Um, uh, pardon me, but would you happen to be the suspect? Ah! Ah, I knew it! Okay, why does this man seem so distraught? Well, because you're, uh, you. Uh, that doesn't help me at all. Hello, Mr. Suspect. <laughs> Simon Keys is my oom. I, I fucking love him. Would you mind talking to us for a little bit? Who are you? I'm Miss Richard's assistant, Kay Faraday. Well, it's just a part-time job. I'm just taking a vacation for my real job. <laughs> oh my god, Simon Blubber. I don't remember hiring you. This is Mr. Edgeworth. He's a prosecutor, but he's not as scary as he looks, so it's okay. Sorry for joining late. No problem. Welcome in, Mad Spears. I hope you're having a good day. <laughs> How rude. Really? 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 Eek! Ugh. Anyway, can you tell us your name, Mr. Suspect? Yeah, uh... I'm Simon Keys. Nice to meet you, Simon. You can just call me Kay, okay? I'm Miles Edgeworth, a prosecutor. We know Edgeworth. <laughs> I'd appreciate a word with you. Uh. Please, it's for your own good, Simon. Really? Finally, it looks like we'll be able to get something out of him, thanks to Kay. I love him. Hi, Simon. First, I'd like you to tell me a little about yourself. Uh, no way! Not that! Uh, I couldn't do that! Impossible! Uh, I'm not worthy! Uh, there's nothing interesting about me! Your occupation? No way! Not that! It's no big deal! Honest! Yeah, I'm just a regular employee. Good grief. Uh, about the victim, Nightly. Uh, I don't think he's going to talk to me about this. Okay. Simon, did you know Mr. Nightly from somewhere? Nightly? Yeah, I did. He was a friend. A friend? So, did he know that Nightly was arrested? Did you know that Mr. Nightly was arrested? Yeah, I came here to meet him. So, he visited the detention center. So he visited the detention center too. When was that? When did you visit him here? It was two days ago, in the afternoon. I received a call from the police, so I came over right away. From the police? Why'd you get a call from the police? It was a request from Nightly. He had me he had a message for me. A message? Yeah, he wanted me to bring him his pocket-sized chessboard. <laughs> so I retrieved it from his house and came here to give it to him. Did he say chessboard? 
Well, I also quite like ch 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 chess, Mr. Keys. Did you say chessboard? Is Kate stealing my thoughts? <laughs> no, Mr. Edgeworth. It's just written on your face. Oh. <laughs> I was just guessing from your facial expressions. See? I can be a useful assistant, right? Hmm. So, do you know what we need to do next? You bet. We gotta show that to Simon, right? The chessboard? Correct. Let's present it and see how he reacts. Yo, what up? Simon Keys. Can you recognize this chessboard? Uh, that's Nightly's. Just as I thought. This was found near Mr. Knightley's corpse. He always carried a chessboard with him. Hi, Sinjo. Welcome in. It's been a little while. Welcome in. Miles, when you mention his hyperfixation. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I, I quite like chess as well. Do you want to talk about chess for a little bit, Mr. Keys? I just spent this entire visit talking about chess. Absolutely lovely. Welcome in, Sinjo. I hope you've had a good day. It's just like him to have one until his last breath. It sounds like you two are really close. Simon? Yeah. We were best friends. <laughs> Besties. Roommates. At least, I thought we were. But maybe I was wrong. Huh? Because I never imagined he would murder someone. Having someone close to you turn out to be a murderer. Reality can be so cruel. It's not something most people can easily accept. And I never imagined we would part ways like this. <laughs> Master Edgeworth, something's definitely strange here. This is so good at acting, yeah. Mr. Edgeworth, something's definitely strange here. What are you talking about? Simon's a lovely fellow. He would never, he would never act. He's amazing. There was no way Simon could have killed Mr. Knightley. Indeed. I certainly can't see a motive at all. However, the fact remains that he was the one who was arrested on that charge. Just what was the justification for doing so? You what up? Fuck. I'm a dumbass. I'm a dumbass. No way, no way, no way! Mal's letting himself get blinded because Simon has his chest hyperfixation. <laughs> It's just happy to have someone to talk to talk about chess with. So, why were you arrested? Hmm. I guess you're still going to respond to me. Well, I don't know. It looks like he's finally warming up to you. Oh, that's a great help. This morning, a police officer barged into my house. And before I knew it, he had brought me here. In another universe, the yahoo between them would have gotten crazy. <laughs> Bro's crazy about chess. Whoops, guy. Whoops, guys in the chess fight. The fandom. In this universe, in this universe, the yahoo is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> was there a prosecutor accompanying him at that time? Uh, I remember a prosecutor called uh, um Best or something was there too. So, it was that rookie prosecutor. Then I guess the police haven't dragged you into questioning yet. Huh? Uh, the police gonna interrogate me? Yep, that's right. Because you're the suspect. No way, no way, no way, no way! Aren't detectives like crazy abusive or something? Yes. Always bossing you around with their big bodies. Oh, Detective Gumshoe is on the scene. Gumshoe, not now. This is a terrible time. Ah, I knew it. <laughs> Please don't beat me with your thick arms. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> Someone call the police. Oh. Oh, what, what's going into him, sir? <laughs> Big bodies. <laughs> Situationship of a showing a chess hyperfixation and in present assassination. <laughs> that, that's today's headlines. Well, it's because you're you, detective. Well, that's rude. Oh, I don't get it, sir. I know Simon has to be innocent, Mr. Redworth. 
Did Henry do something? Simon Keys. Yes. You were Mr. Knightley's best friend, besties, roommates even. You only just met with him two days ago. You say you didn't kill him. Are you certain about this? Uh, now that you mention it, I might have killed him. Yes, I am. I wouldn't harm a fly. I see. That's enough for me. I shall offer my assistance in proving your innocence. Uh, what's the point in helping like little old me? I'm just a little man. Also, say to relationship while we're putting your boyfriend's father figure in jail. What if he put my dad in jail and I killed the president and we both had a chess hyperfixation? And they were roommates? That's enough for me, he bought him so quickly. <laughs> you like chess and you're sure that you didn't murder him? And that's enough for me. It's not just for you. This case. I have a personal connection. Personal stake in it as well, even. I tried to guess the lines because it moves so slowly. Lag is a bitch. That's right. Icarus also, also swears a lot. He might call you a fuck bitch or a bitch fuck. I don't know. We gotta get back at those two from yesterday. Yeah. I'm a fucker, sir. But I don't have any investiga investigation rights at the moment. Since I won't be able to obtain information myself, your role is most vital. I'm sure we can rely on you to fill in any holes in the information we have. Help us help you. That's all I ask. <laughs> Mars interrogating man called <laughs> Iron Guilty. If you say you didn't kill them, I'll believe it. Oh golly, sorry my slipper fell off. Oh, I just had an idea. Why don't you just borrow the defense attorney's badge, sir? Come on, there's no way Mr. Edgeworth could do that. This isn't the time to be joking around. But, but I wasn't joking. Uh, helping the suspect is a defense attorney's job. Oh. Jeez, don't worry about that. It doesn't matter what Mr. Edgeworth's job is. All we gotta do is find the real murderer. It's not only Simon's manipulation skills, I'm certain Mouse was blinded by that they them clussy. <laughs> oh my god, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Oh no, Simon's... You woke. Woke. Clown. So, let's get moving. I couldn't figure out where to go with that bit. <laughs> okay, Paul. I'm being cancelled by the they them Clossy. I'm sure you understand, but if the investigation results in proof that you are the murderer... No hard feelings, but I will show no mercy. <laughs> but you don't need to be scared. I believe in your story. At least for now. You like chess, you couldn't be a killer. All you need to do is believe in us, and wait patiently. The classy video was right all along, they just got the wrong there, them clown. <laughs> I've never actually watched the classy video. I've heard that it's like, awful. There's like, nothing to fear. Now if you'll excuse me, I must be off. But if they had Simon instead of Gary, I would watch that in a heartbeat. 11.22 a.m.? Oh my god. So, we're all fired up and ready to go. But we still can't enter the part of the prison where the murder occurred. Heard. If you can't investigate, the only thing you can do now is defend him in court, sir. But how are we supposed to do that? We can. Huh? Hey, it was me, you went up. If it isn't Prosecutor Redworth and his merry gang, what are you guys doing here? Did you come here to harass Mr. Edgeworth again, Bo? What are you talking about, big guy? Uncle Ray's just here to do his job. Your job? Oh yeah, you're a defense attorney, right? Okay, you're as cutiful as ever. You're being creepy again, cutiful. I might not look like it, but your Uncle Ray's a hotshot defense attorney. I'm here to meet with a new client today. What was his name again? Shy Monkeys or something? What? You mean Simon Keys? That's it. Okay, looks like you know the deal. Mr. Redmer, he's the defense attorney. Uh, I thought as much. Guess we have no choice but to resort to that method. In the past, whenever I had to investigate cases I was not placed in charge of, 
I was able to gain access by becoming a subordinate to whomever was in charge. I was the weird girl assistant. Not my preferred option, but it's the only one I have now. M Mr. Shields, if I may ask. <laughs> and the name Chip fans you. Brags like a pedophile, but he actually isn't is crazy to me. <laughs> I, I I can't remember if he's like says anything really creepy, but he's like bordering on the like mm, Ray. Watch what you're saying. By the way, I don't take on sidekicks. Well, I fuck you. I refuse to take on male. He's like bordering on Larry, specifically from the first game. We're not talking about Ace Attorney Three, Larry. He was genuinely just a pedophile. But he's like he's like Larry from the first game, where it's like. You're walking a thin line, buddy. I refuse to take on male assistants who lack charm. Especially someone who is like a son to Von Karma. Mr. Shields, as I thought, he wouldn't forgive me so easily. Mr. Shields, I understand that you cannot forgive me for what I've done. I'm also fully aware of your hatred towards those involved with Von Karma. I do <laughs> Sorry. The text is just moving very slowly. I don't know if you'll believe me, but... I'm no longer the same as I was back then. Back when I idolized Von Karma. Yeah, pal! Mr. Edgeworth is a changed man! Sure, he may have been a cruel and human prosecutor in the past. But now, he's completely different, pal! That was rude. When you put it that bluntly, it kind of hurts. <laughs> That's right! Mr. Richard's not a bad guy anymore. I wouldn't even call him a prosecutor. He's more like, uh, um, a hero. Yeah. He even helped me out in that big case last month. A hero? That's some pretty big talk there, Missy. They ruined Larry's character, which is sad. Yeah, Larry was like... Really not that bad in Ace Attorney 1, to be honest. He was, like, not the best character, but he really wasn't that bad. But Ace 3 just was awful. <laughs> He's a magnificent hero, although he'd be no match for a great thief like me. You're a thief? What the fuck? I guess I'll defend you. I'm a defense attorney, not a prosecutor. Mr. Shields, don't the actions of the work PIC appear strange to you? I believe there may be something else hidden behind this case. I can't afford to quit at this juncture. <laughs> Kay admires Mal so much. You <laughs> the family. <laughs> Please, let me help with you. Let me help you with the investigation. I'm begging you. <laughs> no. See ya. I never expected you to gravel like this. Sure looks like you've changed, all right. And I'm kind of interested in the cause of all this. You're interested in what changed me. If I had to say, it would probably be that man. Oh, sorry, the courtroom itself. All the experiences I've had, and all the people I've met inside the courtroom, like that man, and perhaps reuniting with my old friends. Why do you keep talking like that? It's almost like you have someone in specific in mind. <laughs> I never expected you of all people to change. Who would have thought that you'd lay open your heart like that? I'm sure that man would be surprised as well. Guess I can't turn you away. I'm guessing it's a different that man, but still had to say it. It was an orange. I, I had to. Maybe long overdue, but allow me to properly reintroduce myself. If you'd be so kind as to read this. Uh, Edgeworth Law Offices. Raymond Shields, head attorney. E Edgeworth? Uh, Mr. Shields was an assistant to my deceased father. Gregory Edgeworth. Really? Your father was a defense attorney? So that means that man Mr. Shields talks about is... Correct, my cute little K. Prosecutor Edgeworth's old man. Ray, he's dead. Why do you keep talking about him like you're going to tell him? Are you going to tell Daddy? Well, guess what? He's fucking dead, you silly man. His father probably- Yeah, I kept thinking that he was talking about Gregory, but I was like, that doesn't make sense, because Ray was like, I'll tell that man. It's like, he's, he's dead. Ray, I I'm sorry to inform you, but did you know Gregory's been dead for like, more than 10 years or something? I never changed the name of the firm. It's my way of showing my appreciation for him, his help. Prosecutor Edgeworth. No, wait. Miles. Uncle Ray doesn't fully trust you just yet. It may have been temporary, but the fact remains. 
You were once a disciple of Von Karma. You say that you've changed, but you'll need to prove it to me with your actions. All I know is that w in one moment he says that man to Lang, but I forgot which. And I'm trying to guess every time I see him say that man, which is the Lang woman. <laughs> I talk about many men, many memo, but many men. Even your old man would have wanted it this way. Yes, I understand. Alright, I'm getting tired of all this stuffy talk, so let's give it a rest and move on. There's so many, like, that man or that thing talk. He has, like, 20 men, yeah. Didn't he say that man while talking about Quirkus once? I hope so, that would be awesome. <laughs> many men are in Edgeworth's life, yeah. They say, like, that blank for so many things, like, there's those things, talking about the animals and stuff like that. <laughs> Whatever he had with Knightley wasn't straight either. <laughs> for now, well, uh, Knightley, Knightley called him, what did Knightley call him? He, he called him, like, a good boy. Yeah, when Edgeworth was handing over the evidence, Knightley was like, yeah, good boy. It's like, okay, that progressed pretty fast, you just met, but okay, okay. <laughs> for now, I'll make you my temporary assistant. How does that sound? I'm sorry to trouble you. But this outcome's kinda moving, yeah? The prodigal son returning to work in his late father's law firm. What about me? What about me? Of course you can help too, Kay. Watch your words, Ray. Alright, thanks a lot, Mr. Shields. I, I mean, boss. Now then, let's get right to work. Let's see. First off... Uh, what do you think we should do, Miles? Uh, that's right. I had some unfinished business yesterday. I posted the screenshot of him calling Quirk as that man, and someone thought he was nervous, and he said that he says that man because if he said his name, he'd reveal he's in love. World's worst situationship. <laughs> oh my god, Simon Miles and Knightley reality bending situationship. Hmm, so it wasn't the victim, but rather, it was the first person to discover the body who screamed. Why don't we find them and listen to what they have to say? Yeah, that's it. Uncle Ray thinks so too. Hmm, upbeat as always. We never see them in the same room because it could destroy the concept of Yowie as a whole. <laughs> Okay, with that decided, let's hurry up and grill him! Um, uh, sir, what am I supposed to do? Detectives can't help defense attorneys. Hmm, I can't just leave him be. Detective, I will give you a special assignment. I want you to assist Mr. DeBest in his investigation, and follow his orders. And then, if you discover anything useful, I want you to share it with us. Detective, this is a job that only you can do. Can we count on you? Uh, yes, sir! Leave it to me! I'm really good at leaking investigation reports to the defense attorneys! <laughs> you sure are. Normally that would be a problem for me, but it may come in handy this time. Maybe Lang was right, he is a pretty boy. Alright, let's get moving, shall we? Time to go to jail. Indeed. Okay, we finally found you out for being a great thief. Time to go to jail. I'm still obsessed with the fact that Polly is seemingly here. I want to go to the left cell. I want to talk to Mr. Yogi. I'm sad. Now then, where's the person who first discovered the body? And now, all we can do is ask around. Hold it right there. I'm... Not sub- Oh, hi there. I thought you were going to show up ages ago. That was not Sebastian. Oh damn, this music. Who is this woman? Um, excuse me, but... Oh, you're simply irresistible. Huh? Do you mean me? Very nice, very nice indeed. What an elegant mustache. It's a pleasure to meet you, mademoiselle. Defense attorney Ray Shields. At your service. <laughs> Remember DL6, please, please. Just talk to Yanni Yogi and talk about <laughs> talk about your trauma together, please. How about we exchange greetings with a hug? 
you're weird. Oh, never mind. <laughs> but of course. Never mind. They're made for each other. They love hugs, both of them. Oh, look at them. Oh. Mm. That's unconsensual. Uh, Uncle Ray's uh, lips. The proper greeting should begin with a hug and a kiss. Why is she? He fell. <laughs> Uh, I'm gay, what the hell? Oh, Jesus, I'm, I'm gay. Kiss the soul out of him down. It's almost like it was stolen from him. Yes, a remarkable feat of quickness that would put a great thief to shame. I feel that close contact is very important. This goes for my family here. This goes for my family here in my home as well. C quite a splendid way of thinking that there. <laughs> I'm the warden, Patricia Rowland. But please, just call me Patty. The warden? So, she's in charge of the prison and detention center. Nice to meet you. Damn, what the fuck was going on with the music just there? I'm Mars Edgeworth. I'm a prosy- uh, I mean, I'm Mr. Shield's assistant. It was, it was like so calm that just- do -do 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 -do. Pardon me for asking, but were you here in the prison yesterday? But of course, yesterday was a day that I would, wouldn't would have missed for the world. Why are you speaking so slowly? Wouldn't have missed for the world? Did you have some kind of important meeting? Oh heavens no, I despise meetings. It was the animal show, of course. Ah, the music! A wonderful spectacle featuring animals dancing and flying through the air. I always see it along with everyone else in our home. We're one big happy family. I... <laughs> sure. Saying that you're like a big family in a workplace is already bad enough, but in a prison? In a prison? <laughs> Come on. We built a special stage in the courtyard just for this performance. A performance for the prisoner's enjoyment. Yes, very Halbert mentioned some kind of recreation. I suppose the animal shows what he was referring to. When did the show take place? Heard <laughs> the music and fell to my knees like I was having war veterans flashbacks. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, not a Wait, I wasn't on that case. Well, Gumshoe, time for you to have trauma and you only. Wait, Gumshoe's not here either. None of us will have trauma. All of us are fine. <laughs> it started at 8 a.m. and ended around It started at 8 a.m. and ended around 10 a.m. Don't know why Edward's pointing. <laughs> He's just sat there not saying anything, just pointing at her. You that's exactly when the body was discovered. So whoever saw the show would probably have an alibi. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must be going. I have business to attend to. Please take your time and have a look around our home. Hi, Chloe. Welcome in. I hope you're having a good time. <clears throat> Welcome in. Oh, Chloe, I'm... Sorry about the sussy backer apart. You, you missed it yesterday, but, um... Something, something happened. It glitched, and now the sussy back robot has turned into something else. A horse? What are you talking about? This is just... This is... You know? There's a horse, oh my god. Yeah, it's casual. D don't, don't you know what a prison horse is? The random animals in the corridors are so funny. Haven't you ever heard of prison animals? Come on. So where should we start, Mr. Right Ray? There was a prisoner who heard the sick scream from the person who first discovered the body. Let's start by talking with him. The animals are the prisoners. Your top horse. Wait, I want to see Mr. Yogi, please. It's just a cameo. Horse. Hmm, they even have a pony. Little kids could ride it. How nice, it's like a zoo. Although, it's the humans who are treated like animals in here. Do you think they'd find out if I took one home with me? Why are you putting on a fighting stance? I think that if you did that, you'd be the one behind bars. Do 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 do. Nightly animal. If he didn't die, oh my god, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. They've been tried for their crimes, being too cute. Monkey, monkey. Ooh. There's a monkey on that hill, Mr. Edward. Monkey. Hardly an appropriate spectacle for a prison. When you see stuff like this, you can really feel the tension rise. I hope you're not expecting me to agree with you. Also, Kay. 
Why does Kate want to fight all the animals? Just so I clear, I don't want to see you climbing that hill. But someone's got to show that monkey who's boss. Oh, look at the look at the kitty getting pets. Oh, did provoke the monkey. His gay little walk. I can't believe he struts his stuff. Little kitty. Hey, you there? I'd like to ask you some questions. Oh, so cute. Meow. It really is. It really is. Meow. Hey, you! Meow! He's a cat boy. He finally noticed me. By the way... What's this cat's name? Meow! His name is Normal. Meow! That's enough. Carry on with your duties. What we have here is a failure to communicate. The only good cop ever. The, the one good cop to ever exist. Okay, do not the monkey. Yo, top. Do I have to talk to you? Where's the person who first discovered the body? Right now. Uh, around this time, I think you should be in the workroom in the back. Oh, fair enough. Well, that workroom, okay, not the... Is I think this one was the one where Knightley died, so a different one. Is it? The workroom, I should go take a look. Is it the crime scene workroom, or the... Is, is the other thing a workroom, too? Hello? Is this occupied? Okay, that's not a restroom. Hey guard, do you have a minute? Oh, sir, what is it? Meow. Is anyone using that workroom right now? Presently, there's one prisoner working inside. I'm positive he's been in there since the noon ro roll call. We would like to ask the prisoner a few questions, if that is acceptable. Yes, sir, I'll bring him out, so please wait a moment. This case is so funny because they gave animals Trapper in to make them nicer, but they were so scared of Sohan they let him keep his murderous dog that could probably kill all of the guards. <laughs> what are you talking about? He's just a little puppy. I'll leave this to you, Miles. Oh, what do you mean? Ah, because I don't know what kind of scary guy will come out of that room. Mr. Shields, you're a scaredy cat. Even though you're not at all? <laughs> Same to you, Kay. Emotional support murderous dog. Here he comes. Yo, yeah, what up? I'm Frank. Oh, good day to you, sirs. Are you the ones who requested my presence? Hmm, he doesn't seem like a dangerous criminal. He's a lovely fellow. My name is Mars Edgeworth. I'm a prosecutor. A prosecutor? Is that right? Object- hold it. I don't know what I said. Hold it. Whatever. I'm Ray Shields, a defense attorney. Oh, Mr. Shields. His demeanor completely changed once he saw who we were dealing with. I haven't seen any Eastern Investigations 1 or 2 playthroughs well, until now. Whoopsie. Maybe Cat Monkey? Maybe. Frank is really fun in this case. I really hope so. I, that isn't what I meant to say. I... I don't know what I was going to say. I really hope so. <laughs> Mr. Did it! <laughs> Got him! Mr. Shields, his demeanor completely changed once he, once he saw who we were dealing with. Sorry about that. <laughs> my assistant says strange things sometimes. He's not a prosecutor. Just my assistant, in air quotes for some reason. Hey, get your act together, Miles! Hmm, I guess I messed up. I forgot about my new job. Simon like me and the monkey that beat the shower me for fun. It's just it's fun and games. No wonder I thought you were different from the prosecutor who visited me yesterday. It looks like he's already spoken to the best. May we ask you a few questions? Oh yes, of course you may. My name is Frank Sawit. Okay, go for it, Miles. Uh, I guess I'll be asking the questions. After all. Ugh. <sighs> Sighing in my mind. Mr. Sort, you're aware of the murder that occurred here yesterday, correct? Where were you when the body was discovered? I was in this room, where I had been working. What kind of work? Wait, he has a glove. A singular glove. Is the glove his? They're still besties to me, money just bullies him a bit. Money bullies everyone. What kind of work? Well, my goal is to become a pet groomer. 
An animal beautician, so to speak. Oh yes, I was inside cultivating my skills. In any other prison, such training would be unheard of. That was all. Honestly, I didn't see a thing. Hmm? Why did he say that? I haven't even asked him anything yet. Which is why I said to say I won't be any help to you. Mr. Sword, I haven't even asked you anything yet. Uh, no, wait. That's... Even if you were to ask, I would not... You know something, don't you? Uh, oh, oh, that's... It seems he is indeed hiding something. Let's try to press it out of him. Testimony... Oh, wait, chess? Chess! Chess! Do you know what chess is, Mr. Sword? First, let us assess the layout of the board. My opponent's condition is... I'm afraid I didn't see a thing, so I won't be any help to you. This man's expressions do not change much. It's a true poker face. Is it? Is it a true poker face? Really? It may be difficult to read his emotions from his body language. Perhaps I should focus on how he phrases his words. It may reveal what's on his mind. Oh golly. Oh no. I love logic chess. I don't have to think like with testimonies. Yeah, but now they're changing it up. Oh golly. Remember he got punched by a gorilla? Those are like four times more powerful than the average boxer. It's casual. They were just playing around. Perhaps I should focus on how he phrases his words. It may reveal what's on his mind. Now for the opening move, I'll start by asking about who this man is. Even if he hides his emotions, if I push the right buttons, I'm sure I'll cause a change. Are you involved with- I thought that said chess. <laughs> Are you involved with this case? Are you referring to the murder that occurred inside this prison? You know of a murder? I had nothing to do with it at all. Is that true? I would never dream of being involved in a murder plot. Hmm, how should I put it? I'm an upright model citizen, after all. Alright, pause. You're an upright model citizen. Common sense tells me. An upright model citizen would have never ended up behind bars. Oh, well, that is... Tell me what you know about the incident. I already told you, I don't know a damn thing! Uh, um, I really don't know anything. Fuck, I didn't mean to press that. I genuinely... I apologize from the bottom of my heart for that outburst. I think I was supposed to wait, but I didn't mean to. But I will be of no assistance. Pardon my rudeness. It's just that the murder occurred in this rather confined prison. It seems unnatural that you do not know anything about it. Sometimes I remember that Simon's canonically strong slash has high resistance and I get so shocked. He's just a lovely little fellow. Oh, uh, uh, natural. Is that so? If, if you're looking for the person who discovered the body, you should try someone else. Did I say who we were looking for? How did you know we were looking for the person who discovered the body? I don't recall saying a word about that. Are you sure you don't know anything? Uh, no, it was merely a hunch I had. I'm but a humble pet groomer in training. I honestly have no recollection of the murder. The only thing I groom is my cats. <laughs> I'm positive that this man is hiding something. That drink is strong as fuck, actually. For my next move, I'll ask him about his movements on the day of the murder. I'm seven again. This man suppressed his emotions. I'll expose his true nature hidden beneath that suspicious smile. What happened? What happened? Let's talk about what happened on the day of the murder. If he truly had nothing to do with it, there shouldn't be a problem, correct? Oh, well... On the day of the murder... There was a lot going on. Um... I want to know about your movements, right? The fact that he's the same height as Miles also takes me out. Toxic gossip train. Oh no. I'm not a groomer, I'm just a loser. Tell me what you were doing on that day. As I mentioned earlier, I was uh, cultivating my skills as a groomer in training. I was trimming the coats of the animals at the time. 
Didn't the murder cause a panic? I imagine the entire prison must have been in an uproar. Well, uh, but... Uh, there was no panic. I could even hear someone's voice. Oh? Was it laughter? Because of the... Circus? Was it laughter you heard? Or is that just a red herring? Haven't you realized it yet? I have you cornered! Whoopsie, sorry, my bad. Alright, that was just a red herring, I think. Someone's voice. Judging from the circumstances, I suppose it was a scream that you heard. So you do have a recollection of the murder. You kept insisting that you knew absolutely nothing about the murder. But you do not give credence to your claims. Ah! Well, I thought I heard someone's voice, but... In any case, I don't remember it very well. The scream at the time of the murder. It might be a clue. I better keep that in mind. So now I talk about the other thing. What did... what did I... Tell me about the state of the prison now. Come on, you go hello right here. What was the state of the prison at the time? I don't remember it too well. Uh, my memory's rather poor. Let's try using that clue. I thought you said you heard a scream. You don't remember? Ridiculous. Didn't you say earlier that you heard a scream? Oh, uh, that wasn't. Uh, I could very well be mistaken. At any rate, I honestly do not remember. You still do not remember? Enough with your lies. I ain't lying, you. Uh, I mean, I'm telling the truth. In any case, I was absorbed in grooming the animals. By the way, how skilled would you say you are in animal grooming? My technique with the scissors still needs some work. But I'm very confident in my handling of the animals. When the animals became frightened, I calmed them with my gentle hands. Frightened? Why would the animals have become frightened? I don't think that's a common occurrence. Oh, well, uh, that's a good thing, isn't it? Did the scream frighten the animals? Aha! Uh -huh. Perhaps the reason they were frightened was because of someone's scream. Why are you trying so hard to hide the fact that there was a scream? Are you concealing some vital information from me? Ah! I'm doing nothing of the sort. It's true that I heard some sort of scream, but I'm not trying to hide it. He's starting to show his true colors. This playthrough got me to, got to me gonna draw Manosota plus Mars situation ship. I'm assuming Manosota is Knightly or Simon. Either way, absolutely. He's starting to show his true color there. Ow, I bit my tongue. I should be more aggressive with my next move. I'll ask him about the scream. Oh, my time is rejuvenated. It's time to give him a taste of the futility of keeping a secret from me. Um, uh, when do you hear it? Oh, it's the shipment name for Simon and Horace. We're using the Roji names. Oh, absolutely, that's amazing. When did, you, when did you hear the scream? Uh, that's it! I just remembered. At the time of the murder, there was an event going on. It was the animal show. I had gone there to see it. So, you're saying that since you were watching the show, you did not hear the scream? That's completely different from everything you've said up until now. Shut up! So what if it is? I mean, my memory's just so hazy. You get mad easily, don't you? <laughs> You have some anger issues, don't you? Uh, the animal show was very enjoyable. What kind of animals performed in the show? Well, um... I believe I saw a whale. A whale? You didn't see the show, did you? You liar! You didn't see the animal show at all! Ah! Well, that is... I sort of saw it and I sort of didn't. He didn't see the show? Frank didn't see it. Uh, Frank didn't saw it. I... Fuck. 
This could be a clue. Uh, what did I say? Who did the screen belong? Fuck, is that what I already said? Do you know who the screen belonged to? Oh, well, I was mistaken. When the incident occurred, I just happened to be in the courtyard. Okay, no, that you. He didn't, Frank, saw it. Oh my god. That's why I did not hear the scream. Let's try using that clue. Just how deep are you going to dig your pit of lies? It's obvious that you did not see the animal show. Ugh! There's no way out of this. Tell me what really happened. Confess everything you know about the scream. I cannot answer what I cannot answer. Ugh, I didn't hear the scream. From the person who discovered the body. Oh? That's strange. Normally, if you hear a scream during a murder, it's usually from the victim. Why would you think the scream was from the person who discovered the body? Oh! Uh, my mistake! How? How did you know the scream was from the person who discovered the body? Oh, well, uh, that's because... You're the one- You're the one who got murdered?! Why didn't I click that? That was a fucking awesome answer! <laughs> Oh my god. Frank saw it, more like Frank didn't saw it. Hey. Oh my god, Callisto, you laughing sprite over that. <laughs> Allow me to answer for you. That is because you're the one who discovered the body. And the scream that was heard when the murder occurred didn't come from the victim. It came from you when you discovered the body. Ah, just who do you think you are? It's just as you say, but what gives you the right to do this? <laughs> Checkmate. Ah, uh, you silly man. Logic chess complete. I love chess. It's not clear who discovered the body. You have no more reason to withhold your testimony. Correct? Uh, very well. I'll tell you. But I doubt my testimony's worth hearing. Whether or not it's worth hearing is for me to decide. I will expose the truth with my own hands. That is my sole duty. Hold it. Um, I think you're a little off there, Mr. Edgeworth. What do you mean? Uh, we're not trying to expose the truth. We're trying to save Simon. Isn't our goal to help out our clients? I mean, you're not a prosecutor right now. You're a defense attorney's assistant. Hmm. Well said there, Kay. She's right on the money, Miles. The official task of the Edgeworth Law Offices is to defend our clients. Your old man who founded the firm truly valued the bonds he had with his clients. So if you're not willing to do the same, maybe you aren't cut out for this job. I don't want to fire you on the spot either, so have a heart, okay? You fucker. The heart of a defense attorney, huh? In any case, it's important that we hear the testimony of the person who discovered the body. I gotta save Simon, he's just an innocent little man, he's... <laughs> well, to be honest, sir... I'm just a little man. Stop talking, Mr. Sawit. Tell me what happened when you found the body. I was in the workroom over there practicing my skills. By some chance, I got curious about the adjacent workroom and went up to the door. I peeked in through the small window on the door. And then I saw him lying there. A man, not moving. Dead. I... Is that the same thing that you said with Cindy? Am I crazy? I quailed in fright and found myself letting, letting out a scream! If I may confirm one thing... You were in the room, right next to the one where the d dead body was found. Oh, he couldn't have moved because of the bracelets. Within the prison, we call it workroom B. And you were in there the whole time on the day of the murder? Yes, after the 7am roll call, I remained inside the whole time. In this prison, we have roll call three times a day. At 7 a.m., noon, and 9 p.m. And they check the workrooms during those times, too. Exactly. I see. So during the 7 a.m. roll call, there was nothing amiss. And Natalie's body was not in the workroom yet. Roll call three times a day, 7 a.m., noon, 9 p.m. Body was not found during the 7 a.m. roll call. So, it sounds like the murder occurred after 7 a.m., huh? And that's right when the animal show started. Correct. 
the other prisoners went to see the animal show. Meaning anyone who did not see the show does not have an alibi. Do you understand what I'm saying, Mr. Sort? Y yes that is certainly true. Uh, however, I merely discovered the body. His testimony is a clear contradiction. I should press him about that first. I should press him about it first. You can't just present evidence if you know what it is. You have to press first. I was going to press anyway, but now I'm, now I'm sad about it. I was in the workroom over there practicing my skills. By practicing, you mean, of course. Yes, my grooming training. For I'm a model prisoner. I somehow doubt that. By some chance, I got curious about the adjacent workroom, so I went up to the door. You were curious about the adjacent room? Precisely. I felt a need to look inside. Why did you feel that way? Even if you ask me why, I just did it on a whim. So you weren't concentrating on your training? Uh, no, nothing of the sort, for I am a model prisoner. It's just that uh, the other prisoners had left to see the animal show, which is why I was uh, feeling somewhat lonely. Yeah, that's like being stuck in a classroom after school's let out. Yes, that's right, and since I couldn't enter the other workroom... I peeked into the small window on the door. The small window? So, you couldn't get a clear look? Indeed. As you can see, there's a grill covering the window. It does not offer a wide view at all. Normally, the guards use it to check inside... Ow, oh, I bit my tongue. Check it inside the rooms, right? Precisely. You seem to be well-versed on this matter. <laughs> well, I happen to know a thing or two about prisons, you know. What? <laughs> what does she mean by that? I'll have to find out the details later. In any case, I peeked into the room from the window. Do I not have to press him? Was Miles lying? Then I saw him lying there, the man not moving dead. I think Miles lied to me. You knew it was a man right away. It was clear, judging from his physique and clothing. Even the fact that he was dead was as plain as day. You could tell he was dead through that tiny window. Well, it's not the first time I've seen a dead body. What? So, so you mean? I He's in prison. It's not that shocking that he's seen a dead body. The reason you're in here is because... I'm ashamed to admit it, but it is as you say. However, this was my first time seeing a body that someone else had killed. I quailed in fright and found myself letting out a scream. Do you remember what the scream sounded like? Well, all I can say is that I shrieked at the top of my lungs. Well, I guess that's what happens when you get scared. Yes, it is just as you say. In any case, I let out a scream. He is pretending to be an innocent bystander, but parts of his testimony are odd. Considering his situation and the place he's in, the contradiction should be quite obvious. If you haven't got it by now, you're a fucking dumbass. <laughs> Usually they give you like a hint, but here he's just like, well, it's pretty fucking obvious. If you haven't figured it out, you'd have something wrong with your head, don't you? Um, I think it's, I want to say this one, or it could be the next statement. He lied about pressing, what the heck? Edgeworth was like, yes, we have to press him, but no. Mr. Sort, please stop telling such feeble lies. You don't seem to understand your position. My position? I used to be a newspaper salesman, but then I took up the pet groomer training. <laughs> then I saw a woman, not moving, dead! Yeah, I thought that line was, uh, familiar. What about that bracelet on your wrist? It proves that you are unmistaken, unmistakably a prisoner. And as long as you wear that bracelet, you should not be able to move around as you please. As soon as you went through the door, the sensor would have sounded the alarm. Oh, uh, that is... Peeking into the adjacent room is impossible, when you couldn't even leave the one you were in. Woo-wee! Nice one, Miles. That was a real humdinger. What the fuck do you- are you- what, what the fuck does that mean? But does that mean Mr. Sight didn't see the body? I'm not sure. Perhaps. We should let the man himself explain it to us. Um, um, you see, that is- uh, well, forgive me, it appears my previous explanation was lacking. I shall clearly explain how I was able to see the body. Hmm. Very well. Let us hear your revised testimony.
There's a rather well-known technique among the prisoners here. If the hand with the bracelet stays in the room, you can step out without sounding the alarm. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Keep the bracelet in, but the rest of your body out. That's how I was able to peek into the adjacent room. The moment I realized that the man inside was dead, I let out a scream. Aren't the dolls pretty far, though? Am I crazy? Hmm, so that means... Oh no, the dolls are right next to each other. Never mind. Absolutely could have... He kept his arm inside workroom B while he peeked into the adjacent room. I'd appreciate it if you didn't mention this to anyone, especially the guards, okay? Was that what he was trying to, to hide earlier? I should try asking him for more details about a few other things as well. There's a rather well-known technique among the prisoners here. Tell me more about this technique. Certainly. Here's how it works. <laughs> Thanks. If hand with the bracelet stays in the room, you can step out without sounding the alarm. Fuck. Hold it. All you gain by doing that is a small degree of freedom. Naturally, but it is all that we have left to enjoy. I'm shocked that you enjoy such a thing. Have you truly reflected on what you've done? But of course, for I am a model prisoner. Your definition of model is highly suspicious. Regardless, was that the technique you used? Yes, that is correct. I made sure no guards were around when I did it. Ah, uh, Mr. Did it! That's how I was able to peek into the adjacent room. Why would you do something so troublesome and potentially dangerous? I heard a noise coming from the adjacent room. It seemed odd to me, as there should not have been anyone inside. So you peeked into the adjacent workroom as soon as you heard the noise? Yes, yes, of course. I peeked in as soon as I could. I see. Is there a problem with that statement? Well, yeah, because he was... There were no people, right? You should have seen the murderer. So, you looked into the adjacent room immediately after you heard the noise. If that was true, then you should have seen more than just a dead body. You should have seen the person who'd made the noise. Uh, that is... Um... Well... He looks really shaken. Mr. Sort. Answer me, what did you really see? If you intend to remain silent, I'll have no choice but to assume that you are complicit in the murder. Uh, oh, um, uh, please forgive me. It's just that I couldn't even believe what I saw myself. It may have been just a dream. I hesitate to even recall it. Tell me what happened. Very well. I will be frank with you. <laughs> I saw a dog. Who? It was a nightmarish scene. Oh, he's talking about... Uh... I want to say Balmung, but that's not right. That's DGS. Um... Anubis. A large black dog. Oh, fuck! Was biting into the neck of the victim! Oh, what did you say? It was a truly hellish scene. That dog... That dog killed him! Ooh... I think I'm gonna be sick. Ah, that's some great A trauma right there. I was chilled to my very core and let out a shriek. A man-eating dog inside the zoo of a prison. <laughs> you wanna... <laughs> Barks at me a lot. That was everything I saw. Do you believe me now? Yes, I do. I doubt one would be able to lie about something like that. Would you add that to your testimony? Certainly. Anubis mentioned my favorite dog ever, just a widow guy. The moment I realized that the man inside was dead, I let out a scream. Wait, what? Uh, and to my horror, there was a black dog biting his neck. Well, let's still press everything. Do you remember what this man looked like, in detail? Of course, I'm certain. He had blonde hair, and his throat was covered in blood. Is it really blonde, though? It's more like... Neon yellow. Right? <laughs> oh wait, I haven't looked at people's profiles yet. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's me. K. Faraday. Defending Mr. Keys. Rumor Boxer. Oh my god, a judge. She is. Rookie prosecutor. Suspect timid young man doesn't seem like a type to kill someone. Absolutely not. 
one of the prison and am animal of our values family contact. Trained to become the pet cream, I pressed to discover the body. So glad I looked at everyone. Do you take me for a fool? That should be obvious. I'm merely telling you everything as I saw it, just to be clear. Young defense attorneys love nitpicking over every little detail. I detect a tint of spite there. Perhaps you had an unpleasant experience with... That man. And to my horror, there was a black dog biting his neck. A black dog was biting the victim's neck. Yes, blood came pouring out, and... As a result, the dog's mouth became stained with it. Blood came pouring out. It's not on that side, is it? I don't think that's anything. Ah, stop, stop! You don't need to get that detail. At that time, was the victim... Yay! Mr. Edgeworth, why'd you ask him that? Kay! Oh, why'd you hit Uncle Ray? The man did not even flinch. He must have been dead already. But the blood continued to gush from his neck. He most likely had passed away already. His hands moved nary an inch. Uh, way too much detail. Oh, are you doing this on purpose? Certainly not. I'm just trying to give an accurate testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, shall I add that statement to my testimony? Sure, I don't care. It was terrifying. A truly terrifying sight. I love how much the game insists on how much Simon is a little innocent guy who did nothing wrong ever. Exactly, he's so timid and lovely. He, he could never murder anyone. Went to Lower Village, the whole circus. He most likely had passed away already. His hands moved nary an inch. That was a very vivid testimony. That is because I witnessed it up close, relatively speaking. I could feel the anguish he suffered in his death. Mr. Edgeworth, I won't be able to sleep tonight. Really? How terrible. Oh, come on. It's all because of you that my mind is filled with scary thoughts. I may even have nightmares myself, even though I can still remember everything clearly. The ring with the snowflake insignia glimmered with no purpose but to catch my eye. The fuck is... what? The ring... Knightley's ring? I examined that. But they didn't let me look at it. What the heck? A ring with a snowflake insignia. Impressive memory. I was formerly a newspaper salesman. I had to quickly identify what a customer wanted based on his appearance and uh, attitude. In order to form a successful sales strategy, it's the most basic of the basics. But you're dealing with a corpse, not a customer. Are you like that with everyone? Ah, uh, yes, it has already become an ingrained habit of mine. It was an important point that could determine the success or failure of a sale. And that's how you're able to easily recall such a minor detail. Precisely. Even the engraved insignia is crystal clear. Is that really possible? Oh, right. What was the state of the body when we found it? I shall review my evidence. I have an under, uh, un, unerring eye that much I can declare. So, Nanda was killed by a dog that was being kept here in the prison. I find that hard to believe. They say that pets take after their owners, yeah? It doesn't have to take after that, them that much. This completely defeats the purpose of the animal th therapy. Perhaps I should ask about the dog a little more. Shut up, I've already got past that part. <laughs> A ring with a snowflake insignia? Yes, that is correct. It was clearly engraved on the surface. I see. Your testimony is very accurate. But it's a little too accurate, if you ask me. And what's wrong with being accurate? You state that you saw a ring with a snowflake insignia engraved into it. I forgot the ring this game is so well, well written. Is the ring a big point? Because I remember investigating it like twice and Edgeworth was like, I don't care. <laughs> And it is true that the victim was wearing such a ring. See? Was I not correct? Now that is not the issue I have with your testimony. Take a look at this picture. As you can see, the right hand is covered by a sheet. It's Dolva's ring. Oh! 
That's cool. That's a lovely detail. It should not have been possible for you to see the engraving of the ring. Unless you had approached the body and lifted up the sheet for yourself. You said you only looked into their workroom, through the door. And yet you gave such a detailed account of what you saw. Who do you think you are? Ah, acting all high and mighty. I'm telling you, I saw what I saw. Oh, the victim must have moved his arm after I saw it. He was dead. What are you talking about? I don't think so. You said as much earlier. The man didn't even flinch. He must have been dead already. The victim was already dead. How would he have been able to move his arm? This guy's looking pretty suspicious now, here. Yeah? Frank Sword, what are you hiding, you scoundrel? You scallywag! Oh, no, I ain't... Uh, not... Uh, that is, you're wrong. I know what I saw. Uh, uh. <laughs> what the fuck? Shut up already! Stop making a fuss about every little thing I say! You're just an offensive and he's assistant! He's finally shown his true self. Whoa, I guess the cat's out of the bag. A black hairy one at that. Just went flying. I'm just your friendly neighborhood witness. Are you really just a witness? I would say that you're rather suspicious. What was that? You saw something that could not have been seen from the outside of the room. How is that possible? The logic behind it is simple. Mr. Sword, this is where you saw the body from. I want to say, like, here. Or inside the workroom, but I don't think... No, it's inside the workroom. Fair enough. Take that. When you discovered the body, you went inside the room where it laid. Since you saw the engraving on the ring... Alright, because you have to lift the sheet, of course, yeah. That is the only possibility. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Even if you say that, you ain't got no evidence, do ya? Where's the evidence that shows that I was in that room? I was grooming pets at the time. In the room adjacent to where the body was found. I even went so far as to borrow some rubber gloves. Show me the evidence that proves I was in the room where the body was found. Take that! Mr. Sword, what were you doing when the body was discovered? Did I tell you already? I was practicing being a pet groomer. I see. In that case, do you happen to recognize this glove? Oh, uh, that's... This was found near the body. It is believed to have been dropped by the culprit. By the way, I noticed that you also have a rubber glove hanging out of your apron pocket. No, this is something else. Looks like you're missing one of your gloves. Hold it! You can find gloves like these anywhere in the prison. Your evidence proves nothing! Something like yelled pizza? Pizza! Hmm, perhaps we should hand this glove over to the police for fingerprinting. I'm certain they will find some interesting results. What the fuck? Gah! 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 Cyclox or something? It's over. Objection. Oh my god, was that rare? Oh, what the? <laughs> Pretty cool, right? My objection voice. I completely changed my voice. <laughs> Mr. Shields, could you save the jokes for later? I'm not joking, because it's not over yet. There's still something else. Something that's clearly odd. That guy's a prisoner, you know. He's got the bracelet and all. That's right. How'd he get into the other workroom? The sensor would have set off the alarm, right? Mm, he's right. That's the only thing we don't know yet. Not so fast, Mr. Prisoner. Could you fill us in? <sighs> That's pretty weird. The bracelet should have been his last line of, line of defense. Defense? That's right, Kay. It was useful evidence for Mr. Pres prisoner here. He could have claimed that due to the bracelet, he wasn't able to enter the room. But he didn't say a word about it. Is there any reason why he didn't? <sighs> the silent treatment, eh? Well, the judge yesterday did say that silence is golden. Wow, you really are a hotshot defense attorney, Mr. Shields. Defense attorneys always remain calm in a pinch and smile in the face of danger. That's what your old man taught me, the defense attorney's creed, yeah? So, 
What's the deal? Why didn't you mention anything about the bracelet? <laughs> uh, how did my wig come back? The truth is, it's broken. Broken? Some time ago, I took a spill, and the bracelet hit the floor with a loud bang. Is that all that it takes to break these? Just bang them against the floor? Damn, all these prisoners should just whack their bracelets against the fucking wall. They'll all be able to just go around as they please. I took a spill and the bracelet hit the floor with a loud bang. Ever since then, it's not been able to activate the sensor. Forgive me, it was so convenient I didn't want to report it. I see. So the bracelet was broken. But, did it really break so easily? If that is true, then there's a problem with the prison's security. Yeah, if they break that easily, just fucking bosh them. Just bosh them against the wall and you're completely fine. You over there. May I have a moment? Oh, he's red the kitty. Here, here, kitty, kitty. Oh, you're such a cute little guy. Yes, you are. Meow. Excuse me. Yes. Oh, what can I do for meow? This prisoner's bracelet appears to be broken. What? Really? That's not good at all. I'll contact the person in charge and have it replaced immediately. Thank you. I'll be holding on to the broken bracelet for the time being. Such bracelet. Thanks, such bracelet. At the time the incident was broken, did not respond to the door sensor. Yes, sir. Please, take care of it. Now that the bracelet's been taken care of, shall we move on to arresting you for murder? <laughs> what the? What? Arrest the thought. I didn't kill anyone. But your bracelet was broken, right? Doesn't that mean you could have gone anywhere you wanted during the animal show? But all I did was find the body, honest! And it is true that I saw the dog biting his neck. However, I entered the workroom after the dog had left. Why did you do that? Well, because the dog was biting his neck, you assumed they killed him. Well, it was just... I was curious if he had anything of value on him. So, he was planning to loot the corpse. That's why he remembers Nugley's ring so well. Why are you looking at me, Mr. Edgeray? I'm a great thief. Please don't put me on the same level as him. But I didn't take a thing. The animal show had ended, and the other prisoners were making their way back down here. I hurried back to my workroom, and let out a scream to deceive the others. Oh. Uh -huh. And that's when you dropped the rubber glove. I guess the story holds up. What do you think, Miles? Ugh, whether he's the murderer or not, one big question remains. How did Nightly get all the way from his holding cell to the prison? You're right about that. It's a real stumper. And there's something Mr. Sword said in his testimony that I'm very concerned about. <laughs> you what up? If that dog had any part in... Ow, I bit my tongue again. Why do I keep biting my tongue? If that dog had any part in the murder... Mr. Sword. Yes? What is it? Were there any other prisoners? He didn't see the animal show. Yes, there is only one other than I... There's only one other that I know of. And this prisoner wouldn't have been able to see the show, even if he wanted to, correct? Yes, that's correct. Why do you ask? Just as I thought. I had my suspicions as soon as I saw that black dog. That fiendish criminal. I never expected him to be held here in this prison. Where is his cell? Uh, do you intend to meet him? Him? He's him. He's a very special man. He receives very special treatment. And... Oh, forgive me. I need to watch what I say about him. However, if you value your lives, I would advise you to stay away from him. Hey, cut it out already. You're giving me the creeps. Hmm, a puppet master in the shadows, huh? Yeah, I still value my life. He's being held in the special cell. Over there, in that direction. Oh, kitty. The special cell? It certainly seems like he receives special treatment. Well, so just who is this him anyway? To protect my own life, all I can tell you is that he is the oldest prisoner here. 
My deepest apologies, but I can't say any more. He's truly terrifying. Care to fill me in? Feels like you're leaving Uncle Ray behind here. He's someone I knew in the past. Let's head for the special cell. I believe that black dog should be there as well. Let's go! Gonna go by, have fun with the rest of your stream. Have a good time! Bye! I hope you have a good rest of your day, or whatever time zone it is for you. <laughs> hey, it's pitch back in here! I can't see a thing at all! Aren't you always talking about how the Yachigrasu is able to flap even the, in the darkest night? Even in the depths of night, when no other bird dares taste like... But... One alone source to shine the light of righteousness on the world's blight. And that one is me, for I am the great thief Yadagrasu. Oh, that was pretty cool. But still, I can't see I can't see what I can't see. I'm still just a human. Eek. Ooh. Ah. Mr. Edgeworth, I presume. That voice. It can only be. It has been far too long. So, you still remember me? <laughs> it would be impossible for, to forget, because it was you who did what none could do, and placed me here in this cell. Um, don't tell me that the dog's talking to you, Mr. Edgeworth. Is there someone else there? I can't see anything, though. Down, boy. It is rude to frighten the visitors. Here, allow me to illuminate this dark room. Huh? Oh, look at him! Kehe! <laughs> Such noisy visitors, and the voices and footsteps. Two more in the back. But it will be rude not to introduce myself. I am called Sir Han Dogen. Mr. Edgeworth and I, we are old acquaintances. Kehe! <laughs> This man is a former assassin. The blind assassin, Sir Han Dugan. His weapons are sharp knives and a ferocious dog. His appearance is always accompanied by the sound of a bell. It is said that the ringing of this bell in the darkness is the last sound his victims hear. Would you be so kind as to share the reason why you've come, Mr. Edgeworth? That will not be necessary. You're already well aware of why we're here. Kehe. <laughs> it seems we know each other quite well. King. <laughs> oh, look at him, doggy. Aw, little puppy. Yo, dog. Hey, by the way, I'm a prosecutor. Very well. Mm hmm. As the flower of death blooms, your request has been accepted. Well, this doesn't have such a sinister meaning behind it. We suspect your dog of committing the murder. The witness who discovered the body saw him biting it. There must be some mistake. My boy is obedient. He would never do such a thing. Right, Anubis? Good boy, good boy, good boy. Anubis may be your guide dog, but you raised him to be a vicious killer. He was one of the weapons you used as an assassin. To begin with, is the witness of a reliable sort? Oh, uh, it's true that Sword is also one of the suspects. And it's difficult to say if we can trust his testimony. In any case, I think you have the wrong dog. Right, Anubis? Right, boy? I wonder if he knows who the witness is. I would like to hear your alibi from 8am to 10am yesterday morning. He's chill like that, yeah. During the animal show. <laughs> I was in my humble cell the entire time. I took up whittling recently. My focus was solely on the wooden chisel in my hands. The prisoners have free access to chisels here. Normally, that's not allowed. The warden is a kind soul. She's given me special permission. Oh my god, chess? Kind? Ridiculous. Even five metal chisels? Would become deadly weapons in his hands. I started out by carving these Buddha statues, but I moved on to other shapes after the 674th. Really? That many? 
All it takes is time, which I have plenty of. Here is what I'm working on now. Sahan, here he is. Ew. He made these chess pieces himself? I did not know that you played chess. If I knew that, I wouldn't put you in jail. That's awesome. Do you play as well, Mr. Edgeworth? I would like to test your wits in a game sometime. I only started playing since my arrival here, so I'm still inexperienced. Hmm? What is this piece? It's a three-headed... dog? For a moment, I forgot these aren't the actual character voices and you're the one doing the voices, please. Yeah, I'm just... I'm... I'm... I'm every single Ace Attorney character. Just for the fun of it, I carved this hound piece. Chess is a game of war, pawns, knights, and castles. Each side pushing their forces to the limit to take the life of the enemy's king. You truly were the Ace Attorney. Edgeworth, who's another guy who plays chess and his autism is activated. Yeah, how many times has this happened so far? Where chess has been brought up and it was like, Oh, you play? Really? The subject's just completely changed to chess. <laughs> However, I have found the absence of dogs to be strange. Hounds are an indispensable part of warfare. But, it is nothing more than folly. I still play by all the normal rules of chess. Isn't it difficult for you to find opponents here in prison? Yeah, I, yeah. I always play correspondence chess. Correspondence chess? So you play chess through the mail. Prisoners are allowed to send and receive letters, although they are subject to inspection. At the moment, I'm waiting for my opponent's next move. Doug and carved a handpiece on a whim. Why is that bit important? Miles will find a serial killer who plays chess and, and go, Guys, come on, he plays chess. Like, do, 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 we, do we really need to lock him in this special room? I mean, he plays chess, he can't be that bad. Playing correspondence chess with my game murderous chess son. <laughs> <laughs> so he plays chess with people outside of this prison. Oh, he took up chess because of... because of... that man. <laughs> do you know who was murdered? It was Horace Knightley, a most unfortunate lad. Your ears are as sharp as ever. They're all I can rely on. As I thought, he has full knowledge of everything that goes on in this prison. Love Sir Hans so much, his design is amazing. Also, the B055 is so cool. Yeah, I remember realizing that. It's it's a really lovely detail. Just the, yes, I am the boss. I'm epic and poggers. <laughs> so he plays chess with people outside of this prison. <laughs> he should play chess with me instead. <laughs> on, on second thought, he might be fortunate after all. Fortunate? How so? He committed a grave crime, but he was able to avoid punishment for it. An assassination attempt on the president. What a bold man. Assassination attempt? That's not right. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, didn't Mr. Knightley just... He may have killed his own superior, but he never attempted to take the president's life. Are they trying to conceal the fact that the assassination was straight staged by the president? I mean, death seems like punishment enough. Yeah, it seems like even... Isn't that what punishment he would have gotten, right? I swear that the death penalty is an ace attorney, so wouldn't he have been killed anyway? <laughs> whoa, 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 hold your horses, Knight. Hold your horses. Knightley didn't attack the president. But Uncle Ray was requested to defend him in court on charges of attempted assassination. Of a sen... Uh, blah, blah, blah. You didn't know either, Uncle Ray? So, they're trying to pin the whole thing on Mr. Knightley. Now I see why the PIC is taking action. The woke PIC can't even kill someone nowadays without being charged for it. Tokens just saying shit. <laughs> ah, so that's why they removed you from the case. That depressed guy was going to indict him on charges of attempted assassination. And in doing so, they would have twisted the truth. <laughs> I suspected it was a false charge. I heard about it from one of the guards, about Knightley. He kept desperately insisting, I didn't assassinate anyone. But the court is supposed to bring the truth to light. I may not be well versed in law, but I can say one thing for certain. The work PIC pansexual lesbian MCR, yeah. Can't believe the work PIC can't even kill someone without being cancelled. Ugh. <laughs> Some of the prisoners here were convicted on false charges. 
Oh, that's the reality of it. Right, Anubis. Right, boy. Leaving the truth in the care of the court can be dangerous. Leaving the truth in the care of the court is dangerous. Huh. There was someone who said the exact same thing before. That investigator from Interpol who doesn't trust prosecutors. Uh, hey, you're not twisting the truth behind those closed courtroom doors too, are ya? Fueled by those ideas, is it any wonder the courts produce nothing but falsities and lies? Rest assured, the next time we meet I won't be so forgiving. We've been dating for seven months now. Our doubter's distrust is cleared up completely. Hey! Line cameo, woo, let's go! Kid, you feel the same way, don't you, Anubis? The truth of the courts and Mr. Edward's reasoning both can't be trusted, right? Oh, it is nothing to be upset about. You're not the only one who suspects me. From the enough between investigations one and two, I think there's like two months. <laughs> we were dating before we even met. Uh, don't ask me how. We were pen pals. Yup. <laughs> Yesterday, the other prosecutor and the judge came here too. They brought the warden along. How they despise me. <laughs> One month. <laughs> you know, we've... it's awesome. Craziest two months of Matt's life. Yeah. Oh, it must have been those two rude people from before. Prosecutor DeBest and Judge Courtney. They thoroughly inspected my room, but left without finding a thing. <laughs> it seems they were searching for the murder weapon. It's a shame. They searched the other prisoners' cells too, not just mine. Yet they were still unable to find anything. All that hard work was for naught. <laughs> Mr. DeBest and one Roland searched the entire prison but did not find the murder weapon. <laughs> This is quite a problem. What do we do? So its testimony alone won't hold up. In order to confront him, we'll need evidence. Let's go out and see the circus. Now, if my guests would be so kind as to leave. Right, Anubis. Show them the way out. Oh, fuck. Ugh. Ugh, does this mean what I think it means? L -l 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 Let's get going, Mr. Redworth. Zing jinkies! I hope I'll fuck it up. <laughs> Zoinks! We shall meet again, Durgan. It would be a shame for our long awaited reunion to end so soon. I'll be waiting. Kay. See ya. In two months, you managed to have two crazy situationships. Oh, there's water. Is that for the animals? Now then, we still need to find that murder weapon. Mr. Redworth! What? Where are you? Oh my god, she's climbing at you, fuck yeah! <laughs> she went all the way up there. It's fine, okay, come down from there. Hey, she jumped. Where's Mr. Shields? Beats me. He just took off running like death was after him. Good grief, that man. What should we do now, Mr. Redworth? We'll continue investigating. Investigating. First, we should... Start by solving that one mystery. Nadu's body was found in a workroom inside the prison. However, he was supposed to be in the detention center's holding cell. She saw me, I love climbing random things. Climbing random things is so fun. How did he get to the prison under such tight security? Let's go investigate the holding cell at the detention center. That was where Mr. Knightley was held, right? But what about Uncle Bray? Don't call him that. Let's just leave him be for now. I thought we were supposed to be his assistants, though. The victim's cell in the detention center was this way. Let's check it out, Mr. Redworth. Oh, this is truly just dreadful. Hmm? What happened? Yeah, it is Patricia. 
That's the warden, Ms. Rowland. She must have come from behind that no-entry sign. So, he still won't talk? Even after all the trouble he went through to get the evidence transferred from the present precinct? That's right. I don't know how many times I've tried. I can't report back empty-handed. That assassin sure is one tough cookie, huh? Did they just say assassin? Duggan. Oh my. Pardon me, but were you talking about Sir Han Dugan just now? Oh, eavesdropping, were you? You naughty boy. Did you question him personally, Warden Roland? Not just him. I tried to have a heart-to-heart -heart with all the prisoners and suspects. In my home, we're all family here. It's only fair I invite them to my warden's office. The warden's office? Oh, have you taken an interest in my room as well? It's just down this hallway, but outsiders are not allowed past this point. Down the hallway? So, around there. Ha oh, ha it's such a lovely room. People do so enjoy being invited back there. I always show them the splendid view of my precious courtyard. The courtyard of this animal-filled prison? I'd sure love to see it. I'm delighted that you want to see it. However, I cannot invite you. What? You're not a child of our home. If you want to come to my room, you'll have to be convicted first. I... Th that's... Maybe don't say that. That's a rather high hurdle to clear. Goodness me, look at how long we've been talking. I was just about to feed Ali her lunch. Ali? Ally? What? Oh my god, are you part of the woke PIC? <laughs> She's my favorite little angel. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must be off to the courtyard. Toodaloo! She's so lovely. I never got a chance to ask her about Dogen. Well, let's head over to Nightly's cell. Ew. Is there any chess here? This is the victim's cell. When did Mr. Nightly arrive in here again? It was after the President's welcoming ceremony, on the night of March 25th. So, when and how did he move over to the prison? There might be some evidence left that can answer that. Alright, let's get cracking, Mr. Edgeworth. So, like I said earlier with how I don't remember certain parts, this area I don't even remember at all. Give it up, let's leave. Oh my god, I can taste freedom! <laughs> hmm? The reflection in the mirror. Ah, it's a security camera. A great thief's arch enemy. I guess they don't take too kindly to thieves here. There's no reason for a detention center to be kind to thieves. God. I would like you to check the footage of this security camera. If you find any problems, report to me at once. Understood, sir. Toilet. It's not as dirty as I thought it would be. And the toilet paper shows no signs of use. Looks like there are no problems with the toilet. Eh, there's a huge problem. What's the problem? It's totally awkward having the toilet out in the open like that. They need to think more about the end user. This facility wasn't designed with the spirit of service in mind. There's a little partition at least. There's something. Better than some prisons, I think. I guess the detention center, not a, not a prison, but... Windows of the iron bars. There are no signs of tempering. It doesn't look like the criminal could have escaped through the here. Mm-hmm. What if these iron bars are removable? Let me inspect them for further reference. Okay, now's not the time for that. We're in the middle of an investigation. I won't rest until I've inspected the reasons really long looking candy. Franny, sorry. Hmm? This newspaper. It's missing a few pages. It a bit, they appear to be torn out. Why would someone tear out the pages from a newspaper? Maybe they used it to clean the cell instead of a rag. Cleaning the cell? It's quite possible. Speaking of cleaning, what the fuck? Hmm? Something seems off. The floor here is clean. Was it mopped recently? How's it going? Welcome in, Jeremiah. I hope you're having a good day. So far, it's... 
go in absolutely swell. It seems strange that only the area in front of the bed has been wiped clean. It's Horse Nighty's suit. According to the results of my investigation... Hmm? What did you find out? The man who looks good in his suit leaves a more favorable imp impression with the ladies. Ah! Next time I'll, I'll investigate men who look good in frills. Ha! I'm the coolest! <laughs> Thanks for the follow! Ha! I'm the coolest! Please don't bother. This looks like, like an uncomfortable bed to sleep in. But the pillow covers are clean, not a speck of dust on them. Is this what the Betty Gummies place looks like as well? No, if my hunt is correct, he has no beat up mattress lying around in his room. You're rude, Edgeworth. I think that's all. Let me just quickly. I already checked this area. Did you watch those mouses on fire? I did. I did watch them. I thought that they were really, really funny. A few of the opinions I disagreed with, like, they hated K, like, oh my goodness. <laughs> like, really hated K, but they were so funny, oh my god. I also have been getting recommended, like, uh, Miles is a Robot or something, which I think is this game. So I'm, I'm gonna be watching those after this. I won't rest until I've inspected the rest of the looking in cranny. But I did watch them. It was, it was actually really, really funny. And also the voice actors were so good. Oh no, not Jello Apocalypse, yeah. I didn't agree with their, like, opinions on the game, really, but they were really funny. Hit his ass? That's fair. Ah, there's something on the desk. It seems to be some kind of memo. Let me take a closer look. He's funny, but I hate him so much. Yeah, he's really funny, and all of the voice acting was really good, but I really didn't agree with their opinions on the game. They, like, really hated the game and a lot of the characters and stuff. It seems to be some kind of memo. Let me take a closer look. Ooh. Next move is... Ah. Oh. This is... Chess notation. It was probably the victim's. What's chess notation? It's a memo that records the positions of the pieces of a chessboard. His tier list is horrendous. I feel like I've seen that, but I don't remember it. This is a good match. I've also... I've heard that he likes Spirit of Justice, which... I don't know for sure. This is just something I've heard, but if that's the case... That's already a red flag. <laughs> Sorry, but if, if if anyone here likes Spirit of Justice, no hate to ya. It was a great game, but like, it's still it's still a red flag, you know? <laughs> this is a good match. My next move would be Pawn to... No, actually, before that. Mr. Redwood, this is not time to be playing chess. Went a bit viral on Ace Twitter not long ago. I see. Ah, you're right. Mm hmm? The positions of the chess pieces recorded in this memo. I feel like I've seen something similar somewhere else. I should take a closer look at the evidence I've collected. Deduce. Where do I deduce? I'll just deduce it here. Put Acro above Regina? What? That's horrendous. That's awful. That's terrible. The heck? This chess notation. I've seen it before. Of course you'd memorize what his chess board looked like. You're still thinking about chess? Focus on the investigation, focus! <laughs> also, I love how... <laughs> this is hacking, um... Next I move Rook. Mm, no, Pawn a G6? <laughs> it's like phrased like a question like he's saying it. Not like, next I move Rook, now you should his mind he like crosses it out, Pawn to G6. Like, mm, no, uh, Pawn a G6? Chess is quite important to this investigation. Okay, have a look at this. Are these the chess pieces? From Dogen's cell? I don't know much about the rules of chess. Put Terry far too high, really? And other grimaces and horrible characters too? Ooh, that's not... Terry? Like, even putting aside the the grooming and all that, like, just say that he, he wasn't a pedophile. Terry just wasn't really... He was, like, very just not that good of a character, you know? Like, even putting aside the, the grooming, it was just kind of a bit annoying. <laughs> the rules of chess are not important here. But maybe that was just me being biased because I knew that it was a pedo. My favourite part is the game Sod went to wait to present the fireplace, which actually means present it two times in a row. Oh <laughs> <I>, yeah. 
Look at the positions of the chess pieces. Uh, watching that did actually, like, remind me of a few things that I didn't really point out, but, like, I was, like, watching back, I was like, yeah, those are really bullshit, aren't they? Like, um, I also investigated the fireplace in Palaino's, oh, sorry, not Palaino's, um, Cochin's office, like, immediately. I inspected that fireplace immediately, and it didn't say anything because of the bilateral symmetry. And then we have to go and examine it later, which, like, now that I think about it, because they pointed out, that is really bullshit. Look at the positions of the chess pieces of the- Look at the chess- Positions of the chess pieces in this memo and the pieces in Dogen's cell. Do you notice anything? Ah! I don't know anything about the different chess pieces. But if you flip the board around, the positions of the chess pieces are completely the, 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 the same! Yes, although the memo doesn't include the Cer Cerberus chess piece, the positions of the other chess pieces are identical. Well, what's going on here? I always play correspondence chess. Turn about a blaze, my beloved. I honestly really enjoyed it. I get that Albus cross examinations went on for way too long, but I personally didn't mind. I think because I just really enjoyed doing his voice, but I really didn't mind turn about a blaze. There were a lot of annoying moments, but for me, it wasn't enough to ruin the case. This might be hard to believe. Same as um the kidnap turn about. But Duggan's chess opponent was. Uh, are you saying he was playing against Mr. Knightley? With this, we now have the evidence to link Dogen with the victim. <laughs> Examine it like this is a terrible move. <laughs> I think that's all. There's nothing of... What am I pointing at? Whoopsie. I need to look at if... No, they don't say about Nook and Kami. Never mind. Menu. Mr. Edward, is this a dining menu? You can choose your daily meals in this detention center. However, unless you have the money, you won't be able to choose what you want to eat. I... Do they still feed you? In the end, the world revolves around money. Doesn't this mean that the rich won't have to reflect on their crimes? Yes, well, those who come here haven't been declared guilty yet. There are a few good people who don't need to reflect. Probably. It sounds like you're just making excuses for them, Mr. Edward. It sounds like you're being a slave to capitalism, Mr. Edgeworth. Ugh! Why should I have to come up with excuses for the detention center? Wait, there's a crack. Is that important? It might just be to make it look run down. There are a lot of books here. What's this? The Wonderful Warden of Ours? <laughs> the Hound Whistler, The Animal Shack Redemption. Mr. Knightley, he is a surprisingly good person. No, the detention center provides these books for the visitor's own edification. These books are supposed to help you grow as a human being. Hmm. Prison life for dummies. These books were written by model prisoners and former inmates. Ah, uh, here's a helpful book. The Great Escape in 80 Days, based on a true story. Speaking of Akra, I like how you can ask for testimony in some tricky questions, like, did he have an accomplice or what was his motive to kill the ringleader? Hmm, yeah. I, I didn't like Akra, to be honest. I liked him when I first watched a playthrough, because I was like young and I was just like, ooh, someone in a wheelchair, he's just like me for real. Um, but looking back, he was just kind of boring. <laughs> and also he was defending a pedophile, which instantly made me not like him. Here's a helpful book, The Great Escape in 80 Days, based on a true story. Oh, check this one out, Crime and Establishment, How to Make Money in Prison. The problems with this detention center may run deeper than I thought. Is that it? Might just be it. Do do do. Need Akra to die. <laughs> That's a fair response. Uh, is there anything we haven't looked at then? Can we go? I want to leave! Uh, we looked over here, right? Wait, I'm actually confused. Wait a minute, am I stuck? Oh no! Regina's my everything, anyone who ever wronged her should die. You're in a wheelchair? Uh, yeah. When I was younger. Not anymore, though. I still do use a cane, though. The security camera is clearly visible in the mirror as a reflection. Hmm, I don't like it. It's like a constant reminder, you're being watched. I understand your feelings. However, 
I definitely don't want to live in a place like this. Every morning I'd be reminded again while I'm at the sink that I need to look good for the camera. Don't get too worked up about it. Look at the toilet again, why not? It's not as dirty as I thought it would be. I also already checked this area, where? I am confused? I am stuck? No, I don't want to be stuck. Is there anything I haven't examined? Oh no! Hope you won't need a can anymore. It's not that much of a hassle. I don't go outside much, so... What's really a concern right now is, what the fuck is the evidence I'm missing? Do I have to do logic? I don't have to do logic. Completely forgot about this core aspect of the game. Oh my god. They already made this connection, I have to make it too? Well... Did he use it as a rag? Oh, I don't know. They already made this connection in game. <laughs> oh, that's silly. <laughs> the floor here is clean. It was probably wiped down with something. Did someone spill grape juice here? I don't know exactly what. What was? What is Estonia's obsession with grape juice? I don't know exactly what was wiped away, but I can imagine what was used to wipe it. It's very likely it was this torn up newspaper. Is the game supposed to be choking like that? The game lags a bit, yeah. Couldn't you've asked one of the guards if he could borrow a cleaning rag? Just look at the, um, spinny report. Sorry, I, I alt-tab, but look at the spinny back report. If that person's spinning as they should be, then the stream isn't lagging, it's just the game being weird. And also you can kind of hear it in the audio too. Perhaps it was something you didn't want the guards to see. It does just lag a bit, unfortunately, but nothing we can really do about it. Investigation complete! So, this is what our investigation turned up. It seems we've found a major connection between the victim and Dogen. This is terrible! Hmm? What happened? It is the guard. Uh, the security camera recorded something terrible! What? Can you let me see it? Of course, sir! I have a portable playback device right here! Then let me see it right away! What are we playing this on? Oh, yo! There's... video? Laggy as fuck. Oh, shit! Is Natalie being killed? By... dog? Golly G? This is... This black thing's gotta be that doggy, right? I tried logic to have the victim died. Logic included. <laughs> Hmm, we need to think about this. The victim. I believe he died. Case closed. Up until this point, I thought the murder took place inside the workroom, but it appears I was mistaken. The place where Nabi was... Hmm, well... It could have been the warden's office, it could have been a... Hmm, I don't know. It was the detention center. And furthermore, he was attacked by Dogen's dog. This is the decisive evidence. Oh my god, I love these little parts where I can just skip for some reason. If Natalie was killed in this room, then this piece of evidence we found in this cell takes on a new meaning. Which piece of evidence takes on a new meaning if the murder occurred in the holding cell? A uh, couple things kinda do. I'm gonna say... The chessboard? Yes, the meaning of this evidence. Mr. Richard, why have you got caught wide all of a sudden? Um, it's nothing. Sorry. Take that. There's a few things that kind of... do change. I'm gonna guess it's the chess. Wrong chess? Maybe wrong chess. Take that. Oh, is it? Do 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 ba do ba do ba do. Take that. What the golly? 
Ah, my slipper fell off. The fucking dog? I don't know. Oh wait. Yeah. Did not find the murder weapon. Is that because it was the dog? Nope. We're getting there. Very soon. Very soon we'll have the answer. Take that. I swear I presented almost everything now. Take that. What have I not presented? Take that. Oh, it's the blood. I get it. That, that, okay, yeah. But there were a few things that kind of changed meaning when we find out that the murder was a different spot. Like, that's not very specific as were. For some reason, someone wiped the floor clean. Yeah, blood. It's possible they were wiping away blood stains. Thank you for your hard work. While I have your attention, May I ask for one more favor? Uh, what would that be? There should be a detective by the name of Dick Gumshoe in the detention center or the prison. I would like you to give him a message. Tell him to check this room and for traces of blood and give the results to me. Yes, sir! Oh, I can't skip anymore. They should corner that old coot. No, not yet. We still don't know how Natalie and the dog moved from here to the prison. That's true, but once we figure that out, what should we check out next, Mr. Edgeworth? The guards here might know something about the murder. Let's see if we can learn any new details from them. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. All right, let's continue our... Ah! Oh my god! He's here! Already? I didn't think he showed up until case 5! <gasps> oh my god, I, I actually didn't know he was here! Oh, sorry to intrude. Oh my god! I actually didn't know he was here yet! Oh my god. Lang! Well, if it isn't Mr. Prosecutor and the little lady. Fancy meeting you here. This man is Shilong Lang. An Interpol agent. About two weeks ago, he was in charge of investigating one of my cases. One of your cases? I would have thought he'd return to his native country of Zengfa by now. Agent Lang, what brings you here? Just some boring work. Nothing you need, need to know about. Haha, <laughs> on top of a black dog, you meet a black wolf. Huh? You came alone today, Agent Lang. Usually. He'd have a huge police force with him. Mr. Prosecutor, seems to have been busy these past few days. These past few days? Is he referring to the incident with the Zengfa president? I would have thought you would be involved in his security too. Ha! <laughs> Our president doesn't even trust his own country's police force. Look at the results of hiring a private security com company. It's laughable. Agent Lang doesn't trust prosecutor prosecutors all the courts. That's why. He brings along a large force of capable policemen to thoroughly investigate the crime scene. It's Agent Lost Legend, look at him! Agent Lobotomy! Agent Lesbians! Yes, if you and your subordinates had been there, the results might have been different. My subordinates, huh? They're... no longer with me. They're not with you. Funny, looks like I'm a real lone wolf now. Ha 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 Agent Lang. Just what happened, exactly? Didn't I tell you? It's nothing you need to know about. Well, be seeing you, Mr. Prosecutor. Mr. Lang, I wonder what happened? 
Yes, it troubles me too, but there's nothing we can do about it for now. Okay, let us continue with our own investigation. Got it! First, let's ask those guards a few questions. Hi, God. Hmm, this is a difficult case. What's wrong? Is something troubling you? Uh, sir, one of my uniforms has gone missing. But I'm certain that I placed it in this locker. Maybe the uniform girl likes and walked off somewhere. What kind of logic is that? In any case, I wish you the best in your search. I'll be rooting for you. Yes, thank you for your support. Stolen from a locker in the detention center hallway. Hmm. You there, have you seen a black dog around here? Uh, of course not, if I'd actually seen it. I wouldn't be standing around here so carefree. Um, did something happen with that doggy? Okay, let's not press this matter any further. Hmm, so Dogan's dog didn't come by the detention center. Oh, there you are. Hey, I'm back. I don't know why my name's always question marks when I show up. Mr. Shields, where did you go? Where indeed? I've been searching for you guys this whole time. Walking all around the prison is hard work, you know. That's strange, seeing as you came from the opposite direction. I've got some new information. You want to hear it? Do you? You shall change the subject quickly. I heard a little something from the guards. It seems Natalie caused a bit of an incident two days ago. An incident? You know how Simon said he came to visit Nightly, right? After the visit, when Nadler returned to his cell... Ew, look at him. Naturally, a guard escorted Nightly back to his cell. While the guard was in handcuffs, all of a sudden Nightly struck the guard and knocked him out. It seems he was going to attempt a jailbreak. By the time the other guards arrived, the key to his cell had disappeared. But there's been no reports of Nightly's jailbreak attempt two days ago. Exactly. Strange, isn't it? Right up until his death, he was still in that cell. What's more, Nightly claimed he never stole the key in the first place. In fact, they searched his cell, and the key was nowhere to be found. Did the guard who was struck have anything to say? No one knows. He was taken to the hospital while he was still unconscious. And he's still there now, it seems. So in the end, we still don't know what happened. Nightly's cell key during the attack on the guard, the key to Nightly's cell was stolen, current location unknown. It's you! Hmm? That voice. Simon? Oh. Sabby! What are you still doing hanging around here? Uh, well, you see, this is my assistant. Are you here to object to our- yeah, are you here to object to our investigation and make me into a laughing stock? Sebastian, I believe obstruct is the word you're looking for. In a way, I think his expression was apt. A pleasure meeting you again, Judge Courtney. I am... Um... I know, you're Simon Key's defense attorney, are you not? Well then, let's skip the formalities and celebrate our happy reunion with a hug. I'm going to hit you on the head. Oh my god, she is! Or maybe not! He's the best, he certainly is. Incidentally, I heard you mention an assistant a moment ago. Yeah, for assistance at the Edgeworth Law Offices. Prosecutors are civil servants. To open a side business is to betray the goddess of law. As long as profit is not our objective, there shouldn't be a problem, right? Yeah, that's it. Mars here is a volunteer worker. The purpose of my office isn't to make money. We're pro bono. What a wonderful heart you have, defending others without demanding payment. Ah, <laughs> I do have an amazing charitable heart. More importantly, I'd like you to explain your reasons for arresting Simon Keyes. There's no need to. Is that a challenge against me? Uh, no, I was speaking with Judge Courtney. I guess it can't be helped. If you want to take on the best, you will fall like the rest. I haven't said anything yet, but this is convenient. Then I will hear you out. What were your reasons? For arresting Mr. Keys. I see no need to inform you, Sebastian. Let us... <laughs> Just watch, Justine. Watch as I run around in circles against this useless prosecutor. 
Someday log workers walking around with deadly weapons? It's casual. We don't have to worry about that. It's just a part of the law. I think you mean it runs circles around me. Yeah, that's what I meant. Prepare yourself, Mr. Edgeworth. So, <laughs> this music. <laughs> so, he wants to know my reasons for arresting that man. The answer is simple. Yes, we found traces of that guy over there. How's that? Perfectly simple, perfectly decisive, right? Of course, I was the first to notice it, because I'm the best. How am I supposed to go about pressing that? How's that? Got nothing to say. Speechless in my presence. Ugh. This guy sure talks a lot. So, you're the one who arrested Mr. Keys, I take it. Mr. The Best, do you have the right to such a thing? To do such a thing? Oh, well, obviously, it was the police who carried out the arrest. But since it was under my direction, shouldn't it also count as my arrest? As I expected. It'd be difficult to deal with both of them at the same time. However, her silence is troubling me. Just what is she thinking? <laughs> so, you want to know my reasons for arresting that man? Let's get on thing. Get let's get one thing clear. You do know who you arrested, right? What? Do you take me for a fool? The one I arrested was Simon Keys. No doubt about it. I expected he'd at least understand that much. Obviously, we had a fatal reason for arresting Simon. Really? That's quite a surprise. So, what is this fatal reason for the arrest? Are you attempting to lure information out of me through flattery? A good strategy, but I am afraid. It won't work on me. We found vital evidence implicating Simon Keyes. That's what Sebastian was trying to say. Yes, so because of this fatal vital evidence, I had Simon arrested. The answer is simple. Yes, we found traces of that guy over there. That guy over there. Oh, damn, this music. That's certainly vague. Well, don't they say, the best hears one thing and understands ten. You're just being lazy. Explain it more clearly. Sebastian, if it's alright with you, would you please explain it to them in more detail? I'm sure that everyone wants to hear what you have to say. Hmm, alright, if you insist, Justine. We discovered that. Perhaps you didn't know, but the victim carried a chessboard with him. From it, we found that suspect we found that suspect guy's I mean Simon Key's fingerprints. Well done, Sebastian. I bless you on behalf of the goddess of law. Please amend your testimony. Are you alright with that, Prosecutor Edgeworth? Yes. Don't doubt the best don't don't doubt he's the best at his work, yeah. He's he's so good at what he does. The victim carried a chessboard. From it, we found Simon Key's fingerprints. Surely it wasn't you who discovered the fingerprints. Hey, I'm just a prosecutor, aren't I? I leave that stuff to the forensics team. These fingerprints could be a problem, but it wasn't the chessboard originally. Maybe I should take another look at the evidence. How's that? Perfectly simple, perfectly decisive, right? It certainly is. What's perfectly simple and decisive is how flimsy your testimony is. What are you saying? You just can't keep up with my train of thought. It may be presumptuous of me, but allow me to explain. The fingerprints found at the scene belong to the guards and the prisoners. And the only ones that should not have existed belong to Simon Keyes. Yes, exactly! Do you get it now, Mr. Redworth? <laughs> the real question is, do you get it? The other prints belong to the victim and the guards. Yes, only Simon's prints were natural. If there are other people's fingerprints, then there should be more suspects. <laughs> I'm afraid that's not possible. And why is that? Certainly, if not for Simon Key's prints, there would have been more suspects. However, his fingerprints should not have existed. Uh, that's right. After all, Simon is is neither a prisoner nor a guard, so naturally, he wouldn't have been allowed into the prison. And yet he left his fingerprints. I think that's enough reason for an arrest, wouldn't you say? Yes, well done, Justine. You're welcome.
I love them so much. Of course I was the first to notice it, because I'm the best. Hold it. If it's so flimsy, where's the contradiction network? Yeah, Edgeworth. You haven't shown a contradiction yet. Come on. Eat free. Selling something in prison. First one to notice. Do you have any proof? I noticed at the very instant I saw the crime scene. Faster than, than the speed of light, that's the ca best kind of proof. Hmm. And what does that prove? Wow! <laughs> you still don't understand. But don't feel too bad. You're simply not the best, unlike me. Uh, I don't think I want to understand. My reasoning is faster than light. It'll take you a light year to get in. Get it? In short, I am the best. Does he keep adding statements? I swear that this was like four, four things long. You do realize that a light year is not a measure of time. Oh. Uh. Sebastian, a light year is a unit of distance. Oh, right. What? This isn't the time for this. What is he saying? It's really vague and hard to understand. First, I'll have to teach him how to speak a language people can understand. Teach it to him, Professor Edgeworth. So, uh, I think that's just because Sam was the one who brought it. Only Simon's friends were natural. The lag elevated this for me. It's my, my lag, by the way. Is it lag for the stream or lag for the game? Because if it's lag for the game, then that's just normal. Sam brought it at his request. How's it not there? Wait, there are only four statements. What the heck? I don't know why it was that statement, not the other one, but okay. Fingerprints found on the chessboard. Is that the ace up your sleeve? Ace in my sleeve? Oh, ace up my sleeve. Yes, the methods I use are always the best. The a This ace is my trump card. Asexual? I see that the woke PIC is going too far now. Well then, allow me to- wait, asexual attorneys? No, it can't be. I'm not woke, am I? No. Allow me to show you that it is not, in fact, a trump card at all. Simon Keyes was the one who sent this chessboard to the victim in the first place. So it's only natural some of his prints would be left on it. Ah! That took way too long. These fingerprints are hardly decisive evidence. Perhaps your arrest was a little too rash. Rash? To begin with, this incident occurred in the detention centre, and the prison. A <laughs> walk attorney! <laughs> wait a minute, me dating a man! It... Wait a minute, is my boyfriend woke? To suspect Simon just because he isn't a prisoner or a guard is a little unreasonable. Ah! Oh, what? What's with him all of a sudden? <laughs> I finally get what you're trying to say. Rash, you mean we were too quick to arrest the guy, right? He was stuck on that? I guess Simon's guilty had to present the blank again, yeah. <laughs> sure, I was the first to lay eyes on him. If, if, uh, the stream is lagging is in, like... Sorry, let me drink some water. If the stream is lagging is in, like, you're a little far behind, I think refreshing should fix it. And I was the first to notice the evidence. That was even faster. But I'm not rash. Sure, Simon Keys isn't a guard or a prisoner, but... Sebastian? Judge Courtney. Oh, what are you doing, Justine? Don't butt in like that. Pardon me, Sebastian. Yes, your words on the suspect are very interesting. However, shouldn't you get to the best part first? The best part? Why don't you tell them about your wonderful reasoning regarding the murder weapon? Good one, Justine. Nice suggestion. Mr. Edgeworth, listen to my first-rate reasoning. Will this reasoning explain why you arrested Mr. Keyes? I'm sure it will meet your expectations. Judge Courtney just changed the flow of the conversation. 
Just what is she planning? It's obvious the murder weapon was a sharp metal object. However, the prison maintains strict control over potential lethal items. So, that's why I've reasoned that the murder weapon was brought in from outside. Yes, it was hidden inside that chessboard. And since only the victim and the suspect's fingerprints were on, found in the chessboard, isn't it obvious who brought and used the murder weapon? At least it's clearer than his last testimony. It's the best reasoning you can get from Prosecutor the Best. How do you like that? Now he's mixing up the best with his own name. But could someone really had a weapon inside a gift sent to the prisoner? <laughs> You'll find a good place if you examine the inside of the chessboard. Inside the chessboard? Is there some place to hide a weapon? I haven't been examining shit. Sorry. My bad. Omnibus. Oh my god, this is lucky. You can open it from there. Hurry up and open it. Why are you speaking so slowly? What are you saying? Doesn't everyone get excited when they're opening a box? I think that probably applies to you only. Ooh. Chess. In it. Oh my goodness, this is laggy. These are chess pieces, right? I saw something similar in your office, Mr. Edgeworth. Huh? But the pieces here are black and white. Those are the correct colors. My pieces were custom made. Custom made? That sounds like treasure to me. Her eyes are sparkling. Does she intend to steal it? What the? I've been lied to. I thought there was going to be a compartment. Is there some place to hide a weapon? Oh, no fucking way. Come on. I just needed to press one more thing. Oh my god, if this does all the text again and I can't skip it, I'm going to be sad. As I thought, there are only chess pieces inside. <laughs> wow, what an annoying laugh. Inside the chessboard, huh? Perhaps I should examine it a bit further. I just did. And there was nothing. You hacker. I wanted to look there. This is... The top panel is removable. It's quite deep. Yes, there's more than enough room to hide a small knife. Understand now. This is how the culprit smuggled in the... Hmm. Hmm? What's with the hmm? That wasn't even finished. Mr. DeBest, there's something you've forgotten. There's a gate at the entrance of the detention center. Eh? Well, there is, but... He means the security gates with the metal detectors, Sebastian. We had to pass through the same check when we entered the prison, remember? Ah! Ah! Yeah, that's it. I remember now. It looks like he completely forgot. It would be impossible to smuggle a sharp metal object into the detention center. Therefore, your reasoning never held, even from the very beginning. That gate is only used on people. In other words, packages sent to the detention center undergo a simpler check. So they don't use a metal detector for that. This never should have happened. It seems the guards were too careless. Right, Justine. Thanks for the, assi for the assist. You're welcome. Now then, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Your cross-examination, if you please. Cross-examination? It's as if we were in the courtroom. Very well. His reasoning. You're the one who called it a cross-examination in the first case. Let's see how long it will hold up under pressure. <laughs> this knife is quite deep, unlike the writing. It's obvious the murder weapon was a sharp metal object. Fuck. Oh my god, you swore. Sebastian, what the heck? A sharp metal object. You have proof of that. Didn't you see the victim's wound? Worthless prosecutor. The fatal blow was a stab to the throat. And a knife perfectly matches up with that. There can be no other explanation. Hmm, it seems they don't know about that piece of information yet. I'm guessing it's the video tape. 
<laughs> nothing to say. Speechless, aren't you, Mr. Edgeworth? Right, right, next. There's plenty more to my reasoning. However, the prison maintains strict control over potentially lethal items. Even with the strict control, there were still some items that could be used, right? Well, yeah, uh, things like grooming scissors. Of course, there's more to this, right, Sebastian? Exactly. At the time of the incident, only one was being borrowed. However, there was no reaction when we tested it for blood. Those would be the scissors Mr. Sword was practicing with. So, the inside of the prison was completely clear of sharp implements. So, that's why I've reasoned that the murder weapon was from brought in from the outside. Can you be more specific about where it came from? Of course I can! It didn't come from inside the prison! Are you trying to sound smart? Simon Keyes brought it in. That's what we mean. Mr. Edgeworth, can't you even figure that much out? I'm disappointed in you! And you've disappointed me from the start. So, Simon brought the murder weapon, but how, you ask? Yes, it was hidden inside that chessboard. Fuck. Fuck, again. No weapon was found at the crime scene, not even inside the chessboard. So, where did the murder weapon disappear to? I'd like to hear your answer to that. That's... Well, after the crime, the culprit must have hidden it somewhere in the prison. Is there a problem with the statement the bus just made? Sure. Alright, they've already searched. The murder weapon is hidden inside the prison. I don't think so. It's clear from this piece of evidence. What shows that the murder weapon can't be inside the prison? Where was it again? Have you completely forgotten your own actions? You, along with Warden Roland, conducted a search of the prison. But you did not find the murder weapon, right? No! Don't hurt yourself, Sebi! That's... We must have overlooked something. This guy's just completely contradicted himself. You carried out such a sloppy investigation. I'm amazed that you call yourself the best. Uh, are you mocking me? Don't talk that way about my son, Sebastian. <laughs> Please calm yourself. Don't get caught up in the opponent's play pace. I'm fine, Justine. Did you really think the best prosecutor would be shaken by someone miles behind him? I wish he'd stop messing around with other people's names. <laughs> oh, in that case, Kay Faraday is far, far ahead. Kay, don't you get caught up in this too? Yes, if my best investigation didn't find anything. Then there must not have been a single weapon in the prison. In that case, there's only one possibility. The criminal must have taken the murder weapon with him when he left the prison. So it's only natural that we didn't find it in here, there. Yeah. There was no way the culprit could have brought the weapon out of the prison. And this piece of evidence shows why. I... That's a good question. The culprit couldn't have? Is it the metal detector? Because I... Take that! Have you completely forgotten your own testimony? EU! That's twice you've insulted me! Oh, it seems to remember what I said earlier. I feel like Edward slows up, slows up down time trying to present evidence. <laughs> yeah, he just... The Warudu! Aha! Oh, it seems to remember what I said earlier. But you do well to remember further than that. Uh huh? What is that? This guy, he really doesn't remember anything. It seems that way. The detention center and the prison are equipped with security gates. Anyone leaving must pass through these gates. Gates are equipped with metal detectors. Uh, that's what you... 
It looks like he remembers now. Yes, there's no way someone could have brought the murder weapon through those gates. And so the criminal could not have taken it out of the pr prison either. Ah! Don't hurt yourself, Zoby. So then, Prosecutor Edgeworth, do you know where this murder weapon went to? Perhaps the weapon is still inside the prison. But we can find it anywhere in the prison. The reason you didn't find it is because you believed it to be a sharp metal object. We saw the very moment when Mr. Knightley was attacked after all. If you can say that much, then perhaps you can enlighten us. What would you say is the murder weapon in this case? From this piece of evidence, the murder weapon of this case becomes obvious. Take that! Here is footage from a security camera. It shows one of the cells in the detention center. See it with your own eyes. It's very slow though, it lags. But don't worry about that. Are we gonna have to watch this whole thing again? I'm drinking water. Do 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 da da What? Uh, this is it can't be This tape clearly shows the moment the victim was attacked by a black dog. I believe this is sufficient proof, wouldn't you say? Indeed, this is vital evidence. Horace Knightley was killed in the detention center by that dog. That man. After that, the body was moved to the prison workroom. A witness claims to have seen the, a dog in the workroom when the body was found. Oh, so that wasn't him attacking, that was him leaving the body. I'm still, I'm, because I know the culprit. I know a little bit. And I'm just a little bit confused how this fits into it. Of course, a dog couldn't have planned this crime on its own. However, there's someone who could have. Overruled. That's enough, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Judge Courtney. It's true this camera footage is vital evidence. However, there is something else you must prove. Actually, you've already noticed it, haven't you? It's just as she says. There's still a huge flaw in my reasoning. If that black dog is a prisoner's pet, how was it able to move between the detention center and the prison? Ah! Uh. What will we do, Mr. Edgeworth? I still don't know how the dog managed to move from one place to the other. I knew it. What? You wanna talk? You don't know either. If you do not solve this mystery, I'm afraid I cannot accept your logic. If this was a real courtroom, I would call for a recess now. Uh, wait, I'm not finished yet. Overruled. Connie, nah. -uh. Fuck you, mean nah. -uh. Court has been adjourned. Leave at once. What? You can't do that. This isn't a courtroom. Well then, as I said, court is adjourned. Objection. I we're in prison. I can't prove my argument, but isn't it the same case with Mr. Keys? Whatever do you mean? Just as I don't know how the dog entered the det 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 detention center. You also don't know how Simon Keyes entered the detention center and prin prison. Although he came to visit the victim, he was an outsider to the prison. Don't you think it would be difficult for him to commit a crime inside the prison? Judge Courtney, now the burden of proof lies with you. Show us evidence that Simon Keyes entered the prison. Overruled. No. <laughs> you want me to present evidence? I'm happy to oblige. What? Does she really have evidence? It's about time I told you. Now that I know the basics of your reasoning, Prosecutor Edgeworth. What is she thinking? It seems you don't even know Simon Key's real occupation. He's a circus performer. A circus performer? Yes. Have you ever heard of the very big circus? Circus? Ugh! But of course, yesterday was a day that I wouldn't wouldn't have missed for the world. Wouldn't have missed for the world? Did you have some kind of meeting? Oh heavens no, I despise meetings. Ah, it was the animal show, of course. It seems you've realized. 
On the day of the incident, an animal show was being performed at the prison. And the show was put on by the very big circus. So then, do you mean Simon is... Simon Keyes entered the prison as a staff member of the animal show. That we know for a fact. <coughs> this woman. She's been concealing this fact the whole time. She only planned to reveal it after hearing my reasoning. Come to think of it. What are you doing, Justine? Don't butt in like that. Pardon me, Sebastian. Yes, your words on the suspect are very interesting. However, shouldn't you get to the best part first? Mr. DeBest was going to say then, but she stopped him. <laughs> How do you like that, worthless prosecutor? You didn't do anything. Well then, it really is time for a recess. I'll end with some advice. I'd already I had already doubted your abilities as a prosecutor. Which is why I relieved you of your authority. You'd best not forget that. What are you trying to say? I cancelled you for talking about pronouns on your stream. It seems that you don't understand that pronouns are a basic part of the English language. The PIC can still take away your badge. He went to clown college. Oh my... Oh my god, you're not a... You're not a clown. You're the... Oh my god, I'm gonna hand you clown university. Oh my god, clowns. If you value your badge, I'd advise you not to show your face before me again. Is that a threat? The goddess of law is merciful, but that doesn't mean you can get away with everything. And one more thing. I must digress. I suggest you stop with this defense attorney a act. That's none of your concern. I don't intend to abandon a case I'm involved in so easily. For defense attorneys, a relationship of mutual trust with their client is vital. It is very different from the way of the prosecutor. In any case, you didn't even know about your client's occupation. <laughs> well then, I must be going. May the blessings of the goddess of law be upon you. Did Simon lie to us? It seems he lied to Uncle Ray, too. This complicates matters. Why'd he do that? Hey, hey, Miles! Don't tell me you've got cold feet already. Courtney Pies are quite a handful, but giving up is still cool. A defense attorney's creed is to never give up, remember? You're my assistant. Of course. I don't plan on giving up either. It's just... The theory that he couldn't enter the prison no longer holds. It looks like we'll have to investigate once more. To be continued? Heck yes! I need a pee. <laughs> So let me just save real quick, and then I gotta go bathroom. Mm. Although the sp sp spider's out there. Oh gee. The spider is out there, so I'm scared. So I might have a run-in with her. So this is a spider. Let's wait until the end. This is room, there we go. And now, I'll just leave you here with the line coldly. There it is. Uh, just for a, a few minutes. I'll be right back.
Okay, I'm back. Uh, I also... <clears throat> I also quickly uh, got a bit of kitchen roll and wetted it, put it against my eye for a bit. It, it's feeling a bit better now. I don't know why it was feeling so swollen earlier, but I feel like I can open it now. Still a little, like, fuzzy, though. My neck hurts. I hope that it feels better soon. Hey, hey, hey! Welcome in, Meowrick VT. Welcome in. I hope you're having a good time. Um, yeah, I hope you're having a good time. Did I save? I don't remember. Let me save. <clears throat> Why did you not mention that beforehand? No, but I did. Um, what didn't I mention? Because when wasn't he about to say it and then something happened? I don't remember. That you're a member of the very big circus. No, it's just that, you know, I'm not. And besides being a little sick, starting to feel better. Glad to hear that you're feeling better now. I can't call myself a member yet. I'm just a new recruit. Love the investigation, Miles Edgeworth. I only played the first one. The second one is a lot better. And I, I liked the first one, but the second one is so good. I would really recommend playing the second one. Or at least watching a full playthrough, because, like, all of the... It's, like, a really good game. Regardless, that still makes you a member. This is, like, one of the best Ace Attorney games possibly in the series. This one's really good. That still makes you a member. E! Oh, no! Simon! No way, no way, no way! Well, he's dead, so... So, why didn't you tell us that before? If I told you I was part of the circus, it would have made me look suspicious, right? Since I also knew Nightly and all that. I didn't think anyone would believe what I had to say. Not even you guys, okay? Then we promise to believe in you. But, m Mr. Edgeworth, y you're just kind of scary. Man, you're just terrible at getting info from people, aren't you, Miles? Hmm. That's none of your concern. Looks like we need to have a talk with him again. So, um, what did you do in the circus, Simon? I guess you could say I'm a wild animal tamer. I'm still just an apprentice, though. Wow, that's incredible! So you command lions and tigers to do your bidding, right? Nuh-uh! Nothing crazy like that! No way, no way, no way, no way, no way! My partner's this little guy right here! Money! And that makes you a wild animal tamer. He's more like an organ grinder than a wild animal tamer. <laughs> Monkey. Hey, money, cut that out. He can be quite a handle sometimes. Ratatouille. <laughs> oh my god, the monkey's forcing him to do the gear hand thing. I thought organ grinders controlled them monkeys, not the other way around. Monkey. <laughs> Why is there a monkey in the detention center? What the fuck? <laughs> Yesterday you told us you were just a regular employee, correct? I guess that they're, they're just getting ahead of themselves. Because all of the prisoners have pets, so they're like, you know what, you can keep your pet. Just in case you become a prisoner. <laughs> Even if I'm a member of the circus, I'm still legally an employee. We're just like any regular company. Uh, the ringleader is the boss, and I'm just a grand. I even have a supervisor. She's the head of the Wild Animal tam Tamer Division. No matter what kind of fierce creature, they all immediately follow her every command. Definitely gonna have to at least watch it. Yeah, it's fantastic. This game is so good. <laughs> she might even be able to get a handle on Miles here. I'm not a wild animal. Did you and your supervisor take part in the animal show here at the prison? Yeah, it was just us two. It was only a small operation this time around. Basically, my supervisor takes center stage, and I take care of all the dirty work. AI2 actual peak, yeah, it's really good. Well, I did have a tiny part in the performance. So, there are only two members of the circus that are related to this case. I want to see more. And by the way, for anyone in the chat, I am a Mo supporter. I love Mo. He's fantastic. And one of the only characters from Big Top that is not a pedophile, so I love him. <laughs> the clown music. Finished 9 Ace Attorney Games and Ace Attorney Investigations 2 is my favourite one by far. Yeah, I've 
I haven't played it for myself, I watched a playthrough, so it didn't hit quite as hard. But even just watching it, I really enjoyed it. On the S26 and Layton Left, Professor Layton vs Phoenix Wright is really, really good as well. So, can you tell me about your movements around the prison? Okay, I went to meet Nightly two days ago around noon. And that's when you gave him the chessboard. That's right. And then that night, I started setting up the stage in the court courtyard. Played the entire thing myself, spoiler free, amazing experience. Oh my god, I... I, I honestly wish that I went into it completely blind, because this is such a good game. Like, just thinking about it, I'm like, oh my god, I love this. I love that I'm playing this here right now. The reason that I watched this is because I didn't think I'd be able to play it. Because I was like, well, even if I did find an emulator, it probably wouldn't run on my laptop. So that's why I was, like, really just not caring about spoilers at all. But I, I like, really wish that I didn't watch anything, because this is so good. It was pretty tough going back and forth moving all the crates by myself. I left everything in. Workroom A, I think. Just temporary storage. Workroom A? Mm, that's where the body was discovered. Did your supervisor help you at all? No way! I can't let her do anything like that! That's my job! After I got everything ready, we started rehearsing. Oh no, you left. It was almost my midnight. The show was set to start at 8am the next day and go on until 10am. The only one who went in and out of where the body was found is Mr. Keyes. And then the body was found just before the show ended. Do you happen to know why- Oh, sorry, my eyes still a little bit fucked. Do you happen to know why you were arrested? It's weird how it happened so fast. I don't think that the pest guy would have you arrested on a whim. I wouldn't put it past him, though. Well, maybe it's because of that. When I was moving the crates, I decided to go check up on him. You know, nightly. You went directly into the detent- I bit my tongue! That's- you've made me bite my tongue, you happy Simon. You went directly into the detention block. Did you have permission? No, I had to sneak in. It wasn't a formal visit or anything. Didn't you already see him two days ago? Why would you go do such a thing? Well, we're the only friends either of us has had since childhood. He was the same as me. We never had real families. Oh, Boz. I just wanted to talk with him for a bit, so I went to see him. Hmm? You didn't have a family. Um, when I was younger, I lost the only family I had, my father. So is that it? I know all too well how it feels to lose your father at a young age. So, you're the same as Mr. Edgeworth and me. Oh my god, he just liked me for real. It was just the two of you talking at that time. Yes, all the other cells were empty and there weren't any guards nearby either. He was the same as me. Gay. <laughs> <laughs> but then you got found out, and that's why they suspected you. What? What? Did I do something really bad? Something must have happened while Mr. Keyes and Knightley were alone. And that's probably the best logic. It seems that we'll need to talk with your su supervisor as well. She should be here today, too. Probably in the courtyard. Oh, I'm sorry it turned out like this, boss. Simon, if there's anything we can do to help... If there's anything we can't to do help... That's not right. If there's anything we can do to help, just tell us. What? What? But, 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 I can't do anything in return. Can't you worry about that? We're your allies. That's because we're like birds of a feather. Right, Mr. Redwick? Birds of a feather, huh? I suppose that's true. We have sufficient information about your past. I doubt you had a motive to kill Nightly. Fatherless syndrome is so common in this game. Fathers are not real. Rather, you're probably the most affected by his death. And I doubt someone as timid as you could work up the courage to murder someone. Alright, I'll get you out of here. We'll believe in you. I love that there's a sound effect for the claps. Well, what do we have here? Starting to get a hang of the whole defense attorney gig. 
You sounded a bit like your old man just now. Shut up. Hmm. Me. Sound like my father. <laughs> you would say, the defense attorney's job is to be an ally to the desert de 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 deserted. I told him that was pretty woke. If you're gonna ride that stallion into the sunrise, wait for me, I want in too. Mr. Shields, I think you mean sunset. <laughs> yeah, of course. It was just a joke. Want some candy? No, no thank you. I don't like sweets. Best? Oh, really? What a shame. What's wrong with the sunrise? The legendary Yara Grass is all about the sun. Since the sunlight always exposes the truth. Good grief. <laughs> and now, let's just head to the prison courtyard and see what we can find there. <laughs> Why does Ray walk so, so oddly? He looks shady as fuck. Ah, the shower is open. Oh. Yes, it looks like... It looks like that way leads to the courtyard. So, what are we waiting for? Come on, let's get a move on. Hmm. <laughs> She's certainly in high spirits. So, this is the courtyard. Just before the body was discovered, the animal show was held here. It looks just like a carnival. Man, I bet it was lots of fun. Uh, the prisoners were gathered here when the body was found. So that means whoever saw the show has an alibi. We should start by checking the area for... E Okay, wait, is this, is this it? Is this what happens? He can cut it out, you! Help me, Mr. Edgeworth! <laughs> uh, you there! Stop right this instant! <laughs> ow, 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 someone, anyone help! I don't remember her voice, fuck. Down! A stick, down! H who are. Regina! Oh my god, I'm so happy she's here. Looks like you found a new playmate. Good for you, Estique. Regina! It wasn't playing around. He was about to weed me. Huh? No way. That's impossible. This child doesn't bite. Often. Often, huh? The evidence thing? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm on it. People normally never get... Uh, what the fuck? People normally never get to play with an elephant up close. Isn't it wonderful? No, it's not. It's wonderful. Right? It was simply marvelous. Little lady. Ray, watch yourself. Mr. Shields. Really? Oh, that makes me so happy. So, how about a hug? How about you fuck off? <laughs> As thanks. Hey, watch where you swing that thing. Weren't you taught not to hit people with your trunk? <laughs> it looks like a stick is friends with everyone. I am an assistant of this defense attorney. My name is Miles Edgeworth. Ah, I haven't introduced myself yet. I'm Regina Berry. Nice to meet you. Astique Best. <laughs> I'm the great thief and defense attorney's assistant's assistant, Kate Faraday. That's a rather complicated job title. And the one playing with Mr. Elephant is the defense attorney, Mr. Ray Shields. It's not Mr. Elephant, it's a stick. The fantastic Asian elephant. You're incredible, Regina. You made a stick stop right away. Well, I'm a wild animal tamer after all. Really? Then you must be Simon's supervisor. Yep, I'm the head of the Berry Big Circus, Wild Animal Tamer Division. The one and only Regina Berry. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Ace Attorney Ray Shields. Hey, I said the line, get it? That's woke, Ray. You're an asexual attorney? That's pretty woke. Are you in cahoots with the PIC? Oh, wait a minute. PIC? POC? Woke! Woke! Oh my god! Woke! It looks like he's the one who... It looks like he's the one she had a handle on. Hmm, yeah, she's perfect. What are you mumbling about, okay? Look at her. She's energetic, fun-loving, and healthy. She could be the new member of the Yadagarasu. 
She'd be perfect as a great thief. A great thief? That sounds like fun. We could make a huge ruckus with the animals. Ah, you can make a ruckus. A great thief is supposed to be quiet and sneaky, like. But the show needs to have flash. Being quiet is kind of boring. Uh, I guess she's not very thief-like after all. It seems there's been a breakdown in negotiations. Okay, I want to talk. All right, let's get started, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's check out anything that looks suspicious. I want to talk to Regina first. I'll even look through the barbed wire if we have to. Yes, we need to gather more information about the case. We should also try talking with anyone connected to the case. Yo, what up? Regi Why is it so quiet? Yo, what up? What represent? Do, 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 do. Regina's so tall, she really is, damn. Regina, why are you so tall? What the heck? What the golly? Even? I'm a prosecutor. Um, okay. I'll accept it. Uh, well, hold it. Uh, did I say anything about giving it to you? You're not giving it to me? Of course not. I'm sorry. It's my fault for presenting it to you. It's alright. I forgive you. Ugh. Why am I apologizing to her? Don't you want to be gay? The run related to K's in the fifth case? Ah, oh, damn. Well, you'll be gay sometime soon. Head of the Wild Animal, Tamer Division. Are you Mr. Key's supervisor? That's right. Very Big Circus was created by my daddy. But daddy died in the murder incident. <laughs> she just like me for real. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Are they gonna do this every time someone's dad is dead? <laughs> yeah, your dad is. But after that, our Karen Ringmaster made the circus even bigger. The Fatherless Association. The ringmaster de- the ringmaster de- I can't fucking speak! The ringmaster de- The ringmaster is daddy's close friend. He's like a funny uncle. Wow, a funny uncle. Mo, Mo. That's great, Regina. Yep, Uncle Mo established the wild animal tamer. Mo, Mo. Wait, not ventriloquist, no. Not magic. Nope, only animal taming. Only animal taming in this circus. Uncle Mo established the Wild Animal Tamer, Magic, and Ventriloquist Divisions. Only the Wild Animal Tamer and Ventriloquist Divisions have subordinates, though. Very Big Circus is going to become even more fabulous. Yes, yes, that sounds amazing. The way these two are carrying on, I'd hate to put a damper on things. I, right, Edgeworth, we can just... We can we can look at the crime scene cake and just talk with Regina. Could you tell us about the animal show? It's an amazing show. It has a storyline and everything. What's more, it's a love story. Doesn't that sound wonderful? <laughs> Ray, watch your words here. Very nice. Are <laughs> you the heroine, Regina Pye? <laughs> nope. The heroine of this show is a sneak. And her partner is Regent the Tiger. It's about the forbidden love between an elephant and a tiger. Elephant and tiger? Uh, forbidden love? That's right. It's what they call a love triangle. Isn't it romantic? It sounds amazing. Right, Mr. Edgeworth? Heroine. Hmm. I tried some heroin back in the day. A stick is a female elephant. Why is that the shock? What? <laughs> what? A female elephant? Um, since it's a love triangle, uh, shouldn't there be one more animal involved? Yep, the third animal. He's the one who interferes with the love between a stick and region. Mr. Edgeworth, what do you think it is? Well, since it's a circus, uh, perhaps a lion. I think a crow would be nice. <laughs> the third animal is a naughty little monkey. The scale suddenly got smaller. Ah, Money the monkey. Nope, the one who plays the role of the monkey is Simon. <laughs> you have a, a, an actual monkey and you're like, nope, Simon. <laughs> 
Money's a little too small. And also, money fucking hates me. I wonder why. He's like the villain who tries to break up the love between a stick and region. How will a stick and a region control their own destiny? Isn't it wonderful? I, I guess. I thought Mr. Keys just did all the grunt work. Wouldn't you feel sorry for Simon if he didn't get to perform on stage? Poor Simon. What are you talking about? He's, this, is, this is great for him. Could you tell me about the preparations for the show? Simon handled everything. So I don't know that much about it. Simon insisted on it. He wanted me to focus on the show. I saw Simon doing something near the wind. Well, though. The well? If I recall, it was behind the stage. I'd better go take a look at it later. He even moved this giant cage all by himself. Simon's such a nice guy. And uh, that sounds like something Simon would do. Well, crying profusely. During the preparations, Simon went back and forth between the workroom and the crate yard. We were using the workroom to store our equipment. Only Simon entered the room, so I don't know anything about it. The workroom? Was it the one where we found the dead body? So, Simon was the only one who entered workroom A. Man, the bad news just keeps on coming. Mr. Lawyer, please promise me you'll help Simon. Don't worry, despite his looks, Mr. Redworth is a really amazing. Despite my looks? And just what is wrong with the way I look? Bye, Regina. You're lovely. We... Fuck. We love you, Regina. Bye. What the fuck? How did I walk... I can walk past you there, but not here? That was the well? I said something about behind the stage, right? Oh, here it is. Oh, Frank! Ah, Mr. Attorney. How are we doing today? We're doing... Hey, we just met a few moments ago. Did we? Please do forgive me. Ever since I've come here, I've been working on refining my speech. That's not the only thing that needs refining. Right now, I am helping out with the cleanup after the show. Ah, but if there is anything you need, please let me know. You'll have my full cooperation. I'm in the middle of volunteer work right now. As you can see, I'm a model prisoner. I've been reborn inside this prison. Reborn? As a thief? <laughs> that was... The devil made me do it. <laughs> How about to Justine? She'll believe you. How can you blame the devil? You were a disgrace to thieves. I have nothing to say. I still have much to learn. As a thief? But as you can see, I've exchanged my bracelet for a working one. I will continue to devote myself to being a model prisoner. Again with a model prisoner. Give it a rest already. I am trading to pay my debt to society once I become eligible for parole. So, you're training instead of watching the animal show? So, there are only two people who did not watch the show. Sawyer and Durgan. Why didn't you say anything about Durgan earlier? Well, if you asked any inmate at this prison, they'd all think twice before telling you. That person's like the ruler of this place. The boss, even. Honestly, when I first watched a playthrough, because I watched Ace Attorney Investigations 2 without knowing anything about Investigations 1, I thought that Dogen was going to be a culprit in Investigations 1. I was actually a little bit surprised when I played and there was no Dogen. Around here, we call him The Supplier. The Supplier? If you ask him nicely, he can provide you with anything you want. What? Is that allowed? Just because of the way that Edward talks about him. Because he talks as if, like, you know... As if we know him. He introduces him like any other character that we would know. This is Sir Han Dogen, an assassin. I put him in jail, like, a bit ago. So I thought that he was going to be in Investigations 1. What? Is that allowed? Normally it's not allowed, but with him it's another story. He supposedly has a secret route to procure these goods. As the supplier, Dogen would be in a position of power. However, I'll put all that behind me. All I care about now is applying mud packs to the animals. Mud packs? I coat the animal's fur with my mineral-rich mud packs to give it a beautiful shine. To help with my training, I give them to all the animals in prison. Each and every one of them. Mud, huh? Each 
could be related to that piece of evidence. I should present it to him. The glove, because it had mud on it. Bardo do do. Uh, uh, that's the rubber glove I dropped. Where did the mud on this glove come from? Ah, that's the mud from my mud packs. At the time I was practicing applying my mud packs. Could you tell me when this took place on the day of the incident? Since the animal show had started, I'd say it was around 9 a.m. The mud packs turned the animal's bodies pitch black, and my heart was pure white. Turn the animal's pitch black, is that going to be important? I was totally engrossed with covering the animals in mud. Prison life must be taxing on his stress levels. These mud packs are going to be important. All of the animals were black. That videotape might not be... Thanks to the warden's policies, I can undergo job training here. I owe her a debt of gratitude. What a lovely prison. Prison is a lovely place, kids. Remember? It's fine to go to prison. There's nothing wrong with it at all. It's a completely fine place. This crude-looking well seems handcrafted. Was it built by the inmates? There are a bunch of tools lying around the well. A long piece of rope. And a heavy-looking weight. It weighs 33 pounds. It says so right there. There's even a couple of pulleys. Okay, please stop touching other people's things. Stingy pants. I'm just checking stuff out. It's not like I'm gonna take them home with me. Still, in these tools, what were they used for? <laughs> Sorry, the fact that Kay also turned to a look just really caught me. It's so silent. This bird noise has always been weird in the S Attorney games. Ribbit. What are you doing? Don't you know? If you croak like a frog at a pond, they'll come towards you. The only things that are coming towards you are the water striders. Water striders are so cool. They're like ninjas. They glide gracefully on top of the water. I wish I could do that. What about the frogs? <laughs> Danger. High voltage. These signs really do exist. What? They, they do exist. I Did I misread that? On the other side, you can see what appears to be the detention center's garden. It's just as Warden Roland said. You can see the garden from her office. If it weren't for this barbed wire, we could take a look at the garden on the other side. That is Warden Roland's prized put garden. I doubt she'd let us in so easily. Oh my! You walk very slowly, Warden Roland. There you are, Regina, darling. Ah, Miss Roland. I was looking all over for you. I wanted to have a little chat with you. Nah, see ya. <laughs> I wanted to look at the stage. This is the stage where they put on the animal show. If I put on a great thief show, I wonder if anyone would come. I'm pretty sure the police would show up. Well, that was worth it. Hi. Could you tell me a little about this prison? Currently, this place is my pride and joy, which I like to call our home. When I first came here, this prison was in a terrible state. Terrible state? You mean, the prisoner's attitude? There are no bad children in my family. It was the environment that was terrible. That's why, after giving it a lot of thought, I enlisted the help of the animals. Being together with animals will soften up even the most hardened criminals. Right now, everyone has returned to their most honest self. Just take a look at Frankie. He is a model prisoner. A model prisoner who was trying to steal from a dead body. I don't know about Frankie. There are lots of model prisoners here, but Frankie is number one. He's proactive with his job training and helps out with the qu chores. Don't the other model prisoners do job training and chores? Eh? <laughs> don't be silly. They all do, of course. It's just that Frankie here, he has his sights set on something different. Hmm? Something feels strange. In any case, he's a very good boy. Please get along with one another. 
the enchanting music, the prancing animals, the very big circus is fabulous. <laughs> if you come here, you can see a show once a month. Really? Then maybe I should. Was she just thinking about committing a crime? Once a month, you said. Is it always the very big circus? Of course. I'm Regina Darling's biggest fan. My darling Regina. She's just so fabulous. That's... She's such a cutie pie, I could just eat her up. She really likes her darling Regina. That's why I'm worried about poor little Simon. If he's found guilty, Regina Darling will be heartbroken. Well, he'll be a prisoner, he can still perform here. Mr. Lawyer, please take care of little Simon. If there's anything I can help with, please don't hesitate to ask. But really, I would have loved to show everyone yesterday. You did a wonderful job on the stage, Regina Darling. <laughs> I'm so happy to hear that. I'm glad all the prisoners came to see it. Well, about that, and just between you and me, not everyone came to see the show. That would be Dogen and Sort, I imagine. There were three people who didn't see your show yesterday. Uh, three? Nightly? No, because he was in the detention center, not the prison. Unbelievable, really. Excuse me, but did you say there were three prisoners who did not see the show? That's right. I took account and there were three empty seats. And we even had the correct number of seats set out. Doesn't that seem weird to you, Mr. Wedgeworth? It does. We had thought that Dogen and Sword were the only two prisoners. Who were not present in the courtyard during the show. But that doesn't add up. Where did the third person go? Uh-oh. I skipped. Whoopsie. Ah! Oh, I was having so much fun talking to you, Regina, darling. That I completely forgot. It's time to feed my baby. My baby? Why does she walk so slowly? Oh my god. Ah! You are up. It's an alligator. Oh, Allie, you look as cute as ever. Oh, how cute. So her name is Allie? Yup, she's Allie the alligator. She's my favorite out of all of my family. Oh, lovely. I want to try petting it. If Regina Darling wants to pet it, go right ahead. I allow it. This seems dangerous, but okay. Uh, they seem pretty excited. Oh. Well, we need to go check the prison cells, don't we? That's right. Let's look for the third prisoner who didn't see the animal show. Is it Albert? No, he was watching, right? We already talked about that. But he's the only other prisoner in this case, isn't he? March 28! Mr. Edgeworth, I finally found you, sir! Oh my god, it's me! Hi. Detective Gumshoe, I take it the investigation's running smoothly. A judge and that prosecutor haven't showed up yet. Oh, yeah, I also got your message, sir. What was the result of the examination of the victim's cell? We hit the jackpot, sir! Traces of blood were found in the cell floor. There wasn't a whole lot there, though. They should prove that the murder occurred in the holding cell. Indeed. The probability has increased. However, we still cannot say for certain. I thought you'd say that, sir. So I asked the lab guys to look into it a little further. The rodent and analysis is on the blood, so we'll know it soon if it's the victims or not. Way to go, Gummy. Good thinking. It's been four and a half hours already. Damn, holy heck. Detective, you've outdone yourself. What caused this sudden foresight? Oh, I'm actually a little hurt that you're so surprised by it, sir. I hope nothing bad comes of this. Once we get the results, we can prove that the scene was the holding cell. Which leaves... Finding out how that doggy managed to sneak his way in here. Just leave that to me, Paul. Since that other prosecutor isn't here, we can investigate as much as we want. That's why I brought my secret weapons with me. Secret weapons? That's right, Bill. Missile? They've gotten us out of a few times before. Take a gander at Dick Gumshoe's seven secret weapons. Looks like it'll, looks like it'll come in handy. Wanna take up his offer, Miles? No. 
Detective, please allow us the use of your secret weapons. Sure thing, sir. First, I'll give you a rundown. Secret weapon number one, the trusty metal detector. Perfect for finding all kinds of metallic objects. As its name implies. If there's an option for missile, I'm clicking it because I didn't click it and turn about goodbyes. Yes! I didn't click missile and turn about goodbyes because I thought I'd have to use all of them. So we're, we're clicking missile this time. Even if missile doesn't do shit, we're clicking missile. Next, secret weapon number two. Everyone's favorite bell missile. You can truck any scent you want, especially the scent of food. He's much cuter than Mr. Dogan's dog. And then secret weapon number three. It's, um, uh, this. Isn't that a fishing pole? What are you trying to catch? Uh, no. Actually, I just bought it by accident. <sighs> Never mind that. What's next, detective? Um, that's all of them, sir. What? What? You caught them the seven secret weapons. But there's only three of them? That's all I have for now, Bull. We can use the rest next time. I can't just reveal all of them all at once. Why do you think there's hard secret weapons? Bull. Hmm, doesn't matter. We'll just use the three that he's provided. All right, which one do you want to use? Missile, 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 but also I want to save slits so I can get here easy, if I need to. You want missile, sir? I do want missile, little boy. Hey, Paul, over here, missile. A uh, little missile. Ah, there he is. First, let's decide what Sunny should track down. We're searching for the fruit Dogan's dog used to get to the detention cell. This route would have also been the same path used to carry the body to the prison. So, if we have him track the scent of the body... That should lead us to the path. Is this going to be the correct answer? No way, that's going to be so funny if it is. Hmm? Oh, don't you smell something sweet? Really? All I can smell is the scent of blood. It's a very faint scent. Or like cake or something. The scent of cake from the body? All right, missile. Get a good whiff of that scent. Bow! Gonna leave the stream. Might come back later. <laughs> if you're still streaming, have fun. Have a good time. Bye! Come on, let's follow after him. That way is... He's heading towards the special cell. And he's gone straight inside. Yes, let's follow him. Uh-oh. Looks like you're a sussy baka. This is Dogen's cell, but it looks like he's absent at the moment. Maybe he's being interrogated. What's in here? Shh. I think he's found something. Did I actually... Is, was missile the correct answer? Why do I keep pressing the correct ones? What could there be in this room? Miss Retchworth, we better take a look. Oh, I love chess. It's Dogen's chessboard. It still has that hound piece on it. Ah, the chessboard has legs. Aren't these things expensive? They can be. This is very good craftsmanship. Mr. Dogen playing chess is kind of unexpected, you know? I figured he'd be more of a Go player or something like that. Go? Do you play Go, okay? I'm really good at Go Bang. But... That's not go. Well... Good. Yummy. A teacup and biscuits. I suppose he has his tea time in here too. Playing chess while drinking tea in his cell. Isn't this going a bit overboard with a special treatment? It's like he gets whatever he wants. Don't, compl don't complain to me. I don't know why I thought I was Dick Gumshoe. You should tell him yourself. I, I think I'll pass on that. There's a bell. It's a bit sussy. Look at this, Miss Redworth. There's a small chisel here. I'm not well versed in woodworking, but this seems to be a pocket-sized chisel. A pocket-sized chisel? It must be convenient to have one wherever you go. Is that from a thief's point of view? No, it's from a great thief's point of view. She didn't even skip a beat. More chisels. It's the chisels Dogen uses, more than enough for him to murder someone with. Speaking of chisels... It kind of looks like someone used a chisel on your forehead, Mr. Redworth. Stop talking about that! What is that supposed to mean? See? That fur between your brows getting deeper. It looks just like a carving. I would leave this subject for alone if I were you. Oh? 
Hmm? Missile. Maybe. This is what you're barking at? Whoa, hey, knock it off, pal. <laughs> Chocolate cake is bad for dogs. You're gonna fucking die, bud. If that's how it's gonna be, I'll eat it all myself. Wow, that was pretty good. How the fuck did you eat it so fast? <laughs> good for you. But it looks like someone else has a problem with that. Oh. That wasn't fair, Gummy. I wanted to eat it too. I doubt it's wise to eat food you find lying around a prison. Anyway, I guess Missy was barking at the cake, sir. Uh, that was pointless. I didn't cake pick correctly. Is that police dog gonna get the job done? He's fine, Bull. He was just following his stomach instead of his nose. Let's track down the scent of the body for real this time, Missile. Oh, looks like he's found something else, sir. No, it's this cell. This will be Mr. Elbert's cell. I'd like to examine the interior. Detective, call a guard. Roger that, sir. Good work, detective. By the way, is J. Elbert still being held in the disciplinary room? No. He should have already returned. He was present during the noon roll call. He may have been assigned to work someplace else. I see. Well then, may we examine the cell? Yes, sir! Oh wow, that's a lot of exercise equipment. Ah, there's a poster of Mr. Elbert's on the wall! Ah, uh, that's not what I looked at. I wanted to read what it said. Oh, I got it. Goal... something pounds. It's like a, a exercise, like weight goal or something. I don't know. And what's this next to it? Is this his weight loss target? Hmm, he was a former boxer. He probably continued with, with his weight management. It seems he also takes various protein supplements. Muscle protein, hustle protein, weight loss protein, nothing but protein. Which weight class was he aiming for? Mr. Edgeworth, how many minutes do you think this hourglass goes for? Albert's a former boxer, so I'd say three minutes. In a boxing match, each round lasts for three minutes. Bzz, wrong. The correct answer is around two minutes. Why? Well, because the glass is cracked and some sand is spilled out. Wah! Oh, how could I have missed that? <laughs> This sandbag shows signs of repeated use. Oh? Aha! You want a box too, Muscle? Oh, look at him go! It can't be. Detective, move this sandbag at once. Yes, sir! The fuck? Oh, this is... Hey, Muscle, come back here! Is it going in the hall though, Muscle? I'm going too! Hold it! I'll stop them, sir! Oh, it's too tight for me, sir! Uh, detective! It can't be helped. I'll have to wait for her to con contact me. That's a hole? Hello, Kay! Hey, you alright? Don't get too worked up. Right now, I'm in the detention center. A detention center? That hole comes out at nightly cell. Really? Stay where you are, I'm coming over there now. Sussy, everyone is sus, everyone was in on it. Absolutely. Is it under the bed? Because I swear I wanted to check under the bed and it didn't, didn't let me and I bit my tongue. Okay. Mr. Edgeworth, <laughs> I really helped out, didn't I? Indeed. She doesn't appear to be injured. The floorboards have been ripped out from under the bed, sir. Oh my fucking god, it is the bed. What the fuck? I wanted... How did... How did I miss that? Oh my god. I don't have eyes. To be fair, that's back when I was closing my eye, wasn't it? My left eye, so... Whoopsie. I see. It seems we found what we were looking for. 
the passageway between the detention center and prison is blocked by solid doors. However, there was a secret underground tunnel beneath it. We were following a sweet scent and arrived here. That means... The scent must have come from Natalie's body. He was eating cake. Come to think of it, his body was covered in dirt. It may have been caused by passing through the tunnel. Okay, what was the inside of the tunnel like? It was pitch black, so I really couldn't see much, but... I took some photos! Oh, nice. But shouldn't your clothes also just be dirty if you went through? At least, your, like, your knees and hands? I guess your white gloves. Your knees and gloves? Please show us. Oh, whoa. This is just like my room. Mm. Ugh, this is... Spoons and forks were used to dig the tunnel? But, more importantly... What are these footprints? They're paw prints, dumbass! These footprints! Could they belong to a dog? This will surely be vital evidence. However, <gasps> oh, before we consider that, we have a big problem. A problem? Jailbird could use this tunnel to move around freely. Detective, confirm his whereabouts post-haste. Perhaps he is... You may be right. Sir, this is a big deal. After speaking with the guards, the search for Jailbird was carried out immediately. They searched every nook and cranny of the detention center and the prison. But in the end, they found no sign of him. <clears throat> Did you contact the police? Yes, ma'am. We've already done that. We've set up a security perimeter around the prison, ma'am. Right. This is the first scandal in our prison's history. We're so sorry! She's completely different from before. Mr. Edgeworth, was it? Thank you for finding the escapee's tunnel. But, it's a little too late. Mr. Albert has long since left here. I don't believe he's gone beyond the detention center. There are security gates lo located at the exit of the detention center. I believe it would have been difficult to get through those, wouldn't you agree? Maybe ha maybe he has another channel. We certainly can't deny that possibility, however. Anyway, there's no use in you being here now. Please return to your investigation. Yes, we'll do that. You guys get back to your post too. Yes, ma'am. You up. Detective Gumshoe, sir. We've got the results of that blood test you requested. Good work, Bo! These are the forensic results of the blood stain found in Natalie's cell. So, what's it say, Mr. Edgeworth? Why do you always have, like, one sentence and then you cut it off and then say another, and then you say, Mr. Edgeworth? The blood is confirmed to have been Natalie's. Nice. That's Poggers. This is a pork champ. <laughs> hey now, that's good news. We found the blood stain in Nebby's cell and discovered the tunnel the dog used. Furthermore, the security camera shows footage of a dog attacking nightly in his cell. We have all the evidence we need. It's time we ask Dogen a few questions. Dogen, did you say? Please, use utmost caution. That man even has henchmen outside of the prison. Outside of the prison? Is this related to his secret trade routes as a supplier? The police have been searching for Dogen's henchmen for ages. I've also been helping them, but... So that means... back then. So, we still won't talk. Even after all the trouble you went through to get the evidence transferred from the precinct? That's right, I don't know how many times I've tried. I can't report back empty-handed. That assassin sure is one tough cookie, huh? You had evidence transferred from the precinct. Yes, we borrowed all the evidence concerning Dogen. You look at her. I have been interrogating him personally in my office. But, no matter how much evidence we have on him, we can't get a single word out of him. The warden interrogates him herself. I go that far. Lose your focus and he'll eat you alive. 
Be on your guard. Whoa, you've made Uncle Ray a little nervous. No one cares, Ray. Let's go. Why does he skulk around like that? Oh my god. Creepy dude. <gasps> Duggan. Oh, Sebby and Justine. Judge Courtney. What are you doing here? Questioning a prisoner. Did you forget that we're investigating as well? Or rather, have you forgotten my warning? If you value your badge, you should not have appeared before me again. I'm sorry if you thought that I would abide by those words. I won't overlook something important just to heed your warning. I've come for a testimony about the truth of this case, which you've overlooked. Yeah. You mean to say you require my humble services? As I promised, I've returned to prove that you are the culprit. Mm hmm. Interesting. Do tell. Objection. Objection! Before that, you should first listen to our reasoning. We can say with confidence that Salmon Keys is the culprit. Only Salmon Keys could have moved Mr. Knightley into the prison. That's not true. And we can show proof of this fact. But first, I'd like to hear your resolve, Prosecutor Etruth. The greatest of the to resolve. If our reasoning is correct, will you submit it to us? Your Prosecutor's badge. Yeah. You'll deprive him of his badge. Is that a threat, Bow? No, it's not a threat. Rather, an act of compassion. Normally, I wouldn't even have taken notice of you, since you have no right to investigate. However, if you are able to pr show proper resolve, I would be willing to let you be my opponent. Are you willing to risk it? Your prosecutor's badge. Mr. Edgeworth. Mr. Edgeworth, sir. Yes. Very well. I trust my own reasoning, but moreover, at the moment I'm currently the defense attorney, assistant, first, and a prosecutor second. I will not sully the good name of the Edgeworth Law Officers. I intend to see my job through. I won't yield to your threats. So be it. Is this bravery or simply foolishness? On the goddess of law's behalf? I shall be the judge of that. How do you say behalf in an American accent? Behalf. Behalf. I think it's like that. Sebastian, allow me to... Yeah, I got it. I'm counting on you, Justine. Oh my god, we're going to come against Justine! I presume you know of the incident Mr. Knightley caused the day before yesterday. He attacked a guard and stole his keys. His Simon keys. Afterwards, Simon keys stopped by a cell with an animal cage from the show. During this time, Mr. Knightley was able to use the stolen key to exit his cell. He then hid in the cage while it was moved to the prison workroom. So, Mr. Keys went to his cell after all. After hearing you talk about the security camera yesterday, we investigated it ourselves. Why don't you have a look? No, I don't want a video. I have here a printout of the security camera footage. Oh, thank god, it's just an image. This is the moment when Mr. Keys first hit Knightley. Exactly. As you can see, the cage gets a huge blind spot in the cell. By using this blind spot, Mr. Knightley could have entered the cage. That is our reasoning. Hmm, a blind spot. That means... The camera doesn't actually show him entering the cage. At this time, there's still the possibility that Knightley never left his cell. But why would he be hiding inside an animal cage? Mr. Knightley was planning to escape from prison. That is the only possibility. A prison escape? That's so cool. First Mr. Albert, and now Mr. Knightley. I won't let them show me up. Okay, this isn't the time to get excited. J. Albert's escape is no laughing matter. Simon Keyes was aiding Mr. Knightley in his escape. In other words, he was an accomplice. Not bad, Simon. Don't praise him. That cage was transported temporarily to the workroom. Originally, Mr. Knightley was to remain hidden until the end of the animal show. He would then be carried out along with the cage. I presume that was the plan. However, midway through the plan, he was betrayed by Simon Keyes and murdered. Oh, 
why. Judge Courtney's reasoning does appear to make sense. However, there must be a hole somewhere. I must not overlook anything. There's no motive whatsoever. But that doesn't matter. I presume you know if the incident Mr. Nightly caused the day before yesterday. Judge Courtney, about this incident. You do not know of it? That would be unbecoming of you, Ace Attorney Miles it were. I'm not asexual, that would be woke. <laughs> Naturally I know of it. However, you see... In that case, this is a waste of time. I shall continue, Mr. Knightley. He attacked a guard and stole his keys. Do you have proof? Do you have proof Knightley stole the keys? It is the only explanation as to why Mr. Knightley would have attacked the guard. We will know for certain the moment the guard regains consciousness. Is that really true? Should I ask Judge Courtney for more information? Sure. What's she gonna do? Penalize me? I don't like penis. That would be woke. There's one point in your reasoning that is odd. If Natalie did indeed steal the key, I'd expect he'd try to escape immediately. <laughs> you provide it doesn't make sense, Quirk as all. Not Quirk as all, but... I didn't read that. He simply chose the method with the highest probability of success. After stealing the key, he concealed it on his personage. As he waited for the opportune moment, that is what I believe. He concealed the key. Judge Courtney, such an oversight is unlike you. Natalie could, could not have concealed the key, and I can prove it. Natalie did not hide the key, and the proof is... that he's a little man. A little fellow. Oh, because there was nothing on his body. Take that! Is that it? Well, you see, uh, uh. Take that! Uh, well, it's cause um, you know. Because of the thing. You know the thing. Take that! That's how we show that we're currently on the no care. <laughs> Haven't the guards informed you yet? They searched nightly after they attacked the guard, and the key was nowhere to be found. Since the key's location is unknown, your logic doesn't hold. That is not an issue. There's an explanation. Mr. Knightley had the key. It simply wasn't found. The reason being, he concealed it inside the chessboard. The chessboard? You mean, the one that concealed the murder weapon? Come now, how do we know whether or not the murder weapon was really there? What? What? Sorry, I do a really good Edward's impression. What? Take some responsibility for your own words. That was all Sebastian's idea, after all. So those two don't always agree on their reasoning. In other words, once we put all the pieces together, Mr. Knightley concealed the key he stole from the guard inside the chessboard. When Sam and Keys arrived, Mr. Knightley used the key to slip out of his cell. He entered the animal cage and was transported to the workroom. All thanks to his accomplice, Sam and Keys. No, -uh, Mr. Edgeworth, three more testimonies is the bare minimum to make me understand. <laughs> That's right, Miles Edgeworth. You thought that you were talking with Justine Courtney, but it was me all along, Quirkus Alba. <laughs> no, not again, extraterritorial rights, no! All thanks to his accomplice, Simon Keyes. Mr. Knightley had planned to be carried outside after the show had ended. However, he was betrayed by his accomplice and murdered during the circus performance. During the performance, wasn't Simon performing? Mr. Keys performed in the show. Who would have had no opportunity to murder him during the circus performance? Overruled. Overruled. No opportunity. Is that so? A story plays itself out on the stage. And such was the case with the animal show. So, she examined the content of the show. The suspect plays the role of the villain who antagonizes the ele elephant heroine. In the final act, the villain is defeated by the heroine's love and all ends well. 
At that point, the suspect in the role of the villain is blown away by the heroine's burning love and makes his exit. Oh my god, look at him! Holy shit, he got fucked! Blown away by the elephant? Was he hurt? After being blown away, the suspect disappeared from the stage. The suspect was absent from the stage for about 15 minutes. I was saying the crime was committed during that time. Even in such a short period of time, it would still be possible to carry out the murder. Don't you think so? No. So, he committed the crime in 15 minutes, and then returned to the stage. That may have been possible, if the crime scene had been the prison. And Judge Courtney, the actual crime took place in the detention center. I'm afraid I cannot accept that camera footage alone is evidence. Objection! As for evidence, I have it. Well then, please show us your evidence. Where's the evidence that shows the scene of the crime was the... How does it feel to be silly? Ha 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 ha! Take that! This is... the floor. Oh, goddess of law! I am unable to comprehend your mysterious ways! This is what we discovered. The area here was tested positive for Mr. Knightley's blood. Uh, this blood test... can it really be trusted? To begin with, how were you able to conduct a scientific investigation? Objection! Hmph. I happen to have a subordinate. I was pressing D. <laughs> Got you, Courtney. I'm putting you in a chokehold. All of evidence! This is like when we were boxing with Elbert before, but... With evidence? Boxing with evidence? I'm gonna kick the shit out of you. With evidence? I can't vouch for his competence, but he is a man that I trust. Wait, what? What the fuck? That detective. This concerns me. I cannot think why one would disturb the order of law. The Prosecutorial Investigation Committee's influence goes as far as the police department. <laughs> Get gummies in trouble? Forgive me, detective. I'm afraid something bad may come of this. I will accept the fact that blood was found at the detention center as evidence. However... Objection! Objection! <laughs> How ridiculous! This is unthinkable of you, you third-rate prosecutor! Mr. the Best, you're here? I completely forgot about him. There's a giant contradiction in your statement. According to the security tape, a dog killed Knightley in a cell. Then, after he left the cell, the blood on the floor was wiped away. That's a good point. That is a really good point, Sebi. Oh my god, I didn't even think about that. That's a hella good point. Holy heck. PIC is mid. The woke PIC has gone too far with this one. Ah! Uh. Did the dog wipe away the blood stains? As if that could happen. Yo, what up? I'm also here. That is possible of my Anubis. Right, boy? What? That was one of the tricks I taught him while I was still in the outside world. He makes sure to hide any blood stains he makes. <laughs> so as not to leave behind any evidence. You still playing? Yeah, welcome back, Chloe. How are you? <laughs> I was saved, if only by chance. Shouldn't you have taught your dog to shake or something? <laughs> Anubis also performs that trick very well. But the shake I taught him is a little different from others. First, he bites the victim's hand. Stop, stop, stop! I don't want to hear anymore! I took a nap, I thought you'd be done. Well, I'm glad that you're back. I see. I understand, Prosecutor Edgeworth. It appears you've gathered a good hand. I'm glad you understand. My argument is not over yet. Yes, it is. Objection overruled. Hey now, that's a little harsh. Love your voice acting? Thanks. Sebastian, would you allow me the privilege of explaining? Uh, sure, Justine. Do you finally realize? The murder occurred in the detention center. Therefore, that assassin's pet dog. Overruled. Overruled. My opinion has not changed. 
unless I can understand how the dog was able to enter and leave the crime scene. Gee, fuck, I wonder. I'm afraid I cannot accept your logic, Prosecutor Edgeworth. The best got humbled, yeah, holy hat. I've been waiting for you to say that. Now, let me show you. This evidence shows the route the dog used to go between the detention center and prison. The fact that we even have to show that, present this is kind of silly. Hole. Oh. <laughs> this photo. Hole. I know a lot about holes, you see. It shows a secret tunnel but hidden in the prison. <laughs> That's impossible! It's a secret tunnel! The tunnel was dug by the escaped prisoner, J.L. Bird. It begins in his prison cell. And is connected to a holding cell in the detention center. Namely, the victim's cell. Ah, I'm shocked. How did this... Gumshoe's been spinning for five hours? Listen, he's good at what he does, you know? How long is this case, by the way? I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish it today, because it's already been five hours. I don't know if, like, the next part's the last one, or there's one last part after that, or if there's, like, three more parts. I don't know. I think we're in, like, the third part or something, I want to say. There's no way he isn't dizzy. He's good at what he does. He's a professional. I'm shocked. How did this... Dogen, you must have known of this. Since you used this tunnel to commit murder. The cases in this game are way longer. In the name of the goddess of law, I hereby reject Prosecutor Edgeworth's claim. Hold it. What do you mean? I don't know if we're going to be able to finish. I don't think any of the other three cases we're going to be able to finish in one stream, but this one in particular, I just don't know. Not exactly sure which part this is, though. I think we're on the third part right now. I want to say. I'm pretty sure it's nine hours long. Really? Oh, damn. Oh, what do you mean? Evidence is everything. That remains true here, just as in the courtroom. Isn't that right? I have evidence here. Horace Knightley's autopsy report. No! She updated the autopsy report on me! What the fuck? No! Autopsy report? Since when? Why are you surprised? Case is getting flattened in this game. Yeah, holy heck. This might be the last one that we do today then, I don't know. Maybe we'll do one more after this. This game's literally like double the length of the best any investigations one. Holy heck. This was delivered straight from the police a short while ago. It's not complete yet. <laughs> Update on autopsy. More of a pre pre preliminary report. Here, the very word of the goddess of law is written. Cause of death. Stab wound to the neck. Died instantly. Murder weapon. Sharp metal object. How can you tell that it's metal? The victim was stabbed multiple times in the same spot with a sharp object. Although, they weren't able to determine the actual shape of the murder weapon. They have clear proof that it was a sharp metal object. So, do you still stand by your claim? That a dog used a sharp object to kill the victim? This can't be! That is all. The court is adjourned. Uh, stop doing that, we're not in court. But wait, the tunnel contains the dog's footprints. Hold it. Perhaps it may have been one of Anubis's walking courses. I can never tell what Anubis gets up to outside of my cell. Something feels unnatural about all this, but I have no evidence. Courtney Pie, you sure pulled out a hidden gem at the very last moment. She waited for the perfect time to reveal the autopsy report. Have I let her out with me again? Appointed Attorney Shields. Here is the autopsy report from earlier. I apologize for the delay. No, it's alright. Thank you. <laughs> I gladly accept it. Mr. Shields, I don't believe it's necessary to hold hands while exchanging documents. You're a fucking creep. I'd advise you to stop. Huh? Persist any longer, and I shall call in the strength of the goddess of law. Uh, I'll be careful. 
Justine, well done. Just as I plan. I only acted in accordance to your instructions. <laughs> Shopping. The autopsy report came straight from the police. I can't refute it. However, if the murder weapon wasn't the dog, Dogen will be cleared of suspicion. The merciful goddess of law so decrees. If you choose to yield now, your badge will not be taken. Oh, what will you do, sir? Uh, she says that, but... My answer remains the same. Judge Courtney, it is as I said before. I will see my job through. I will not yield to threats. So, even now, you still refuse to give up. If you want to keep your badge, this may be your last chance. Right now, I'm a defense attorney. A assistant. What I protect is not my badge. But my client. The goddess of law grows weary of your st sentiment. Hold it. <laughs> now we're talking. I'm also starting to understand that a defense attorney never gives up. Actually, those are the words of your old man. My father. That's are a big part of this case, aren't they? It's really in your blood. You're the spitting image of him right now. <laughs> I'm updating this. Cause of death stab into the neck, but it's possible that they died from dog bites. <laughs> you said it yourself. You've changed since you were tainted by Von Karma. It's only now that I've actually come to believe it. Mr. Shields. Well then, Miles. Now's the time to put those skills to the test. Think beyond your limits. If the murder weapon is a sharp object, does that really negate your reasoning? The murder weapon was a sharp object. What, is it one of the chisels? That's it! There were five chisels placed inside this special cell. Dogen is a former assassin. It's quite possible he could kill someone with just a chisel. In that case, the weapon that killed Horace Nedley was... Is that all? Well then, I suppose you'll be giving up. Evidence has everything. Didn't you say? The murder weapon was a sharp metal object. However... Such a weapon is yet to be found. What? So what are you trying to say? Huh. The only decisive evidence is the actual murder weapon itself. And that was in plain sight this whole time. The real murder weapon is... Dogen's chisel. What did you say? Take responsibility for your own statements. The scene of the crime was Mr. Knightley's cell. You said so yourself. If the evidence changes, then so will my logic. That too is courtroom procedure, is it not? If the chisel was used, that means the killer was hot human. The pursuit theme is high as that. Heck yeah, holy golly. Head banging. However, the fact remains that we cannot deny the security photo. Yeah, what about that photo? I'll give you the answer. This photo shows the moment. The dog leapt to the victim. Even if it's like it's so good. <laughs> Dogen's dog leapt at Knightley. However, the victim did not die at that time. Didn't die? He was only knocked unconscious. The dog didn't move a dead body. It moved the unconscious Knightley. And the real killer was... It's owner! I see. If the victim was moved, it would have been possible for Dogen to commit the murder. And use the murder weapon. Indeed, the killer is Sir Han Dogen. It can only be you. <laughs> Objection. I bet your teacher used to write on your report card. Needs to pay more attention than what others say. I would think that describes you more. We examine that room. Every crook and granny. Right, Justine? That's Cammy to you. We examined all four of Mr. Dogen's chisels. Four? That's not right. And found no traces of blood. Hmm. Thank you, Judge Courtney. Thanks to you, I'm now certain. Thanks to me? Whatever do you mean? When I came here earlier, I saw five chisels. That's right. There were definitely five there before. 
Ah, uh, so the one that disappeared was the smallest one. Presumably for possible use. Jogan, where is that chisel? I'm not free to leave this place. I have no need for a portable chisel. Not free to leave? In that case, he mustn't have been free to hide the deadly chisel either. Hmm. Logan, you just dug your own grave. It seems you know something. Would you care to show it? Logan couldn't leave, so the place he hit the chisel is... And the cell, he couldn't leave. He couldn't leave, so where could he have put it? Yeah, I wonder. Dogen is- this is like Acro again! He couldn't leave his room, so where could it be? It's in his room. Dogen is a prisoner, so he can't leave his cell freely. Perhaps he could have sent his dog out to dispose of it. But, he would not have been able to confirm the weapon's location. <laughs> oh, what does that leave? Above all else, special metal tools are allowed in this cell. Even if one chisel were to appear here, no one would suspect a thing. You'd be a fool not to take advantage of that. I see. Of course, it's always safest if you do something yourself. Objection. But I examine everything. I didn't find any hiding places in this cell. Objection. I'm certain that the murder weapon is here. The reason you haven't found it is because it was cleverly hidden. Hold it. <laughs> you say I hid it? Where exactly? Fuck. Think. Where could he have hidden it? I have to remember everything up to this point. There must be some clue. Give it up. Ah, does this mean what I think it means? L -l 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 Let's get going, Mr. Edward. Huh? Zoinks, jinkies. Huh? Oh, you fucker. Come to think of it, that dog hasn't barked at me once today. Previously, when I came to the special cell, it barked on Dogen's command. That's it! That's what's been out of place! Is it... is it in his mouth? There's just one place he could have hidden the murder weapon. Giving up already? <laughs> how dull, how dull! I will. Present evidence! This piece of evidence shows where you concealed the murder weapon. You just straight up told us and then you make us present anywhere? Hasn't your dog been awfully quiet today? Now that you mention it, it hasn't backed at all. Before it was... Sir Han Dogen, open that dog's mouth now! Anubis doesn't bark needlessly. I ordered him to do that before. In that case, order it to bark now. Naturally, you should be able to, if you have nothing to hide. It was inevitable. Anubis, show them your mouth. Huh? That's a ch that's a chisel, you bitch. As you can see, a dog of this size can easily conceal a small chisel in its. What? Why a chisel? The dog really had one in its mouth. I thought he was unusually quiet. Was he unable to follow the discussion? Sebastian, could you call the forensics department? Urgently, please. Ah, uh, I got it! Yoda! The reaction! This chisel tests positive for blood! What? I guess that proves my theory wasn't just nonsense. Ah, oh, my stomach's growling. Alright, we're gonna end after this part, because, um... Ooh, Tommy's grumbling. Whoopsie. <laughs> Would this chisel be the murder weapon, then? It reacted positively for blood. There's no doubt about it. Thanks to the blood, dug in the head inside his dog's mouth, there's a small bell attached to it. Oh, kiss over Simon's innocent. Yep, there we go. That's the end of the game. Mr. Sirhan Dogen, now that the murder weapon's been found, I must ask you for your testimony. We're not in court. What the fuck are you talking about? 
We know how your dog got to the detention center. And we've found the murder weapon. Do you still think you can talk your way out of this? This, this, is this, this. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, this guy. Even at a time like this, he's still smiling. Well, Anubis. It seems everyone has become suspicious of you. It seems that you're a sussy little baka. It's quite troubling, but since it has come to this, we have no choice but to tell the truth. I did not kill anyone. I have long since grown weary of killing. What's this? His face looks completely composed. It seems we'll need to listen to Mr. Dogan's explanation. Please promptly give your testimony. Okay, <laughs> certainly. Oh, I love him, he's so fucking cool. Oh, I love Duggan. First of all, I would like you to explain my motive. I do not know anyone by the name of Knightley. We share no connection. Chess, chess, it's chess time. You were losing the game, so you killed him. <laughs> Though, I wouldn't think some motive for murder would just appear out of nowhere. Or are you insinuating my Anubis had a motive? <laughs> he only bears his fangs at others on my command. I do not hunger for blood, so much as to kill a man I do not even know. Uh, coming from an assassin, it sure is persuasive. Hm, an assassin who only kills acquaintances? I doubt that would be profitable. I may kill strangers in my line of work, but I never make it personal. Nothing personnel, kid. Is there evidence that shows a connection between and I should thoroughly review the evidence once more. Teleports behind you. First of all, I would like you to explain my motive. No. You cannot kill without a motive. Hardly what I'd expect an assassin to say. <laughs> I don't spill blood needlessly. It may be required for my job, but not in my personal affairs. They're a little different. Isn't that right, Anubis? I do not know anyone by the name of Knightley. We share no connection. You didn't know Knightley? It's not like you to say something like that. You overestimate me considerably. Did you have such a hard time arresting me in the past? We've already looked into it. You are the prison supplier. Naturally, you would have known about the other prisoners. But he wasn't a prisoner, he was in the detention center. I'm tired, see you tomorrow maybe. Have a good sleep. I'm getting tired too. This is definitely the last part. <laughs> Hearing one thing and knowing ten is just an ideal. It's true, I do hear things. However, that doesn't mean that I know everything. I have never heard of anyone named Knightley. So I wouldn't think some motive for murder would just appear out of nowhere. You are an assassin. You do not require a motive to kill. Hey, Anubis. What do you think of this man? Is he an idiot? A fool? Or possibly even a genius? Objection! You can drop the act. Answer the question. But first, consider this. Who am I? Before your eyes, you see the man you arrested for yourself. The assassin, Sirhan Dogen. For those I have needlessly killed, I chant a prayer. Oh, that, that stopped really quick. Or are you insinuating my Anubis had a motive? The dog probably did not have a motive. However, it has been trained to kill. Anubis, how could this man say such a thing? You poor thing. There, there. There, there. The dog is a Jew. He could have mistaken this target. Hold it. In that case, wouldn't police dogs be equally untrustworthy? If you still mean to suspect Anubis, then you'll have to show me this evidence you're so fond of. Ugh. I don't have that kind of evidence. Keh. <laughs> he only bears his fangs, hot others on my command. Fuck. 
Did the dog kill him or did Dogen? If Dogen did not have the motive to kill, then he could not have murdered deadly. First, I should show proof of some connection. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry I clicked. Then, perhaps you ordered him to kill Nightly. <laughs> Aren't we impatient? Haven't you forgotten the first thing I said? I don't know anyone called Nightly. Although you still insist I do, I'm afraid there's no evidence. Don't you think so too, Anubis? Good boy, good boy. Did the dog kill him or did Dogen? I don't fucking know. There's no possible way. Chess, chess! Objection! Objection, chess! Ah ha ha, chess! Ah, logic chess! You've lost your touch, Sir Hendogen. If you had your dog clean up after you, he should have disposed of this too. This is a record of a correspondence chess game, found in the victim's cell. This record, and the chessboard in your cell, both clearly depict the same game. <coughs> oh, 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 what? I've heard that the number of possible chess positions is around... The fuck does that mean? 10, 120. 10 times 10, 120 times, 100,000... Um... Is that even a real number? Indeed. There's absolutely no way these two could have coincided, coincided by chance. Tell us your reason for killing Knightley. Unless you intend to explain this as a coincidence. <laughs> well, don't they say that the truth is stranger than fiction? It is as you said. This is merely a coincidence. But there's no way that could have happened. My correspondence chess opponent was the victim in this incident. What a horrible coincidence. Aren't you shocked too, Anubis? Looks like I'll have to tell them the truth. Anubis, my boy. The animal show, or something. That was when everyone left. Anubis brought the body to my cell. <laughs> he had already been stabbed in the neck with the murder weapon. I did not wish to be suspected, so I had Anubis carry the body to the workroom. After that, he pulled out the murder weapon and returned to me. So you're saying... The one who pulled the weapon out was Anubis. That's right. If I pulled out the murder weapon here, the blood would have been a problem. Mr. Edgeworth, isn't this what that sword guy said? A large black dog was biting into the neck of the victim. What? What did you say? It was a truly hellish scene. That dog, that dog killed him. I see. So, that means Sword witnessed the moment the murder weapon was pulled out. Oh yes, that prisoner's testimony. It surprised me when I first heard it. It's not often that Anubis makes a blunder like that, right boy? Now, I believe that explains my actions. I did not kill him. All I did was remove the murder weapon. Now, will that be all? Anubis is getting tired. Objection! Ray. Oh, there. Just a moment. Mr. Dogen. Mr. Shields. Isn't there one thing you haven't explained yet? Why would you need to pull out the murder weapon in the first place? That's right. I understand why he'd move the body to draw suspicion away from him. But he didn't need to retrieve the murder weapon. I thought him just a fool, but how quickly his scent has changed. Care to elaborate, Mr. Dogen? It was because of this spell. The bell attached to the murder weapon, and the bell on my dog's neck. Little guy, oh look at him. They share a distinctive shape, wouldn't you say? The assassin Sir Han Dogen's trademark. An assassin's trademark? The blind assassin, Sir Han Dugan. He always appears at the sound of a bell. 
I so fucking cool. And also, by the way, American as well. <laughs> the sound of a bell ringing in the dark of night is said to be the last thing his target hears. Heh <laughs> you remember well. It has been a while since you last saw my bells, after all. When I prosecuted you in court, I confiscated a knife with the bell attached to it. Yes, my bells. There are only two in the world. Only two? They're custom made, attached to my knife and Anubis's collar. Even though I can only rely on my ears, I can easily identify them. Alas, one has been confiscated and is not in my possession. Attached to the knife and Anubis custom made only to exist, this knife has been confiscated. When Anubis brought the body here, I heard a familiar sound. I thought my knife must have been embedded in the body. So imagine my confusion when I found out that it was merely a chisel with my bell attached. Indeed, your knife is nothing like this chisel. Either way, those bells are my trademark. Moreover, I'm the only one in this prison who uses chisels. With all this, I knew I would be falsely suspected. So I removed the murder weapon and hid it. So, you're claiming that you only move the body. Hold it! Didn't I tell you? That chisel isn't mine. If you think I'm lying, go ahead and check for my fingerprints. Sebastian! Uh, me? But how do I... Forensics! Yes, ma'am! Reaction! We have fingerprints. They're in Knightley's. Justine? What about Dogen's? Nope. Just Knightley's. And there is no evidence of prints being wiped either. Only Knightley's fingerprints. It can't be. Um, should we re-examine it? <laughs> the now? I never even touched that chisel. Because I ordered Anubis to carry it. In other words, the fingerprints belong to the chisel's original owner. <laughs> the murder weapon's owner? Was the victim? Hmm, this is perplexing. At any rate, I did not touch the murder weapon. In other words, the killer could not have been me. Isn't that right? Gah, I have nothing to refute that. How could this... Is he really not the killer? Could Durgan's testimony actually be true? This can't be. It seems this is sufficient enough not to warrant any further explanation. As it stands, you have not changed the state of this case. I believe this is more than enough reason for us to relieve you of your badge. To save any needless fuss, I suggest you hand over your badge now. Well, this is bad, sir. They sound serious. It's regrettable, but with those prints' decisive evidence, I'll have to rethink my logic from step one. But there are still many unexplained things. Why would Mr. Knightley be carrying a chisel? It could be used for many things. Perhaps even prison escapes. Well then, how do you carry it into the prison? I mean, the prisoners aren't even allowed cutlery. Right, Mr. Edgeworth? Mr. Edgeworth? Hmm? Even if your reasoning's off at first, you shouldn't let that confuse you. The most important thing is to arrive at the truth. Isn't that right? It doesn't matter how you get there. The end result is to save Simon. We have to do everything we can for his sake. Well, Sad Cave. No. I'm a prosecutor, what are you talking about? A nice one, Kay. I really want to scout you for the law firm now. I remember when Uncle Ray said, a defense attorney never gives up. Miles, do you understand the true meaning behind those words? The true meaning of those words? Defense attorneys carry the fate of their client on their shoulders. You're the only person your client can rely on. Just like with Mr. Keyes, we're the only ones who can save him now. We're linked by fate to our clients. That is why we must never give up. There's no way Uncle Ray can go against the teachings of Gregory. 
So, what will you do? I don't fucking know, I'm a prosecutor, what are you talking about? Currently, I'm an defense attorney's assistant. No, an assistant at my father's firm. I've made a commitment to this case. Therefore, if I don't save my client, I cannot say I've achieved it. I will abide by this, to save Simon Keyes. No matter how many times my logic fails, I will always find another possibility. Okay, you're finally back. Well then, let's search for that other possibility, to start with. Do you think there was a way Mr. Knightley could have brought, brought the chisel into the prison? The method Knightley used to bring the chisel into the prison was... <laughs> the chessboard. I think it actually is, but that's funny, because... <laughs> yeah. Well, that helps our case. Thanks, Edgeworth. Normally, metal objects can't be brought into the detention center or the prison. They'd just be caught by the security gate. However, there is one way to avoid this. And that is if they're sent in a package to the detention center. That gate is only used on people. In other words, packages sent to the detention center undergo a simpler check. So they don't use a metal detector for that. This never should have happened. It seems the guards were too careless. Knowing this, Natalie asked Simon to send him a package. Namely, a chessboard containing the chisel. Well, this has solved one of our problems. The fact that the chisel was not Mr. Dogan's, but Mr. Knightley's. Given this, one major issue remains. The security camera shows a dog attacking the victim. As long as that exists, I'll maintain that Dogan is the killer. But Dogan never touched the murder weapon. I'm stumped. We also desire a conclusion to this matter. Mr. Edgeworth, we can use one of my secret weapons, sir. Secret weapon number four, the video analyzing machine, Mr. Analysis. What? What's with that ridiculous name? Uh, I named it myself, sir. Uh, this will let us analyze video footage in detail. Go ahead. You'll soon see I'm not lying. I don't know what will come of this, but all we can do now is investigate. Mr. Edgeworth, do you know how to use Mr. Analysis? Uh, no. A video analysis machine. Should I hear how to use it? I can figure it out, gumshoe. Hmm, I see no particular need for an explanation. Yes, sir. All right, let's turn on Mr. Analysis and get started. Use Mr. Analysis to examine any suspicious part of the video, sir. This is the video from the detention center's camera. I believe this was the moment when Knightley was being attacked by the dog. If that wasn't the case, then what does it show? Is the person in this video really Knightley? And what is the true form of the black silhouette attacking this person? I should check the video and try to find the answer to these two questions. There could be unexpected things in unexpected places. So be sure to check every nook and cami of the video, sir. Who's cami? What part of the video is strange? Um... Oh no! We have to- Oh fuck! But... It's so laggy. He's wearing a security guard uniform. Nothing here. What the fuck are you talking about? Am I crazy? I have to have zoom. Uh, zoom. Nothing here. What, what the fuck are you talking about? That all looks right, I think. Let's just keep going then. Wait a minute. Is that not a dog? Nothing here. There's a lot of things that are strange, Miss Redworth. You're just a bitch.
Wait a minute. A reflection of this person can be seen in the mirror. Hmm? Is that a cap on his head? Actually, it looks kind of like the caps the prison guards wear, sir. You don't think. It was a guard who was attacked. Have you received a report? Really? This is how... Oh my god. This is silly. This is how we find out. We could already see that he was wearing a guard uniform. Have you received a report of any guard being attacked by an animal? No, not that I've heard of, sir. Hmm, then it was someone else wearing a guard's uniform. Whoa, I see. I have evidence that shows what this cap is. It is... It, it's... It's a guard's uniform. There was no report of a guard being attacked by an animal. However, we did hear that a guard's uniform was stolen. Putting two and two together, I'd say this was a disguise for the purpose of a prison escape. They disguised him as a guard. That sounds like it could have been su successful, sir. Oh, speaking of prison escapes. Indeed, that person certainly was successful. If the person in this video is not nightly, it's Albert? Then perhaps that black shadow is not a dog either. If you zoom in, you should be able to see his real shape, sir. I did, and it looked like a panda, and I was gonna say that. And then you were like, No, nothing sussy here, you fucker. Zooming again. Look. It's a fucking panda. It's a bear. Sorry, not panda, polar bear. Oh my god. You fucking suck. Oh. Can we figure it out yet? Nothing here. Why does I have this long ass thing every single time? Oh. Is it really gonna be the mirror again? Because I literally, I checked and I saw. Oh. Fuck. Oh, I'm a bitch. I'm a bitch. Fuck. I'm gonna zoom. This is... Oh my god! I feel we've made a grave miscalculation. This animal, this silhouette, no matter how you look at it, it is not a dog. This animal is... A bear, a pig, a cat! From the silhouette, I'd say the animal's not a dog, but a bear. So then, from that photo I took... Those footprints must have belonged to this bear, yes. Hmm? Oh, uh, did you say a bear? Yes, that, me that man is the first to come to mind. That man. We were all under the impression that the person in this video was Nightly. But it's his cell- But it's his cell after all. Why would it be anyone else? Because he dug a, a hole into there, that's- Got it. That line of logic no longer holds. Remember the tunnel under his bed? It's possible whoever used this tunnel is the one in this video. It seems it's time to answer th that question. Just who is the person in this video? Gee, I fucking wonder, Courtney. It was you. How about that? How do you like that, hmm? The woke PIC. I bet there's more people here now. I, d I think Patricia was already there, but there's... There's Dorgan. There's Lang. There's Regina. And then that's it. It was fucking... Who, who do you fucking think, huh? Who do you fucking think, huh? 
the person wearing the guard's uniform is... The escape prisoner, Jailbird. The probability is extremely high. His pet is a polar bear cub. But, but, the bear here is black. The mud. We have evidence that can explain this matter. The reason the polar bear became black is... Do, 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 do. Where is it? That's the autopsy part. It's like a... Prison roll call. Where is it? Where's the mud packs? Where is the mud packs actually? What the heck? Am I crazy? What? Mud packs. I thought we got a statement written out from Sawyer, but no, it was just the gloves. Think back to Frank Sawyer's testimony. Ah! That's the rubber glove I dropped! Where did the mud on this glove come from? Ah, that's the mud from my mud packs. At the time, I was practicing applying my mud packs. Could you tell me when this took place on the day of the incident? Since the animal show had started, I'd say it was around 9 a.m. The mud packs turned the animal's bodies pitch black. And my heart was pure white. I was totally engrossed with covering the animals in mud. During the animal show, Mr. Sort was applying mud packs to the animals. So then, among those animals... Was this polar bear? Yes. Overruled! Overruled. Prosecutor Edgeworth. There is a huge contradiction in your argument. The security camera footage. Objection! Judge Courtney, you are quite right. So it used the mud packs during the animal show. Knowing this, a new contradiction in the video comes to light. A new contradiction? The timestamp? Okay, do you know when this footage was taken? It was after the mud packs were used. That would put it at around 9am. In that case, you should notice something strange about this video. Huh? What's strange about it? I reckon- I knew that there was- Oh my god. The strange thing is this. Do we have to zoom as well? Oh my god, that doesn't say nine. The time sword covered the polar bear in mud was around 9am. Which means this video should also have been taken at 9am. However, the timestamp reads 6am. Actually, wait, 642, but okay. On that day, the prisoners went to the courtyard to watch the animal show. At this time, only three people remained behind. Dogen is in the special cell. Saw it in the workroom, applying his mud packs. And the one who put his escape plan in motion at that moment, Jailbird. Elbert left the polar bear in Sawit's care and entered the secret tunnel. Oh my god, look at him, look at Rocky. Alpha, the bear escaped from Sort and followed after its owner. Oh shit, fuck. And just as he was chasing after the escaped bear, so it happened to witness. The dog pulling the murder weapon out of the body. If Sort's testimony is correct, this video must have been taken at around 9am. However, the timestamp is off by three hours. Why would the timestamp be off like that? Detective Gumshoe, I'd like you to examine the security camera. Shortling, hi. See ya, bitches. Sorry to keep you waiting, sir. I asked all the guards and... Oh, it seems the camera's power was cut off for a moment, uh, throwing off the timestamp. What? Uh, the camera's an old model, so if it loses power, the clock stops as well. In that case, this means the camera's power was cut for three hours. Ew. Well, I'm at it. I've got some more information for you, sir. You heard that nightly denied stealing the key, right? Seems nobody would believe the words of a criminal, but... Natalie testified 
I was knocked out too. That may not be necessarily a lie. My, my, my. There you all are. Here she is, the villa. I love her. Making progress in your investigation? Can I be of any help? Uh, actually, Warden Rowland, there's something we must report to you. The escaped prisoner, Jailbird, is most likely still inside the prison. He's disguised himself. Here is the proof. Is he going to be one of the guards next to her? Because if so, that's fucking silly. The person invisible in the security video is Elbert. So perhaps he's still in this very building. He's going to be one of these two. Oh my god, they're spinning. Come to think of it, didn't Mr. Elbert have a bracelet like the other prisoners? The bracelet would have been concealed under the uniform's sleeves. Moreover... The prison's main gate does not have a sensor to detect bracelets. All he would have to do is avoid any doors with sensors inside the prison. That's right. So, if he didn't enter the cell or the workrooms... Could one of you guys be Jailbird? Oh my god, he's actually gonna be one of these two. That's so silly. <laughs> ah, Rocky. Oh my god, you silly man. Stop it! What are you doing? It would seem that Rocky has answered that question for all, for us. Uh, no! Rocky, this is all your fault! The little guy loves you so much, it's enviable. Right then, seize him at once. Wait, there's something we must hear from this pers prisoner. It's necessary if we're to find the truth. I'd like permission to interrogate him. Understood. Huh. What do you want out of me? Albert's escape route is linked to Knightley's cell. So it's highly likely he knows something about the crime. I'd like to ask you about the day the body was found. His eyes are so wide, oh my goodness. <laughs> so it's you guys. You're the ones who found my secret tunnel. It took me ages to dig that. The day the body was found was the day I'd planned to escape. I was in disguise. Then, Rocky followed after me. But he was all covered in mud. I panicked and returned to my cell. Damn! If only you guys hadn't shown up. If only Nadley hadn't died. You say you dug the tunnel. What did you use to dig it? Oh, that? Just hammers and spoons. Stuff like that. <laughs> I bought them from the supplier. But it was all for nothing. <laughs> no need to lose your temper. There's always next time. On the day of the incident, it's possible that Helbert met Knightley while he was alive. I'll have to listen to his testimony carefully. Fuck, press X! Press X! Huh, <laughs> so it was you guys. You're the ones who found my secret tunnel. You. Shut up! What's with that hole, punk? You say you dug. What's it to you? You know how long it took me to dig that. I had to be beg the supply for those tools. Day after day I slaved away. Give me back my hard work. Give it back, you son of a... Oh, I can't get a word in edgewise. Edgeworth. You can't just go around discovering people's holes. Sir. Sir, please. It took me ages to dig that. So, you dug that hole alone? You're damn right I did! Could a tunnel like that really be dug by one person? Wow, such a wasted effort! <laughs> what did he <you> say? <laughs> Kid like you wouldn't understand! Never lie on others! Never let others see you! Those are the rules we live by in here! Well, that's a great thief! I kinda see where you're coming from! Okay, don't agree with him. Ah, no. I was just joking. Well, I wasn't. Damn, why'd it come to this? The day the body was found was the day I'd planned to escape. I was in disguise. Did you obtain the guard's uniform from, from the supplier, too? Yeah, that's right. Seems he got it by threatening a guard. That guy went and stole it from someone's locker. So, when you went through the tunnel, you were all ready to dress like a guard. 
Yeah, that wouldn't, because the clothes would get dirty. No, to ensure that the clothes wouldn't get stained with mud, I carried them with me. Once I got out of the hole and changed clothes, getting out of the cell doors was simple. And that's when Rocky ran up and jumped on me. Huh, that must be the moment the security camera is captured. I see. Could you add that to your testimony? Once I got out of the hole and changed clothes, getting out of the cell doors was simple. So you got out of the hole and then you had to change clothes, huh? Yeah. Getting out of the cell door was simple, you say? Yeah, compared to going through the tunnel, it was very simple. You inhabit a prison. Yet you seem to know the layout of the detention center quite well. Ugh. What's so wrong about that? Is, does he have the keys, Knightley's keys? Sure, I've been to the detention center too. In that case, he should have known about it from the start. When Knightley was in his cell, the door would have been locked. Which means, there was one piece of evidence until Bird needed to escape. Then, Rocky followed after me. Fuck. When did you first realize he was following you? When I got out of the tunnel. Just when I thought I pulled it off. Damn! Didn't you notice anything when you entered the tunnel? He wasn't there at the time. I knew he'd follow me if he was around. This is my chance, I thought. Just my luck, damn it! Such harsh words. Poor Rocky. <clears throat> I can't help it. Today was his fault too. Just like yesterday, always clinging on to me. Uh, but he was all covered in mud. I panicked and returned to my cell. You didn't consider just making a run for it. I would have if I could, but the mud would have given me away. And it's not like I'd get another chance like this. So I had to proceed with caution. In the end, he was exposed by his own bear. It's possible that Elbert met nightly before he died. I should listen to his testimony carefully and review the evidence. Is this thing from the beginning? Yeah. Thing ages, uh, da 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 da. Getting out of the cell doors was simple. Hey, I'm walking here. Kind of met him in New York, huh? <laughs> shake my head, shake my head. You say it was simple getting through the cell door. Yeah, that's right. You got a problem with that? Huh? Stop trying to punch me. Even though you managed to arrive at Knightley's cell, opening the door wasn't so simple. How did you intend to unlock the cell door? <laughs> JL Bird, you had the key to Knightley's cell. Ooh. Uh, he ain't got uh, nothing like that. That's it. It was open. It was already unlocked when I got there. We have the security feed, you dumbass. Indeed, the cell was vacant after Knightley's death. Which is why, at the time we conducted our investigation, it was unlocked. Your successful escape attempt occurred after Knightley's death, so the door would have been open. However, you would tried to escape once before then. The plan was full thanks to Rocky. The video shows it. Yes, that was during the animal show, before Nightly's death was known. And the cell door was locked, because no one knew he was dead. Without the key to Nightly's cell, your escape would have been impossible. That means... it can't be! It's exactly what you think. In the case of the stolen key, the culprit is... Simon Keys! It was in his name! J. Elbert. Oh, that's him! Is that... Or maybe that's just... I don't know. Oh my god, look. <laughs> I don't know why Nightly's best looks so silly here. J. Elbert, you were the one who attacked the guard, weren't you? Oh, fuck, never mind. There he is. Holy shit. The guard, and Nightly too, in order to steal the cell key. It, it wasn't me. I don't know any Nightly. After stealing the key, return to your cell as a precautionary measure. Then you waited for a time when the prison would be mostly vacant. That was just before Nightly's death became known. In other words, during the animal show. But in the end, the plan was foiled thanks to Rocky. Hold it! Don't screw with me. If you don't have evidence, I'll still win my decision. Besides, it was that Nightly guy who tagged the guard, right? I think not. Regarding the theft of the keys, Nightly was the victim. 
This proves neither was the victim who was attacked in his cell. The fuck am I thinking about? What? What proves that he was a victim? A victim of fucking what? What are you talking about? How do I prove it? I don't fucking know, because he was knocked out, apparently. Because he said he was knocked out. It's not written there, is it? Take that! He had bruises. Does this really prove it? You fucking bitch! I'm sorry. He had bruises. This proves Natalie was the victim who was attacked in a cell. This is fucking bullshit. This is fucking bullshit. As there was blood? Take that! In Natalie's cell, there were traces of his blood, which had been wiped away. I believe this is more than enough proof Natalie was attacked in his cell. You attacked those two people and stole the key, didn't you? Damn! I never thought you'd find the bloodstain I wiped away with the newspaper. How'd you go through all the trouble of wiping the bloodstain? On the hands of Knightley and the guard, there were obvious signs of a scuffle, you know? If the bloodstain were uncovered, they'd find out there was another attacker. And if anyone looked around the bed, the time my dug would be discovered. So, you're trying to buy more time for your escape attempt. But I'm afraid to say your plan still ended in failure. Now then, hand over the keys to Natalie's cell. Oh my god. And he's dead. Because <laughs> of course he is. <laughs> no way! How could an amateur like you knock me out? Here, I got the keys right here. Nice. Thank you, Albert. Overruled. Overruled. Hold it. If you have that key, then that means. That's right, Judge Courtney. The reason that Natalie stole the key and used it to leave his cell. From there, he entered Mr. Key's cage and was moved to the workroom. However, the very foundation of that hypothesis has collapsed. Uh, how? I see. In that case, there was only one person who could have moved Nightly's body. The criminal must have been someone who knew about the secret tunnel. Hey, what are you suggesting? Jailbird, no, no, let's go. I, I'm already in prison. Oh, wait, I didn't do nothing. Sure, I knocked out those two guys, then I stole the keys. And after that, I waited for the perfect time to enter that guy's cell. But, the cell was empty then. There was no dead body either. And also, how could I have gotten into the workroom? I couldn't even leave my own cell, right? It's true. You only have the key to Nightly's cell. But, there's also Dogan's dog. <laughs> It'd be possible for the dog to carry the body from the cell to the workroom. I see. So, you're saying there was an accomplice? The crime would have been possible if Elbert and Dogen were working together. It's perfectly plausible. Somehow, Elbert managed to carry Natalie's body to his own cell. And then, the dog must have carried it to the workroom. Yes, because all the animals can move freely in the prison. But that's not the case for the path between the detention center and the prison. The only one who could use that route was you, Jailbird. Holy! What if there was another route that you didn't know about? Hmm, that couldn't have been. The tunnel is a straight path, is it not? Yeah, seems like it. I didn't have enough time to dig any more than I did. I only dug halfway up the corridor. What? You mean to say that you didn't dig the entire tunnel? Why would he want to be into some other guy's random room? When I got to that cell, the tunnel was already there. Oh? There was a tunnel link in my cell to the well. Look. The well? Looking down the well from the courtyard, there's no mistake in it. They've always been connected. I just continued the tunnel with my digging. Ooh. What was that hole doing there in the first place? Who knows? Maybe another inmate dug it in an attempt to escape. Or maybe the animals dug it. Maybe they wanted to drink from the well. That's highly doubtful. There's no water in that well anymore. It's all dried up. Hmm? Wait a minute. 
That said, for some reason, that will gave off a nice scent. A nice scent? I don't know what it was, but it smelled sweet, like candy. This scent. I believe we've come across it before. Yeah, Natalie's body. Take that! Natalie's body was giving off a sweet candy-like scent. We used a police dog to track that scent. And that led us to discover the tunnel. Ugh. By any chance, could this be the same scent as the well? Prosecutor Edgeworth, I know what you're trying to say. That the scent proves the body was carried down through the tunnel. Exactly. And... J.L. Bird. He was the only one who could have used the tunnel. Thank you, Mr. Elbird. I'm very grateful to you. At last, at last the truth comes to light. Mr. Elbird, wouldn't it be wise to confess now? To being an accomplice, I mean. Ah, don't tell me even you suspect me too. Judge Courtney, it seems you and I have come to the same conclusion. Not at all. Our thoughts in this matter are still quite different. Mr. Albert was certainly an accomplice, but an accomplice to Horace Knightley. Hold it! What do you mean? Mr. Albert did not move the body. He simply lent the victim his keys. What? It would seem Mr. Albert did indeed strike Mr. Knightley on the head. However, Mr. Knightley was not knocked out. The two must have made a little negotiation. Negotiation? For Mr. Knightley's escape plan to work, he would have needed the keys to his cell. So, Mr. Albert stole them from the guard. On the other hand, for Mr. Albert to escape, he needed to get to Mr. Knightley's cell. But if Mr. Knightley had seen him and yelled, the plan would have gone down the drain. And so, they negotiated. Hold it! I didn't negotiate nothing! Oh, you still intend to deny it. I see. So, in other words, we're back where we started. Mr. Albert opened the cell door, and Mr. Knightley entered Mr. Key's cage. It's been six hours, by the way. Woo, six hours and... Wait. Four, three, two, one. Six hours and three minutes! Woo! And then he was moved into the prison. Of course, and then he was killed in the prison workroom. No, haha, -ha. got him. Weren't you listening? The scent on the body shows it must have been moved through the tunnel. That it was moved from the detention center through the tunnel. Please wait until someone is finished before speaking. I do not claim that he wasn't moved through the tunnel. What? You don't? The scent shows that the body was moved through the tunnel. However, that does not mean it came from the detention center. What do you mean? That sure sounds like a contradiction to me. Isn't there one more possibility? The well in the courtyard. It's possible the body was dropped down from there. Simon was looking at the well earlier. The courtyard? The well in the courtyard! I think Regina mentioned that something. That Simon was looking down the well. Mr. Keyes carried the cage not, not to the workroom, but to the courtyard. Mr. Knightley was killed in the courtyard, and his body was dropped on the well. And then, the body at the bottom of the well was moved by Mr. Dogan's dog. Now, there's one thing I'd like you all to remember. Before the body was discovered, what was happening in the courtyard? The animal show, right? Regina and Simon were there. Wait, Simon? Ah! I see you understand. Who then dropped the body down the well? Judge Courtney. She's a tough opponent. Her flexible way of thinking enables her to adapt and come up with her own deductions. Mr. Knightley was not carried to the workroom, but to the courtyard. And Mr. Keyes was off stage for 15 minutes. This was when he dropped Mr. Knightley down the well. It's as simple as that. Judge Courtney, your reasoning is sound, I'll admit that. However, let's say the body was dropped down the well. That didn't have to be done during the show. It could have happened at a different time. Unfortunately for you, Prosecutor Edgeworth, that is not possible. What? 
When the show started, Mr. Albert was in the tunnel on his way to the cell block. Mr. Albert, at that time, did you happen to see a body in the tunnel? Nope. Nothing like that. Oh. So, if the body had been dropped before the show, Mr. Albert would have seen it. However, he stated he did not see a body. So, it is impossible to think the body was dropped before the show. And after the show, the body was discovered in the workroom. In other words, the body being dropped on the well, and then moved to the workroom, could only have been done during the show. And the only one who could have done it is Simon Keyes. No! Mr. Edgeworth, what should we do? If the body was moved through the well, that does put Mr. Keyes at a major disadvantage. However, the notion that the body was moved through the top well is only a hypothesis. That doesn't mean there's evidence. I am obligated to recognize that fact. Will you allow me to investigate the courtyard once more? I give my approval in the name of the goddess of law. To be continued? We're investigating the courtyard. I feel this may be our final chance. Huh? What? The fire! Fire? Could be another prison breakup ball. Should we evacuate? Hold it, Patricia, yes. Everyone, please remain calm. This is just the signal for the evening meal. Oh, <laughs> it's a little loud, so I can understand why you'd be surprised. It sure scared me. Oh, there's another god now. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. And with that, everyone, please return to your posts. JL Bird, it's also time for you to return to your room. Ugh! Ah, uh, I got it. Let's go, Rocky. Aw, oh, little guy. He loves him. Deep down. Warden Roland, we will be proceeding to the courtyard for another investigation. Isn't it time for you to go home as well, Mr. Edgeworth? It looks like we're out of time. Why don't you continue this another time? But the investigation... Today's been a big day, right? With the escaped prisoner and all. So I'm afraid I can't let outsiders like you litter around any longer. Ugh. This is my decision as the warden of this prison. Looks like it can't be helped. The warden's word can be called the law of the prison. Prosecutor Edgeworth, this means we'll have to carry out our investigation another day. Until then, you may hold on to your prosecutor's badge. How fitting that they're talking about it being another day. Because, <laughs> I mean, yeah, we are we are looking at it another day. We're looking at it tomorrow, when we stream tomorrow. And with that, I leave you. Oh, she bows. Oh, she's so lovely. Oh my god, I love her. And Sebastian, he looks kind of goofy. Now, I think it's time you all left. Well, it looks like we'll have to continue the investigation tomorrow. It sure does look like that, Edgeworth. Now that his body was dropped down the well, and was carried to the workroom from Mr. Elbert's cell. This is Judge Courtney's logic, but is it correct? And... This is like the perfect time to end. Yeah, holy heck. Judge Courtney claims that Mr. Keyes transported him, but... Was Mr. Keyes really the only one with a chance to move him? Mr. Redworth, let's do our best tomorrow. We have to save Simon, no matter what. Indeed, I agree. I must prove Mr. Key's innocence without fail. To be continued. That's actually such a good time to end. Holy heck. <laughs> Fuck. I meant to press yes because that was the button that I meant to press. Well, that's going to do it for today. <laughs> Yay. Woo. That's gonna do it for today. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> I love this case. Good case. I feel like I remember the next part as well. Good game. Yeah, absolutely amazing so far. Best game. Smile. Uh, I feel like I remember the next part as well. I feel like we use Little Thief. 
But yeah, that was a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed that. Um, this game is so good, holy heck. The only issue that I've had so far is that just that one bit. The Red Mole! Oh my god, what could this be? That's pretty much it. It's because Case 1, on the one hand, wanted, wanted to baby you, but at the same time it was like... It had like some really, really complicated parts, but then some really, really easy parts. But other than that, I fucking love this. That's right, I think it was, Little Thief. Yeah, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure I remember this. This is literally when I woke up during Astro's stream. I remember waking up in the courtyard. So, that's funny. And then Little Thief happened, I was like, what the fuck is this? Holy shit! <laughs> but yeah, this is really, really fun. I love this game. It feels like surreal playing it for myself. Like, seeing all of these characters that I've, like, seen. And, like, actually, you know, like, oh my god, it feels fantastic. I really enjoy this. Uh, but yeah, it's been six hours, so this is miles better than the first one. <laughs> You're so funny, Chloe. You're so funny. You're so silly. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is going to do for today, I think. I think that's, that's about it, right? There's nothing else to talk about, right? I also still don't know where that spider is. When I went out to go to the bathroom, there was no spider in the, in the hallway, which is where it was earlier. So I was a little bit spooked. So I'm like, ooh, is it here? But I doubt it's here, because I'm being loud, and so that, that spider was a scaredy cat. When it saw me, it started, like, running away. So I think that that spider was a scaredy cat, so I don't think it had come in here, where my voice is. Thank you for streaming, we'll see you later. Thank, thanks for... I don't know what I was going to say. Thanks for saying that. Thanks for saying that you enjoyed. <laughs> anyway, I hope that everyone had a great time. I'm really enjoying this game. And hopefully, we'll be finishing this case tomorrow. Bye-bye-bye, uh, pussy spider. You're so right, it was a pussy spider. <laughs> Sorry, that just really distracted me. <laughs> bye bye bye! <laughs>